Hello friends. This is Anime Reality Bender how are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto was raised by the last demon in existence and got harem. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. Naruto and Ezra. God damn it how did we lose them? A dark mage yelled at his subordinates. Sir he is called the Yellow Flash Minato, a fairy tale for a reason. A panicked subordinate said to his commander. You think I give two shits about that stupid nickname of his all he can do is use teleportation magic when he runs out we can get that brat from him. The commander said with a dark grin spreading across his face. Sir I still don't feel right about this isn't he his son why are we taking him again? Subordinate 2 asks. For his question he got slammed into the ground breaking most of his bones. I am sorry I thought that I heard hesitation but it must have been my imagination. The chief said as he started walking away toward the blood trail. Demon brawler Damon that is a name well deserved, the first subordinate whispered as he started running after his commander. Damn they really got me good if I didn't jump when I did I would have died, Minato said as he started limping holding a sleeping baby in his arms. Your mother died giving birth to you and now your father is about to die before you even get a name, Minato said weakly. Only if you didn't have so much power at birth then the tower of heaven wouldn't be after us he said quietly to the small child in his arms. Yes if only that Mr. Yellow Flash and we might not have to kill you to get him, a voice form behind him said. Minato turned around to see a fist about to make contact with him. He jumps back just enough so that he doesn't take the full force of the punch. He tucks the child close to his chest as he forms a ball as he goes flying into trees. Ha 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 the second strongest mage in fairy tale is this week how is it that we have not destroyed fairy tale yet? Damon cackles. Yes you just needed to send your entire guild against me while carrying an infant to do it, Minato taunts. Make all the excuses you want but you will not be able to run away now, Damon says as he walks closer to Minato. True I can't move at all after that punch that you hit me with but I still have just enough magic left for one more teleport, Minato say as a yellow symbol appears over the infinite. No you don't. Damon yells as he leaps at Minato but it was too late the infant was enveloped in a yellow light and he was teleported far away from them. You won't be able to get him for a while. Minato say as his eyes start to get clouded. The love for a child from their father, too bad he will never know who you are. Damon sneers as he lifts Minato off of the ground. But at this point it was too late the light from Minato's eyes as he dies in Damon clutches. About 300 miles away there was a blinding light outside of a cave and then when it went away a sleeping infant was left in its place. Wah! An infant started crying as he was woken up by the light that he was the cause of to get away from his pursers. What is this noise? A dark voice say from inside of the cave. The infant stops crying as it is being looked at by giant deadly red eyes. What is this? Human cub is giving off that power. A deep growling voice as a snout comes out of the cave. The infant boy looks at the giant monster head that came out of the cave. Ha ha. The baby gives off an innocent laugh as it reaches out to the monster. QB where are you I was able to get it right this time. A young boy with blonde spiky hair said. Oh is that right Naruto let me see then, QB said as he lazily opened his eye to watch his son attempt at a spell again. Naruto sky blue eyes opened wide in joy. All right here goes just you watch QB. Naruto said as he gathered energy in front of his face. Little purple orbs start to appear in front of him along with a blood red symbol. Naruto moved his hands together and the orbs started to move closer together until they were a large orb twice his size in front of him. When his hands clapped together the ball shrank to six inches in diameter. All right here goes, Naruto thought as he reared his head back. Demon Slayer Biju Bomb Naruto yelled as he shot his head forward screaming propelling the purple energy ball forward. There was a giant shockwave around the ball as it went supersonic slamming into the forest making an explosion 40 feet in diameter. The QB's eyes widened slightly as he witnessed the size of the explosion. It should be soon now, QB said as he looked at his adopted son looking back at him with his famous idiotic grin on his lips. What should be soon? Naruto asked. You should see it someday soon, QB said to Naruto as he walked into the cave. QB it's still light outside I want to train some more, Naruto whined at QB. 
Let's sleep now so that we can get an early start tomorrow morning you will want it, Kyuubi said to Naruto as he lied down on nest that they had. Naruto just shrugged as he walked inside of the cave and lied down next to Kyuubi who put some of his tails over Naruto like a blanket and they both went to sleep. After sleeping a few years Naruto woke up in the middle of the night covered in sweat and feeling like he was on fire. Kyuubi, Naruto mumbled as he sat up in their bed. The Kyuubi's eyes opened and he looked at Naruto and saw that he was in pain. This was sooner than I expected but that is not a bad thing, the Kyuubi said to Naruto. What do you mean Kyuubi why do I feel like I am on fire and it hurts all over, Naruto asked his father while looking down at the ground. You are changing this as normal of all that become demon slayers some turn into animals if they are too weak, some stay human if they are strong, it depends on you, the Kyuubi said to Naruto while staring at him with curious eyes. But Kyuubi why is this happening now, Naruto asked. This happens after the demon slayer masters the biju bomb that you did this afternoon you did it faster than any of my other disciples. Kyuubi said to him with sad eyes at the memory of all of his students. But I never met any of, Naruto was saying but he got cut off by the new pain that was entering his body. If you stay human then I will tell you but if you don't you will be an animal forever, Kyuubi said to Naruto as he sat up and watched his student writhing in pain. The QB did not enjoy watching this but he knew that it was necessary for Naruto to go through this if he was to fully unlock the demon slayer magic that he wanted to master so much. Alright I'll hold you to that promise and you better not go back on it you always told me to follow through on my promises didn't you, Naruto smirked at the QB as he put one of his feet on the floor attempting to stand up. Naruto grabbed the QB for support and started to stand up on his own two feet to the QB's surprise. With what his body is going through right now he shouldn't be able to move much less stand, yet here he is on both of his feet, I am truly glad that I didn't let this child die when I first met him he is great student, the Kyuubi thought as a smirk spread across his face. What are you smiling about Kyuubi did something good happen or are you just laughing at my pain, Naruto said sarcastically to his adopted father. I will never laugh at your pain my boy it's just laughing at me for making the right choice all those years ago. Kyuubi said to his son as he looked at him intently. Naruto started to glow with a bright red light. Kyuubi what is happening everything is starting to get really bright I can't see you where are you, Naruto started to say in a panicked voice. Don't worry I am still here you just calm down. Kyuubi said to him and Naruto let out a sigh of relief. The light surrounding Naruto got so bright that Kyuubi closed his eyes from the intensity, then when it started to dim he looked at where Naruto stood. Naruto looked back at his father and was wondering why he looked like question marks were hovering over his head. Kyuubi what is wrong? Naruto asked and then he started to panic thinking that he turned into an animal. I think it will be better if you just come with me and see for yourself, Kyuubi said to Naruto as he walked outside. Naruto didn't know what he was talking about so he just started to follow the Kyuubi. When they were at the river right outside of their home Kyuubi told Naruto to look at his reflection in the water. Naruto did this but when he did Naruto was the one with question marks over his head now. His face was the same yet different somehow but he couldn't point it out quite yet. Let's see chin nose eyes whiskers ears hair ears, he said as he touched all of them. Wait what, Naruto said as he touched his cheeks and felt like he had three whiskers on each cheek but retracted his hand when he felt like he stabbed himself. He looked and saw that his fingernails were now claw-like. He kneed in front of the water and took a closer look and saw that his pupils were slanted to but they were still sky blue color. He looked again at the top of his head and saw that he had two blonde fox like ears with a red tint to them while being black on the inside of them. A Kyuubi what happened to me it's like I'm a human but I'm not at the same time, Naruto asked curiously. It looks like you took the third road and became a hybrid demon slayer they're the rarest and most powerful it was the right choice to pick you, Kyuubi said to him. Ya you better believe it I'm the strongest demon slayer in the world, Naruto yelled. You're the only demon slayer in the world, Kyuubi thought as he looked at Naruto. That's not all look at your back, Kyuubi said to him and he did and saw that he now had a tail that was about a foot and a half. Cool I have a tail does that mean that I can get nine of them like you Kyuubi, Naruto asked excitedly. Well when you master your demon cloak you will be able to get nine different forms of it getting stronger the more tails that you produce, Kyuubi said to him. Yes I'm going to master it, is there anything special about being a hybrid? Naruto said. It's pronounced hybrid Naruto and yes you will be able to use different abilities as well one being the Rasengan, 
Kyubi said to him. The what now? Naruto asked with his famous idiot grin on. I will explain it tomorrow morning this was a loud night and I would like to go back to sleep, the Kyubi said to Naruto as he walked back to the cave. Ah but you said you would tell me about your students I want to know, Naruto whined. I'll tell you in the morning as for right now we need to sleep, Kyubi said to him. All right fine but when we get up in the morning you were going to tell me you promised, Naruto said to Kyubi as he walked over to the cave to go to sleep also. The next morning when Naruto woke up he was in the cave he yawned and rubbed the sleep out of his eyes. Kyubi good morning what are we having for breakfast today, Naruto asked as he yawned. There was a silence. Kyubi where are you, Naruto said as he started to look around the cave for him. He must be out getting food or something. Naruto said as he walked outside to look for him, when he got to the edge of the cave he heard a crunching sound. He looked down and saw that there was a big leaf folded up. Naruto would normally ignore these things because reading made his head hurt but he saw that his name was on it in Kyubi's handwriting. Just so you know he uses his tail to write he doesn't have thumbs. He opened it and saw that there were other leaves inside of it. He saw that there were pictures with descriptions underneath them. He first read the letter that was holding the other leaves. Naruto I am sorry that I had to do this but it was the only way that you would start to live on your own like any cub would. Though this might seem harsh and cruel now you will understand later. I had to leave so that I would not be found by other mages for if they found me they would be after me to kill me because they will only see me as evil not as the father that you see me as. In those other leaves you will see that I have given you detailed instructions to learn two other demon slayer techniques that I have not shown you yet but be warned the demon cloak is dangerous to us without practice first, Naruto read aloud and had tears in his eyes. Baka Kyubi you didn't keep your promise and you left me on top of that, Naruto sobbed as he looked at the letter again then he saw that there was an arrow that was pointing to the side of the page. Naruto flipped the letter over and saw that there was still more. And Naruto before you start thinking that I am a liar I will tell you about my other students. You will never see them because they are either dead by now or are animals like I told you. The last apprentice that I took that remained in a human form died 15 years ago while in battle. I was reluctant at first to take another student after that but when I saw you a brand new babe and I knew how cruel this world could be I decided to take you in and teach you how to defend yourself. But do not worry Naruto you might not see me anymore but know that I will always be looking after you because you are my knuckle-headed son after all love your father Kyubi. Naruto said those last words and even though he was crying he had a giant grin on his face. Thanks dad, Naruto said as he bent down and looked at the two other leaves. First technique is the Rasengan Hu, Naruto said as he read how the technique worked. So I have to get energy in my hand and start spinning it that doesn't sound all that hard, Naruto said as he stepped outside. Training normally takes my mind off of things, Naruto said as he started doing his stretches. After warming up and stretching for about one hour he looked at the leaf again so that he could see exactly how to us the Rasengan. Alright let's try this, Naruto said as he brought his hand out in front of him with palm facing up. Demon slaying Rasengan Naruto yelled as he formed one energy orb in front of him until it was the size of his palm. Alright now the second step is to start spinning this fast enough that it can send someone spinning like a top, Naruto said as he started focusing it till it started spinning. This is so is, Naruto started to say as the thing exploded in his hand. Cough. What the hell I thought I did that right, Naruto whined as he started to dust himself off. Fun fact Naruto is very durable thanks to his training. Alright one more time, Naruto yells as he puts another energy orb in his hand and starts to spin it rapidly again. Just for the sake of your boredom of hearing Naruto scream in pain as he trains to master the two techniques that QB left him to learn I'm doing a time skip. Six months after QB left, ha 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 I finally mastered the Rasengan and some of the demon cloak in the note it said that I can't as its full power till I'm older but whatever I did it take that QB I did it in half the time you said I would, Naruto cheered at himself. Alright now I have to go into civilization one wonder what that is maybe it is a type of snack, Naruto said as he started walking back to the cave. When he got close he noticed something in front of his house. Is that a bag? Naruto mumbled as he now jogged to the entrance of the cave. He got to the package and saw on the top of it there was a leaf that had his name on it. Wait this is Kyubi's handwriting, Naruto said as he took off the letter and started to read it. Dear Naruto it looks like I was right when I said that you were my best student, 
you were able to gain the skills that took those before you at least a year to do and you did it in just half that time. So as a reward I got you some things that you will need on your journey in this world. I want you to go to a place called Fairy Tale. it is a guild that will accept mages and give you work so that you will have money and Naruto I taught you about money and its importance so I don't want you to waste as money on anything stupid, Naruto read and he brought out a wad of cash. The strip on it said 10,000 jewels. Also you are not allowed to run around in just those shorts that you have been wearing all the time so here is some clothes when I was teaching you about different colors I noticed that you liked this one remember it is called orange. Naruto looked inside of the pack and saw that there was a map, water bottle, some food in bags, and three pairs of orange t-shirts dark blue pants and boxers with a white and orange coat on the top with a nine tails insignia right over where his here was. Good luck on your journey my son and be yourself you will make bonds with people that you find dear and when you do there will be one more letter for you when you are older but for now goodbye. Naruto finished reading the note and had a big grin on his face. I'm going to be the best mage in the world believe it, Naruto said as he put on his new clothes on and puts the rest of the clothes in his pack. Alright this is going to be the last time that I will be here, Naruto thought. He takes on last look at his home and then smiles. I will come back here when I'm older and see it when I'm ready but until then I am off, Naruto yells the last part as he runs out the door. Alright let's see according to this map I'm here in the middle of this forest and the closest place that looks like a town is, forced stead. Sounds funny but it's the first stop, Naruto said as he folded up the map again and started walking north. Little did Naruto know he was being followed by a dark shadow who was wearing a dark smile. It looks like it was a good thing that I waited all that time now I will be able to meet a legend, the dark figure said. Alright it looks like it's getting late I should go to sleep soon, Naruto said as he looked around and saw a tree with a branch big enough for him to sleep on. He leapt the 20 feet it took to get up to the branch easily as he landed on it. He put the bag down and used it like a pillow and put his jacket over him like a blanket. The dark shadow made his move as he climbed up next to the chilled as he pulled out a potion. Don't worry little boy this isn't going to hurt in the least you are just going to have problems using your magic for the trip. He said in a hushed voice as he opened up the vial and poured it on to Naruto's head. Shadow magic shadow bonds he said as his shadow wrapped itself around Naruto until he was in a black cocoon with only his head exposed. The man climbed down and now there were five other dark figures around him now. Looks like you were right about the kid being here, one of the figures said. Of course I was commander brawls now let's get him down and get back to the tower of heaven where we can talk to him. He this was a good day alright you two go and carry the brat but be gentle he can wake up if you are too rough with him. Brawls sneered. Two of his men nodded at him and as they walked up to the tree and started climbing to get the kid. When they were back down Naruto was still asleep in the cocoon of shadows while being thrown over one of their shoulders. Alright boys let's go back to the tower of heaven those little brats might be happy to have another one to play with. Brawls said as they started their walk back to the dark guild. The next morning when Naruto woke up the next morning he noticed that he was no longer in the tree that he fell asleep in. Instead he had a wired metal thing around his hands and they were connected and he was on a stone floor. What happened to me last night did I sleepwalk or something, Naruto said as he got up and looked around the stone block that he was in. He saw that it was empty except for one of the walls had metal bars going across it. He tried to get up but he ended up falling down from the drugging that he had the night before. I think that I was captured or something, Naruto said as he looked around a little bit to see what his surroundings were. He saw that there was no form of a bed there was stone on every wall except for the wall with bars and he had cuffs on his hands. Hey is anyone out there, Naruto yells at the barred door hoping to see something. A dark figure comes to his door and looks at him. You're awake already you should have been out for a few more hours must have given you a light dosage, said a man with a high pitched voice as he looks at Naruto. Can I come out of here, Naruto asked the man as he turns so he is facing the man. You will be transferred in an hour to a different block for a while until your room is made. He says to Naruto. Alright but can I have my bag back I'm hungry, Naruto said to the man. No you will not you will be fed later as for right now just shut up and stay there, the man say with anger in his voice. You are not a very happy person or you try smiling more people will like you better, Naruto say to the man with a grin on his face. You little brat do you even know what type of situation you are in right now? The man say to him angrily. 
I have been captured by you and now I'm called something called a hostage right? Naruto says to him innocently. The man ended up doing a face palm at the child's stupidity and honest. You do know that being a hostage is a bad thing right kid? The man say to Naruto. I don't think that it is a bad thing you didn't do anything to hurt me so I don't think that you are a bad person right now, Naruto said to him. You will brat after a little while but right now it'll take you to your final happy place, the man say to Naruto as he opens the door. He goes in and grabs Naruto by the arm and starts to drag him roughly by the arm out of the cell. You do know that you are hurting me right, Naruto says as he tries to get his footing but the drug is still numbing his motor skills. This will be nothing compared to later, the man says under his breath as he continues to drag Naruto down the hall. They ended up in front of a big door with two big guys guarding the entrance. Open up we need him to be in here for a few hours until the room is set up, the man dragging Naruto say to the men. They nod and open up the door to a giant room. Naruto gets thrown in and the door shuts again. It looks like they took another one, an elderly voice says. Naruto struggles to look at where the voice came from and sees an old man. Hey old man who are you? Naruto says with a grin on his face. That is not important from what I can see you can't move that well, the old man say to Naruto with a light smile on his face as he goes over to him and helps him sit up. He looks to be in his late sixties and with his hands bandaged and raged cloak wrapped around him with a hood on that covers his eyes. Grandpa who is the new kid? A girl say and runs over to the old man. Naruto first sees long flowing red hair and then the face of a little girl with an eye patch over her right eye. Naruto sees this and jumps up making both the little girl and old man jump back. What happened to your eye? Naruto says as he is now right in front of her pointing at her eye patch. I lost it as punishment for what I did, she says to him bluntly with a cold look in her eye. Are you okay do you want me to fix it? Naruto asks. Now both the little redhead and the old man are looking at him like he was crazy. It is not something that you can just fix, she says to him angrily as memories of it came into her mind. If I try I can do it, Naruto says as he starts to get exited making his tail come out from under his shirt as he starts wagging it like a puppy. This mad them jump back again with shock in their eyes and started making others come toward them. Ezra what are you jumping all the tea? Oh my god what the hell? A boy says as he points his finger at Naruto. Oh whoops it looks like my tail came out I should get better at hiding this. Naruto says as he puts his hand on the back of his head while his tail still wags back and forth. They take a closer look and see that he has little fox like ears sticking out of his head. The boy ends up passing out and Ezra starts walking closer to Naruto. Sorry it looks like I am bothering you guys, Naruto says apologetically. It is alright but I must ask her those real. The girl named Ezra asks the fox boy while gesturing at his tail. Yes it is if you don't believe me you can touch them if you want, Naruto said as his tail goes in front of him till it was almost touching Ezra. She hesitates at first then pokes it with her finger making his tail twitch. It is real, she says as she now grabs it and starts to pet it. After her doing this for a while she looks at the top of his head and starts to rub one of his ears between her index finger and thumb. Naruto starts to purrs as what she was doing which made her look at him in surprise. Sorry it's just that it feels really nice when someone does that so it makes me purr, Naruto said with a grin on his face looking at her. His eyes get drawn to the eye patch again and he felt sad. Ezra saw this and thought that maybe she was petting him wrong so she grabs his tail again and puts it in a Vic grip. When she dose this Naruto feels a lot of pain and swats her hand away from his tail and then he jump a good six feet away from her. Don't do grab my tail that hard it hurts, Naruto said as he started to gentile stroke his tail where she grabbed. Sorry about that it's just that you looked sad and I started to think that I did something wrong and that got me annoyed, she said. That is the weirdest form of an apology I have ever heard but at least she looks sorry even if she doesn't say it. It's okay but I think that we have some people that are now interested in your new friend, Naruto says as he walks back over to her. She looks behind her and noticed that almost all of the children were now looking at them. We have a new kid and he looks like an animal he is so cute can I pet him? One of the girls asks as she comes over to Naruto and starts to touch his tail. I guess that I didn't introduce myself yet I'm Naruto QB nice to meet you all. He says loud enough for the entire room to hear him. He looks back at Ezra and his eyes travel to her eye patch again. 
He walks over to her much to the people who were touching his tails whining and grabs her hand. Come with me I'm going to fix your eye, he says as he starts dragging her with him. I told you that you can't fix it if grandpa couldn't you definitional can't, she says to Naruto angrily. Gramps can you make sure that people don't bother us for a few minutes I need quiet for this, Naruto asks the old man as he walks over to a deserted corner of the room. He didn't even give him time to answer so all he did was nod and told everyone to be quiet for a little while. When Ezra and Naruto got to the deserted corner Naruto sat down and gestured for her to do the same across from her. She shook her head no with anger in her eye again, I told you it is impossible now stop this foolishness. Ezra said to him coldly. Naruto now has a tick mark on his head as he gets up and puts his hands on her shoulders and looked her dead in the eye. And I'm telling you that it is possible and I promise that I will I always keep my promises to my friends, Naruto yells at her while shaking her. Her eye opens wide with shock not at someone yelling at her but the fact that he just called her his friend when they only just meet. So let me help you okay, Naruto says to her with a big stupid grin on his face again. She was too shocked to say anything so she just nodded her head and sat on her knees in front of him. Naruto squatted down in front of her and looked at her eye and reached for the eye patch but stopped right before he did. Can I take this off or do you want to do it yourself? Naruto asked her. She snapped out of her shock and looked at him then she put her hands behind her head and took off the eye patch reviling her cut eye to him. This is going to be easier than I thought I thought I had to make a whole new eye but I just have to heal it. Naruto said with a confident smile on his face. Ezra couldn't believe what she just heard grandpa said that it would be impossible to heal her eye even with his healing magic but this fox boy said that it would be easy just who was he. Alright I am going to need for you to give me your wrist, Naruto says as he brings out his right hand to hold hers. She puts her left wrist in his hand wondering what he was going to do then he brought his own wrist up to his mouth and but down hard enough to draw blood. What magic are you going to do? Ezra asks well aware of the fear in her own voice but Naruto was still having that stupid smile on his face, which was now starting to piss her off. Demon slaying magic I'm going to do something called bonding it's a spell that allows for a few people to be given a portion of my magic and depending on the type depends on the spell I can do on the person, Naruto explains to her. So what are you going to do, she asks still confused on exactly what is going to happen. I'm going to give you a special seal that will let me be able to heal any wound that you might have from now till you die, the only thing that I will not be able to heal without giving part of my life force is life threatening wounds, he said to her with a smile still on his face. What magic was able to do this I have heard of dragon slaying magic before but never heard of demon slaying just who was this boy, she thought. Alright this part might hurt you a little bit but it is necessary for the magic to work properly. Naruto says to Ezra as he takes her wrist and bits it like hers and draws blood. She bit back a yelp in pain at what he did and held herself back from punching him into the wall as she sat there now with her emotionless expression. Naruto now put his bleeding wrist to hers and closed his eyes. She was about to ask what was going on when a blood red magic seal appeared underneath both of them as they were bathed in its light. At this point Naruto opened his eyes and they were not their sky blue color that they were a moment ago they were the same color as her hair. Demon slaying art bond he said as she felt a burning going through her arm and spreading throughout her body. When the burning reached her whole body it was subsided to a warm feeling that made her feel happy inside. Now we completed the first part. Naruto said to her with a smile on his face. There will be different things that will happen to you later on like you will be more or less immune to getting sick as long as you don't do something that getting sick would be unavoidable like standing in the middle of a blizzard for an hour or something like that, he said to her. You will also able to heal faster than you do now it won't be instantaneous unless I give you some of my magic but it will be noticeable. Lastly we will be able to communicate and feel if the other is in any danger no matter how far apart we are, he said to her. She was just baffled at the information that he gave her she was able to regenerate quickly and having the ability to communicate with him she wondered what he meant by that. It means that we can hear the other's thoughts when we get stronger, he said to her. I'm already strong enough to hear you but you are still a little too weak to hear mine just yet but you will be able to soon enough, he said to her with a warm smile on his face. Before she could ask another question he put his hand up to stop her. I'll answer you later as for right now I need to heal that eye of yours right, he said with a smile as he put his right hand over her eye. Demon Slayer magic regeneration he said as she felt a warm light over her eye and started to hear a hissing noise. 
They stayed like that for a full minute Ezra determined not to blink throughout the duration of this time. When the light faded away Naruto removed his hand and sat in front of her with a smile on his face. And there you go sorry about the color of it though but you get something out of it, Naruto said to her and she started blinking because of everything looking brighter than it was a few seconds ago. When her eye adjusted to the light she noticed something different but couldn't put her finger on it, here I'll help you, Naruto says as he covers her left eye. She was about to yell at him because she wouldn't be able to see but he still saw him and his grin even though she knows that his hand was over her eye. She let out a gasp but what was going on her eye was healed even though it had been cut open it was healed and she could see out of it. The only thing that I couldn't do was make it the same color as your other I'm sorry, but it is the same as your hair if that helps and also it is immune to all types of magic now, Naruto says to her as he stood up and offered her a hand up. She took it and picked up her eye patch and put it in her hand and they walked back to the old man hand in hand. Hey Gramps it looks like I was right about being able to do it just look, Naruto said to him while putting his fingers in a V shape. The old man looked at him in confusion and then looked at Ezra who no longer had an eye patch on and instead had a new crimson colored eye. Needless to say his jaw went straight to the floor. Young man how were you able to do that in only a few minutes that should have taken years to fix with my magic? The man asked in confusion. It's because I am just that awesome, believe it, Naruto said to him while wagging his tail back and forth. I still didn't say it yet but thank you Naruto I am in your department, Ezra said to him while bowing his head politely. Naruto wraps her in a friendly hug. No problem Ezra ill always helps my friends even if you are my first, he said to her with a smile. She hugged him back and when they separated they were both smiling like good friends should. Then they hear the big double doors to the room open and Naruto put his tail back under his shirt and his ears down so he looked like a normal kid again, except for the silted eyes. Yo Braid it's time for you to say bye to this trash you are going to be coming with me, a big buff man yells as he walks into the room. Oh well it was nice while it lasted but I think they will start hurting people if I don't go with them bye bye Ezra I'll see you again, he said to her as he jogged over to the man. He looked back at her one more time. If you ever need to talk you can talk this way, he said to her in her mind. Even though it took all of her willpower to not run and help her new friend she knew that if she did the same thing that happened to Jelly will happen to him, so she just stood there looking down while biting her bottom lip to keep herself quiet. Yellow everyone thanks to one guy's review I was able to get an answer that I was looking for a while and dude I'm thanking you not insulting you for telling me how old Ezra was when she was in the tower of heaven I looked for a solid 3 hours and just couldn't find it. Well anyway thanks again and also Ezra and Naruto are going to be 10 years old now instead of the 5 to 6 year olds I was doing in the beginning. Alright now that that's over with let's get back to the crossover. So where are you taking me this time buddy? Naruto asks the man. This kid is either the biggest idiot or he is making fun of me either way he is pissing me off, the man thinks as he just keeps on walking. Hey are you going to answer me or not? Naruto whines. I'm taking you to have a chat with our boss he has been waiting to see you for 10 years. The man say to Naruto as they continue on their way to the next room. This is boring Ezra are you there, Naruto says in his mind. Why, east, south ha, huh? road to talk. Ezra say to him slowly. Don't worry you will get us to it and when you do it will be a great way for us to keep in touch, Naruto says with a smile on his face. Oh, k. Okay. Ezra say back to him. At this point Naruto is smiling and the man notices. What are you smiling about? He asks him. Just thinking about how much fin this is to talk to you buddy, Naruto says to him. Needless to say the man ends up face palming at the remark. It's official this kid is an idiot. He thinks as they come closer to the door. When they get close the man that was leading Naruto knocked on the door and asked to come in. Forgot to ask but what is your name? Naruto asks him. Eric he says back as they go inside of the room that was dimly lit except for a few candles around the desk where there was a giant of a man about six foot and looked like steroids was his idea of a lollipop. Naruto's immediate reaction was just a whistle at the size of the man. You're big? Naruto says to the giant shadowy figure. Eric leave now. The man says with death in his voice. Ezra nods his head frantically and walks out the door and locks it from the outside. I am Brawls the new owner of this place and you are going to answer some questions that I have, Brawls orders Naruto as he throws the desk out of his way so that he can get in front of Naruto. What did you want to know Broccoli, Naruto asks. 
A tick mark appears on his head as he walks over so he is right in front of Naruto. What are the secrets to your demon slaying magic? He asks. I can't tell you they are a secret, Naruto says to him. Wrong answer. Brawl said to Naruto as he backhands him so hard that he ends up a Naruto size hole in the wall. That was a warning now tell me, Brawl's demands. Still can't tell you that, Naruto says as he gets out of the wall and looks at Brawl's with blood trickling down his face. Oh so you think that you are a tough guy after taking one punch do you well let's see how you do when I put magic into it. Brawls say a small green magic circle appears over his hand. This time he hits Naruto in the stomach making him cough up blood and spit as he keels over onto the ground. Your stomach isn't on the wall so that means that you have some durability, Brawls says as he cracks his knuckles with a dark grin spreading over his face. Naruto's tasted the metallic taste of his own blood as he licks all the blood in his mouth and spits it out on the ground. He hits pretty hard but he is so slow why is it that people are so afraid of him all they have to do is move out of the way of the punch before it hits you? Naruto wondered as he stood up again to face brawls. Just answer the question and I won't beat on you too badly, he says as he gets ready to hit Naruto again. This time Naruto read the path of the punch and just sidestepped away from the punch making brawls broke the wall behind him. Sorry brawls but I don't want to get hit by that over and over again it hurts, Naruto said to him. That's the point. Brawls yells as he picks Naruto up by the collar and slammed into the ground making a creator again. You're mean, Naruto said in a whiny voice as he gets up again rubbing his head. How is he not screaming or something? Any one of those punches wound have put any of my men in full body casts, Brawls thinks as he watches the boy get up for a third time. Alright since you can live through that well enough I don't have to hold back in this interrogation, Brawls say as a dark smile creeps across his face. A large brown magic circle opens underneath his feet and a dark light envelops him. Density magic times 20 Brawls says as he leaps at Naruto slamming him through the floor this time. This time Naruto coughs up blood and tries to look up but his vision is too blurred to look at his attacker anymore. These metal things that they put on me are making it hard to us magic, Naruto thinks as he lies on the ground. Don't worry I won't kill you we need to know that magic of yours so that we can resurrect Zarif. Brawl says as he looks down at Naruto with a sadistic grin on his face while his eyes were screaming for blood lust. This might hurt, Naruto say as Brawls jumps down on top of him. Four hours of interrogation later, I can't go into any more detail I am not into little kids getting hurt. Ha 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 you're still alive little fox that's good we are going to have a lot more fun until you tell me the secrets to your magic. Brawls cackles at him while walking outside of the door. Brawls dropped Naruto in front of the door which was the only thing in the room that he didn't destroy and kicked it open. Eric get him to his cell and get a doctor for him so that he doesn't die yet he is too much fun. Brawls orders the scared guard as he walks out. When Eric gets inside of the room he stands there in shock for a few seconds just looking around at the damage to the room. There are craters everywhere and this kid took every punch and was what created all of these holes in the walls, he said as he looked at the broken and bloodied body of Naruto on the floor. He goes over and picks up the kid and his face cringes at the way that he felt like putty in his hands. He walks to the cell that was assigned to him and brings him to the bed and puts him down as gently as he could and then runs to go and get the nearest doctor that he could. When he and the doctor get back to Naruto's cell they take off the chains that he had on him and bandage him up and by the time that they are done he looks like he was in a full body cast. Are you sure that we should have the chains off there what keeps his magic at bay? Eric asks. He is too injured he will not be awake for a few days at least and even so he is too injured to us magic anyway. The doctor said to him as he walks out the cell and down the hall. I hope that you pull through kid even if I have killed and kidnapped people before you didn't even care about that you just acted like a little kid anyway. Eric said to Naruto as he walks out the door and closes the door. He doesn't lock the door thinking that he will be like that for a while but as we all know Naruto tends to heal a little bit too fast for most people's liking. After about two hours Naruto wakes up and his whole body hurts with most of his bones still broken. He blinks his eyes a few times until his vision is back to normal. He tries to move his arms and notices that they are wrapped up actually his while body is wrapped up. He notices that the bracelets that he had on before aren't there anymore. Ezra are you awake now? Naruto asks. Yes I am and it's a lot easier to talk to you now, Ezra said with clear surprise in her voice. 
I think the braces that I was wearing were limiting my ability to tap into my magic before and were blocking out our bond and you weren't able to talk to me. Naruto say to her. That makes sense none of us down here have any magic so we don't get those, Ezra said back to him in her usual mellow tone. Hey Ezra I don't like it here before it was okay because I was with you but now after getting beaten up for a few hours I don't want to stay here anymore, Naruto say to her. No one here wants to be here we want to leave but we are not strong enough to leave we are waiting for someone to help us escape, Ezra say to Naruto sadly. If that's true I can have us leave tonight if you give me an hour I can come and get you and everyone there out, Naruto asked curiously. And yes Naruto is this stupid in the beginning, well I would say that you could not do that but after you healing my eyes so easily I don't doubt that you can get us out I will get everyone up and be waiting for you promise, Ezra asks. It's a promise. Naruto says as he struggles against his body's want to stay lying down and the screams of pain that his cells are telling him as he sits up. Alright one tail should do the trick, Naruto says as a blood red magic seal appears underneath him. Demon art baiju cloak Naruto says the spell and his body is enveloped in red bubbling energy. I think we all know what this looks like, alright I should be able to heal in about a half hour and then I can go and get Ezra I wonder if she would like to go to this fairy tale place with me. Naruto asks questionably. Time skip about a half hour later. Alright I feel better, Naruto says with a smile on his face. He flexes his muscles and breaks the cast that he had and jumped up on two feet while still in his baiju cloak. Alright time to go and find Ezra, Naruto says as he runs through the door and sprinting down the hall at an inhuman speed. The first person that he comes in contact with is talking to Eric which both are caught by surprise as he is coming toward both of them. Shit I thought that he was supposed to be out for at least two days this is a lot shorter than two days. Eric say as a blue magic seal appears in front of him. Sleep magic dreamland Eric say as ha blue light hits Naruto. Sorry but I need to go and help my friends so instead both of you are going to be taking a nap instead. Naruto says as he runs straight through the light and lariats both of them knocking both of them out cold. Ezra I'm on my way what floor are you on again? Naruto asks as he runs through the area knocking anyone out that was on his way. We are on the second floor I believe, Ezra say to him. Alright I'm going to be there in a moment make sure that everyone is out of the way so that I don't accidentally hurt anyone, Naruto says back as he focuses a baiju bomb into his hand. Demon art Rasengan Naruto yells as he slams the red sphere into the ground breaking it. He immediately creates another in his left hand and slams it through the next floor going down two floors. Naruto what are you doing we are hearing explosions where we are and they sound close, Ezra say to him with worry in her voice. Don't worry I'm okay just trying to get to you I think that I am right above you now get clear I'll be down there in a moment, Naruto says as he charges another Rasengan I'm his hand. Here I come, Naruto says as he smashes the Rasengan into the ground breaking the floor and landing on the cloud of dust right in front of Ezra and everyone else. What is that the selling broke and what is that inside of the cloud? Someone yells. I don't know all I can see is something glowing. Another person yells. Do you think it's brawls? Someone asked in a scared voice. Naruto starts to walk out of the dust cloud still in his demon cloak making everyone yell in fear. What are you a monster? Someone yells. That is not very nice that is Naruto the boy that we met not even 5 hours ago. Ezra say trying to defend Naruto. Hello again everyone I'm here to get you all out of this place, and to answer your question I am a demon slayer not a monster. Naruto says to the matter officially, while taking off his demon cloak. How can we trust you, a boy said angrily, you can either trust me or get out of here now or you can just stay here if that makes you feel more comfortable, Naruto says to the boy. Every one of them looked at him like he was crazy, Ezra which is that fastest way out of here, Naruto asks through the front gate but I need to go and help Jellal, she says to him. Who the hell say that any of you are even going to get out of here alive? A man yelled. It looks like I am going to have to correct your way of thinking again Ezra. Brawls say as him and twenty of his men come into the room. They were all holding weapons of some kind and having sadistic grins on their faces as they thought of what they were going to do to the rebels. Naruto was the only one that was unfazed by this and walked in front of Ezra putting a protective arm in front of his friend. Sorry but I don't think that anyone here is here because of their choice so I'm going to take them with me and leave here, Naruto says. 
So what if you can as magic there are 20 men in me and if I remember correctly I was beating the hell out of you not even 2 hours ago, Brawls said as he cracked his knuckles. Yeah but you put on cuffs that made it impossible for me to us any of my magic and now I can as it I'm going to have to kill you, Naruto said with a grin on his face. I would like to see you try that boy, Brawls said as a magic seal appeared underneath his feet again. As you wish, Naruto said as a blood red seal appeared underneath his feet. Density magic times 30 brawls say as his body starts to glow again. I want to leave soon so I'm going to have to try a little with you and get those weapons away from your men. Naruto said as red energy starts to bubble out from his body. Demon cloak level 2 Naruto say as his cloak appears around him and two red tails appear behind him as he goes on all fours. What the hell is he is that red energy enveloping him? One of the guards asked while shaking his sword at Naruto. I'll be taking those weapons from you now, Naruto says as he blurs out of existence freaking out all the men except for brawls who can still see a blur of him from his experience fighting. Now all of you will die for what you did to my friend, Naruto said in a dark voice as his claws glowed with energy as he started slashing the men to puts while his tail grabbed their weapons and threw them in front of Ezra. Everyone in the room was both dumbfounded at the blonde haired demon slayer and terrified of him with what he was doing as he killed all 20 of the men without any remorse or even batting an eye as if he wasn't doing anything wrong. Now brawls I will give you one chance to let us leave before I force you to let us leave, Naruto said as he appeared in front of him. Now I see why demon slaying magic is so rare and wanted that power is insane. Brawls smirks with a greedy look in his eyes. Well thank you but are you going to let us go or am I going to have to kill you, Naruto asks nicely. It looks like you missed one of my men though, he said as he pointed to a man that had a dagger pointed at Ezra's heart. Now go back to normal and put these cuffs on like a good boy or I will kill this girl, the man said as he punctured Ezra's shirt drawing some blood as the dagger poked her skin. You will let her go right now before I make you wish for death, Naruto said as he glared at the man with his eyes crimson and blood lust dripping off of him. The man started to shake uncontrollably and his hand slipped cutting Ezra a little deeper than before by accident. Die, Naruto says coldly as he vanishes from existence and grabs both of the guy's arms and has his demon claws grow in length ripping the man's arms off. Why are people so fragile that shouldn't have ripped them off? Naruto asks questionly as he threw the arms to the side while wrapping one of his tails around the man. He lifts him up off the ground and stabs him with his clawed hand making the man scream in pain but is ignored by Naruto. Don't worry I'll put you out of your misery now. Naruto says as he grabs the man's heart and rips it out of his chest. The man looks at his own heart and then his head drops down looking at the floor, Naruto tosses his body to the side and then faces brawls again. Let us leave right now or I will kill you, Naruto says to him while leaning forward getting ready to leap at him. Brawls was to shocked at what just happened to hear Naruto. I didn't even see him that time was he not going full speed before and that power even with my density magic I won't be able to beat him let alone beat him, Brawls thought as he looked at the boy. 3, 2, 1, Naruto counted down as a small energy ball started to form in front of him. Alright alright you made your point fine you may leave, Brawls say as he starts to walk out of the room. Ezra finally came out of her daze and looked at Brawls. Wait where is Jellal he has to come with this, she said to him. He is up two floors three doors away from where you were being held, Brawls said as he pointed at Naruto. He is a lost cause Ezra let's just get out of here, one of the kids said as he started going to the door followed by the rest of the group. But she started to say but everyone except for Naruto was already out the door happy with them being free again. Naruto please help me get him he is my closest friend, Ezra said to him. Naruto just grins at her like an idiot and puts away his demon cloak and picks her up bridal style earning a yip from her. Alright here we go, he said as he put a small amount of the demon cloak around his feet and he jumped up floor by floor until they got the right floor. I'm going to go and make sure that they are all out and safe I will be back in a little bit. She nodded to him and walked down the hall looking for the room with Jellyl in it. Naruto was back with the group again and they were all in boats ready to leave. Where is Ezra I thought that she was with you? The old man asked. She is getting her friend right now I just came here to make sure that you were all safe I'll be back soon. Naruto said as he started walking back to get Ezra. Help me, Ezra said to Naruto weakly and his eyes shot open and he was enveloped in his demon cloak again. I'm coming just hold on, 
Naruto said as he went straight through the selling to get her. When he went through two floors he sprinted until he heard Ezra's voice from behind a door. Jellyl what is wrong with you, Ezra cried. Nothing is wrong with me I am just the chosen one by Zareph to bring about a new age and give him life once more. A boy's voice say and it's clear that there is insanity in it. Naruto goes breaks the door open and runs in and sees a boy with blue hair holding Ezra by the neck strangling her. Naruto grabs the boy's hand and remove it while catching Ezra and holding her protectively. So you wish to interior very well you can both die. Jellyl says as a giant magic seal appears in the entire room. Naruto knows that if he goes into Three Tails Cloak he can survive this but Ezra couldn't. Sorry Ezra but we are leaving right now, Naruto says as he picks her up bridal style again and sprints out the room kicking down the wall and dropping down. Right behind him and Ezra a giant explosion destroying most of the top half of the tower. He will fit right into fairy tale don't you think they were about to land in the water when Naruto makes his tails impale themselves in the wall behind them and jumps at the boat. When they land everyone is bug eyed at this and half of the kids pass out from shock. Welcome back young man and where is Jellyl? The old man asks as he sees Ezra clinging on to Naruto with tears in her eyes. The boy with blue hair is different than he was before I think that he was possessed, Naruto says to him as his cloak disappears. Naruto sits down and starts to pant heavily and Ezra looks up at him fearing that he was hurt. Sorry don't worry I'm fine just tired I haven't eaten all day and using my cloak like that while running on empty was really hard, Naruto said. It looks like both of you need a good rest so sleep I will stay with you until you wake, the old man say to them with a warm smile on his face. Naruto nods and passes out on the spot. Ezra was a little more reluctant to sleep but did it anyway because of her feeling so tired herself. This boy will be a good friend to her I hope that they stay together for him a long time, the old man says as he looks to the horizon. Time skip of 5 hours young one wake up we are at shore. A gentle voice say. Naruto's eyes flutter open as he looks up and covers his eyes from the sunlight. Ah you're awake that is good. The voice say and then Naruto remembers it's the old man's voice. Good morning Gramps did we sleep long, Naruto asks as he gets up to look at his surroundings but feels a weight on his shoulder. He looks over and sees Ezra somehow sleeping on his shoulder so he stays down so she could sleep. It looks like she has taken a liking to you, I haven't seen her trust someone that much since Jellil, the old man said to Naruto. Well I don't see why you wouldn't trust your friends, said. Well that aside as you might be able to see most of the people that you saved are now leaving, the old man said as he pointed at the groups forming and then leaving with backpacks. I already know where I am going to go, I just hope that Ezra will want to come with me I can tell that she has powerful magic she just needs to draw it out, Naruto said as he looked at the sleeping Ezra on his shoulder. You don't say, the old man thought and then an idea came to him, why don't you bring her to fairy tale if I remember correctly the leader of that guild takes in little kids and helps them learn to control their magic, he said to him. That is where my father said to go to, Naruto said to him. Boy may I ask who your father was? The man asked. He was Kyuubi and that is all that I am allowed to say about that, Naruto said. That is a very interesting name that he has but I will not pry into your past it is yours after all, the old man said as he pulled out a map and started writing on it. After about a minute he gives the map to Naruto. Here you go little one this will tell you how to get there. The old man says as he gives the map to Naruto who looks at it and sees a circle that says you are here and another that has fairy tale on bold lettering. Thanks old man which way is north though, Naruto asks looking around. It would be that way my boy, he says as he points in the direction of the forest. How long would it take us to get there if we walked, Naruto asked. I would think about a two day journey and you would be there, he says as he gets off of the boat with a bag on his back. Where are you going aren't you going to come with us, Naruto asks confused. No this is your journey now I will be going my own way but I will tell you that when you get to fairy tale that you ask for a man named Makarov he is the leader of the guild and he is a very nice man, he says to Naruto as he makes his way to the west. Makarov who that sounds like a good name I hope that Ezra will come with me though, Naruto says as he looks down at the sleeping red head. At the sound of her name from the blonde fox her eyes flutter open as she looks at him. Well good morning sleepy head are you feeling better, Naruto asks as she gets up and rubs that sleep out of her eyes. So I have a question for you, Naruto asks as Ezra looks him in the eyes wondering what he wanted. 
Well since we are free from that place I was wondering if you wanted to come with me to fairy tale the old man said that it was a good place for us to go and that is where my father told me to go anyway before I was taken away by those guys in the tower. Naruto asks her as he stands up and grabs one of the two remaining packs and puts it on his back. I will go with you I still have to repay my department to you, Ezra say to him with a stern look on her face. Then you are not allowed to come with me, Naruto said to her as he started to walk toward the forest. Ezra is shocked by this and also annoyed at the same time and grabs the bag and starts to strangle Naruto. Why the hell not I thought that I was your friend why can't I come, she demands from him. Naruto was a little dizzy at first from being shaken but when his head stopped spinning he looked at her. Because you said that you were going to be coming with me to repay a department that you do not have with me instead of coming with me because I am a friend, Naruto said to her. She stops strangling him as she comes to the realization and smiles at this. All right then can I come with my friend to fairy tale? She asks with a smile coming across her face. I wouldn't have it any other way, he says to her as they walk into the forest together. Time skipped two days later after their long journey through the land of fury the two friends have finally made it to their destination, Magnolia Town. It looks like we finally made it Ezra I wonder where the guild is, Naruto said as they walked into the town. I wonder that as well I do not see where the guild is from here maybe we can ask the people of the town, she said to him. That is a good idea and it's a good thing that we got here when we did or else we would have run out of food and would have had to hunt, Naruto said. Well that is your fault for how much you eat, she said to him. I made sure to give you food and have you finish before I started eating didn't I, he said defensively while pouting at her. Yes you did I will give you that but I can't believe that eat that much, she said to him. Well I can't help it I have very high metabolism so I have to eat a lot, he said with a grin. Plus I gave you a sword so that you could defend yourself so I think that we would have been good for hunting anyway. Naruto said as he pointed at her bracelet that had a ruby eye and an orange fox leaping across the bracelet. Yes and I do thank you for that and because of this I was thinking that I know what type of magic that I will choose but I would like the master's input before I decide on that, she said to him while lightly stroking the bracelet on her left arm. Alright well that aside make sure to hide your tail and ears people will not understand you like I can and might not help us, she said to him, he nodded and did as she asked. Well now that we have that settled let's ask, excuse me mister can you tell me where fairy tale guild is? Ezra asked a merchant. Oh are you looking for some help there in the center of the city? He said to them. Thank you sir, Naruto said as him and Ezra started walking away. I hope that they will be my friends, Naruto said. After they get past you being a demon slayer I think that they will be happy to. Ezra said to him kindly. Are you sure about that? He asks her eagerly. Positive have I ever lied to you? She asked him. He grins in response and almost started wagging his tail until he remembered that it was a no-no to do in public. But you have to keep your promise that you will not kill anyone, Ezra said to him seriously. Don't worry Ezra I won't do that anymore I only did it because they were going to kill everyone if I didn't if I tried to knock them out and I didn't get one of them he could have killed everyone there while I was busy with that big guy, Naruto said to her. Alright as long as you keep that promise I will be with you forever. Ezra said with a gentle smile on her face. I will keep that promise and I never go back on my promises, he said to her. Oh wait but if it is a demon I have to kill it because it is my duty as a demon slayer to do that, Naruto said, Ezra nodded in acceptance to this answer and they kept walking. They were so busy talking that they almost passed fairy tale until Naruto stopped. Naruto what is it? Ezra asked looking at her friend and sees that he is grinning madly as he looks into fairy tale. I smell a demon, Naruto said right before he bolted into the double doors. Wow who is this kid? Some man with blue hair said. I smell a demon in here where is it I need to slay it, Naruto says to the guild. There is no demon here kid just mages, said a guy that was smoking a pipe. Ezra came into the guild next and found Naruto and went over to slap him upside the head for just barging into the building. Then Naruto's tail and ears pop up. This making everyone in the guild jump back in shock and making Ezra ending up face palming at this. Naruto ignores them as he starts to smell the air until he looks at a girl with long white hair with a punk outfit on and a little girl with short hair next to her and a pink dress, and a boy to her left with spiky white hair and a blue suit with a bow tie. Found you, Naruto said as he crouched down getting ready to pounce. The boy looked behind his sister and sees the boy and his eyes go as big as frying pans. Mirajane lookout. 
he says and she turns around in time for Naruto to pounce at her and smash his fist through the table that they were sitting at. What the hell is your problem punk if you want to fight then let's take it outside, she said as she lands behind him and looks at him. Everyone in the guild was paying attention now thinking that they were going to be able to have another excuse to have a brawl in the guild again. What the hell does he have cat ears, she asks as she points at his head. They're fox ears and alright let's take it outside I get to have a fight with my first demon just watch me QB. He says as he hops out the window to the back of the guild. Mira Jane looked at this kid like he was crazy but wasn't about to pass up a good fight after listening to Elfman for the past half hour about how she should calm down when she fights she has been in a fighting mood and this fox brat was going to be her outlet. I'm not a demon you stupid brat but that doesn't mean that I won't be having some fun beating you into the ground, she said as she got into a fighting stance. But you smell like a demon so I'm going to take you out, he said as he got on all fours again with a blood red magic seal appearing under him. Demon slaying magic bougie cloak first tail he said as red energy started to use easy out of him. What the hell magic did you say, whatever come at me, she said as a dark purple seal went under her. Take over Satan's soul she said as her arms and legs became black laws and her hair stated to spike up and her features started to turn more feral and wild. This is going to be a good fight, Naruto said as he ran at her again swining with his left. She jumped over it and attempted to sidekick him, but Naruto ducked underneath it and backhanded her. She blocked it but was sent flying back a few feet. Black lighting she said as she shot lighting at him. Naruto tried to jump to the left but was caught in it anyway. That was a good shot I think that I should take this to the next level, he said as another seal appeared underneath him. Baiju cloak second tail he said as he now gained a second tail. You think that just because you have another tail that you are going to beat me? Mira Jane says as she charges at him and slams down at his head. Then he vanishes from her view and she feels a clawed hand on the back of her head. The tail symbolizes what I can do in that state this one is built for speed. He whispers into her ear right before he slams her straight down onto the ground. He jumps up into the air and toe seals appear in both of his hands. Demon Slayer Magic Rasengan Barrage he say as he starts to come flying down when he sees Ezra charging at him. What did I tell you about killing people? She say as she has a clear magic seal appear over her wristband and a blood red sword comes out and slashes at Naruto's attack. He calls off the attack and flips over them and lands next to her. I promised that I wouldn't kill a human but she smells like a demon and she even looks like one right now, he said as he pointed at Mira Jane as she gets up looking at him with blood lust. That's it punk I'm going to kill you, she says as she has black lighting crackling all around her. That's her magic she isn't a demon she just uses a form of magic that makes her take the look and power. Ezra explains to him. Oh, he say as he comes to the realization and then looks at the girl that is now charging at them. So can I knock her out before she kills me or should I let her beat me up I am still not as to the interacting with people thing, he asks her. Stop the attack and I will try to talk her into calming down she say to him as her sword turns back into the bracelet. You got it? He say as he makes his hand grow big enough so that it is now holding Mira Jane not letting her move at all. What the hell kind of magic is this? She scrams as she tries to move but can't. This is demon slaying magic and now that I got a better whiff of you I can smell that you are human even though you also smell like a demon why is that? Naruto asks. I as take over magic you idiot now let me go so that I can kill you she say as more black sparks shoot out of her. One was about to hit Ezra but Naruto put up his hand and blocked it. That tickles there is no way that you are a demon if I can make it one sided with only two tails, Naruto said as he started to remove his baiju cloak. Let go of my sister, a little girl said as her and some other kids along with some adults came out. Now young man let go of my child or I will be forced to take action. A man that was the same height as Naruto said as he walked up to him. No one else could see it but Naruto felt the magic that he was suppressing and he knew that even if he went to a four tail straight he wouldn't stand a chance against him. I'm sorry sir on my friend's behalf this is actually just a misunderstanding, Ezra starts to say. I don't see how coming out of nowhere and attacking my sister is just a misunderstanding. The little girls say again. Naruto sniffs the air again and looks at the two other kids with white hair. You smell like demons to why is that? Naruto says as all of his magic recites back and Mira Jane falls on her ass. Young man why do you keep calling them demons they are children that live at the guild? The man says. 
Well they smell like QB so I thought that was what a demon smelled like but they also smell like humans at the same time. Naruto says while facing them. Everyone at the guild eyes start to go bug-eyed as they see Naruto's ears and tail. You are more of a demon than I am with that power of yours. Mirajane said as she gets back up and puts her magic away as well. We are her brother and sister we are called the takeover siblings. The boy says as he steps next to his sister. Well I am sorry about that again and I am not a demon for your information I'm a demon slayer. Naruto says with a grin on his face. Well young man what is you and your friend's name and why are you here? The man says. We came here to join the guild and we're about to go and talk to the guild master before Naruto attacked that girl over there. Ezra said as she pointed at Mirajane. Again I said I was sorry Ezra but I thought that she was a demon and my father told me to slay all demons if I found any, Naruto said defensively. Well if you are looking for the guild master then you found him that would be me my name is Macaron but the kids just call me Gigi, he said to them. Alright Gigi do you mind if we join your guild, Naruto said as he put an arm around Ezra's shoulder while grinning like an idiot again. I don't see why not you were able to best Mirajane in combat and we will need someone to keep an eye on you. He said while holding his hand out to him. Thanks Gigi. Naruto said and then his head shot up like he was forgetting something. Oh that's right. Naruto said as he vanished from people's view and appeared kneeling in front of the takeover siblings. What do you want punk? Mirajane said angrily at him. Naruto just dragged his fingernail across his palm and drew blood and then put his hand on her head. What the hell are you? She started to say as a blood red magic seal appeared underneath both of them. Demon slaying art minor regeneration he said as his baiju cloak wrapped around him and then spread over to her. What the hell get off of me? She started yelling and then she started to feel really warm. What are you doing to her? The little girl said and was about to grab him but she felt a hand on her wrist. She looked at who was holding her arm and saw a red hair and two different eye colors looking at her. Just wait if you touch him now he might accidentally hurt her, just watch, Ezra said to her. She nodded and everyone watched as Mirajane was now completely enveloped by the same red energy that Naruto was. They see a blissful smile come over Mirajane's face as all the wounds that she had on her were healed right before their eyes. She starts to fall and Naruto kneels down as the air both sitting now Naruto's hands still on her head. When the injuries were healed the red energy went back to Naruto who ended up falling back on his ass panting. Ezra went next to him and acted like the back of a chair for him as he looked at Mirajane who was looking at her arms in amazement at what just happened. How did, why did, she tried to say but couldn't finish what she was saying. I was the one that hurt you so I thought that I should be the one that healed you but I guess that it was not a great idea to do on an empty stomach. Naruto says while chuckling. Wait I thought that you ate this morning before I woke up you were lying to me. Ezra said having half a mind to strangle the boy but also smiled warmly at his kindness. You have the strength to protect and you also help without a second thought, when we get you used to human society you will be a perfect asset to fairy tale, Makarov said with a smile on his face. Why did you heal me, I still don't get it you tried to kill me one second and then another you heal me what is wrong with you, Mirajane asked. Because I wrongly hurt someone that will be part of my family so I thought that it would be right to heal you, Naruto said as he stood up a little with Ezra's help. You are not part of my family, she said back to him bitterly. I don't mean your blood family I mean your family at fairy tale, from what Gigi said I would imagine that we are all family here, Naruto said with a smile. You're a cousin, she mumbled. Who? Naruto said confused. Twice removed, she said as she walked inside followed by her siblings. Well how about we get some food in you before you pass out? A girl with brown hair says as she walks up to them helping Ezra carry Naruto. I'm game for that what should we eat? Naruto asks. How about I get that for you, by the way my name is Kana the girl with short white hair is Lisana and the boy is Elfman. She said introducing them. When they heard their names they turned back and waved in their direction, they waved back and started to walk away to their table. The girl Kana led them to the bar and they started eating. Naruto was given a big bowl of ramen with a piece of strawberry cake and Ezra got the same. They both had stars replace their eyes as Naruto took a sip of the ramen and Ezra took a bit of the strawberry cake. This is great I think I'm in heaven. Naruto said as he started to wolf down the ramen. This is better than anything I have ever had before. Ezra said as she took every bit savoring the taste like it would be the last. It looks like you two are enjoying that, 
Please don't hold back on eating we can get you some more if you want, Kana said. Sweet thanks Kana we will definitely take you up on that, Naruto said as he put down the ramen bowl that looked like it was licked clean. He looked over at Ezra and noticed that she was getting teary eyed with a fork hanging out of her mouth. Naruto was about to start panicking when he noticed that the cake that she had on her plate was gone. He just let out a little chuckle as he put his plate of cake on top of hers and took her ramen bowl. Her eyes lit up when he did that and she started to eat it again as Naruto gulped down the rest of the food. By the way we should get you out of those rags that you are wearing now, Makarov said as he walked up behind the kids on the bar. Alright I'm fine with that but how are you accepting me so easily, Naruto asked as his ears perked up in curiosity. Well my boy even though you look a little different you still have a big heart and that is what matters here in fairy tale, he said with a smile. Thanks gg oh ya yeah, what is that symbol that I see on everyone, Naruto asked as he pointed to the guild symbol on everyone. That is the guild symbol that represents us and links us if you were to join you would get one as well, he said to him. Definitely, please gg let us join I want to have a new family that I can protect, Naruto said. But what of your friend there what if she doesn't want to join I already said that you could but I want both of you to be sure that this is what you want, he says to them. As long as I am with Ezra I don't mind where I go and you guys already treat me like family so I would like to stay here but if Ezra doesn't then I'm going to be going with her, Naruto said as he looked at Gigi. Naruto is one of the first people that I came to trust and even though I have only know him for a short time I already know that I can trust him with my life so I will stay here too, Ezra said to Makarov. Alright then that is good to hear, Mira Jane Elfman would you mind coming over here for a moment, Makarov asks two of the siblings. They come over and now Naruto takes a closer look at the boy. He can already tell that he is very close to his sisters and has a shy personality by the way that he walks behind his tomboy of a sister. Would you two mind helping them get some proper clothes for now? He asks them. Fine come with me tomato head. Mary Jane says as she walked to the back of fairy tale. Ezra gains a tick mark on her head and was thinking if she should attack her for the comment but she felt Naruto's tail wrap around her waist and she looked at him. Don't let her get to you just go with her and get a good change of clothes, he says to her with a warm smile on his face. She blushed a little at what he was doing and then nodded as she hopped off of the stool and walked after Mirajane. Now then Elfman was it, let go you're going to help me get clothes for myself right? Naruto said as he stepped in front of him with a smile. Yes that's right come with me, he said as he walked down the same hallway that his sister and Ezra just did and took a left into a room. You do know that you don't have to be nervous with me like you or I'm not going to attack you I only did that earlier because of your sister smelling like a demon now that I know that you are not I'm not going to attack you, Naruto said to him as they walked into the room. Sorry for not believing you right away it's just that after you being able to beat my sister with little problem I'm a little bit weary of you, Elfman said to him. Well don't worry you will get stronger just in time so what do you think that I should wear, Naruto asked as they stood in front of a wardrobe. I think that you should just choose what you want all these are spare clothes that I have and they should fit you, he said to Naruto as he started to walk out of the room. Alright thanks I'll be out there in a minute, Naruto says as he grabs some clothes. When Naruto gets outside he is wearing a black shirt with wolves running across the whole thing with a silver moon right over his heart, he was wearing plan grey jeans and grey hiking boots. I think that this should work well but I still couldn't find anything that had a fox on it oh well wolf look like foxes, Naruto said as he walked down the hall. When he got there he saw the takeover siblings back together at their table and then he saw Ezra waiting for him at the end of the hall. She was wearing a white dress and brown shoes with a chest plate. Ezra why are you wearing a chest plate? Naruto asked. I found out what magic I'm going to us and also I just want to wear this. Ezra said not being able to tell him the real reason why in front of all these people. Really what type of magic are you going to choose? Naruto asked. The master said that I will be able to us re-equip magic and the preference I chose is the knight that has a good balance between attack and defense. She said to him. Cool I'm trusting you to watch my back alright Ezra. Naruto says with a smile as he holds his hand out to her. I will. She says as she takes his hand and shakes it. Hey master they're back we should get them their symbols now. A blue herd man say to the master. Alright Macau thank you for telling me. Makarov say to the man as he walks up to the two friends. Alright well what color would you like for your symbols to be and where? Makarov asks. Make mine red and on my right forearm. 
Naruto asks as he holds out his arm to him. Alrighty then here you go. He says as he slams the stamp on his arm and in a second he now has the fairy tale symbol on his arm. A blue one on my left shoulder if you wouldn't mind. Ezra say as she holds out her left arm and in another second she has the same thing. Alright then two are officially part of fairy tale, he says as he waves them off. Haha ha, yay well by the looks of it we have about two hours before it's time to go to bed what do you want to do, Naruto asks Ezra. I would like to go and train, she says to him and they both head out. Little did they know they had three little white haired siblings following them to the woods. When they get there Ezra pulls out her short sword that was hanging on her waist and points it at Naruto. I am ready, she says as her eyes become slits as she stares down Naruto. All right then, Naruto says as he envelops his hands in red energy to form claws. Here I come, she says as she lunges at Naruto who hops out of the way and slashes down at her. She rolls to the side and kicks at Naruto, who brings his arm up to block the kick. He goes flying 10 feet and lands on top of a tree branch. Wow you have gotten a lot better in such a short time, he said to her as he drops down and envelops his leg in energy as he axe kicks at her. She brings up her sword to block and slides the kick along the sword redirecting the attack at the ground. Then she feels a hand on the side of her face as she starts to go head first into the ground but stops inches away from hitting the ground. Looks like it is my win again, Naruto says to her with a smile on his face. Damn it why can't I beat you? Ezra says as she lays flat on the ground looking up at the sky with anger in her eyes. Don't be mad Ezra I would be surprised if you were able to last for 5 minutes in a spare with me actually. Naruto says to her as he lies down on her right side. Why is that? I want to be strong enough to be able to watch your back, she says to him looking. You want to be able to watch my back but you don't think that you are strong enough that's stupid, Naruto says to her. How is it stupid that I want to be able to help you Naruto you are my best friend and I have to always rely on you when things go bad, she says to him angrily. And what is wrong with that, he says to her, she was shocked at this, you idiot I want to be able to help you whenever things go bad but I can't because I'm not strong enough to. If you want to get strong then get stronger it will take a while to do it but you will with time you don't need to rush into it but I know that one day you will be able to watch my back, but even right now I trust you to do that no matter how weak you are. Naruto says to her. But if I'm not strong enough to watch your back what is the point in you letting me if I can't do it? She says to him, now longing for an answer. If anyone is going to watch my back in a mission that we do I will only want one that I trust and not a strong person that I don't, and I trust you with my life so you're perfect, Naruto says to her. Alright thanks Naruto I will try to do my best and I will be watching your back always, she says to him with a smile on her face. I will be counting on it now don't you think that we should all be going back to the guild? Naruto said as a small magic symbol appeared on his finger and a miniature baiju bomb. We? She asks as she looks where he was pointing. He shot the bomb and it exploded in a red light and five seconds the takeover siblings landed right on top of one another in front of Naruto and Ezra who were now standing right next to each other with an evil glare in their eyes. One chance why were you spying on us? Naruto asked as he started cracking his knuckles. We weren't spying on you per se observing, Lasana said as she dusted off her clothes and looked at them. Elfman was laughing awkwardly while rubbing the back of his head. Mira Jane just tisks to the side as she avoids eye contact with them. Well whatever let's go back to the guild if it gets too late we might get attacked by animals, Naruto said as he started walking back. What are you scared of some little forest critters, Mira Jane said with a wicked grin on her lips. I am not but your siblings might and what if they got hurt I know that you might not like me but I know that you care about them, he said as he continued to walk. You should just listen to him and come with us. Ezra said with a stern face as she followed Naruto. God damn it. Mira Jane said under her breath as she followed them with her siblings right behind her. When they all get back to the guild it is dark outside and there is one man standing outside the guild. Where were all of you I was about to go out and look for you. Makarov says in a stern voice. Sorry Gigi me and Ezra went out to go and train a little and they followed us, I didn't think it would take this long to get back, Naruto said. That's because you kept on making wrong turns the whole way here what the hell is with your sense of direction? Mira Jane said with a tick mark on her head. Well he was trying, Ezra said as she bowed her head in apology to the guild master. 
That doesn't make any difference if it took an extra hour to get here and you never let me leave because you said it was a learning experience, she said to her. And we had to add another half hour for me to break you two up every time you wanted to go at it, Naruto said to her with a grin. Shut up I'll kill you, she said as black sparks started to get shot out of her. Now now both of you I understand what happened and I'm just glad that all of you are back and safe but Naruto next time you leave tell someone alright we are family and the guild will worry. If Kana didn't ask me where you were I wouldn't have thought about it until now, he said to the fox boy. Alright I will be more careful next time sorry about this, he said to him. No harm done but I do have some bad news we only have one room open with the short notice that we were given so do you mind sleeping in the same room? Makarov asked. I don't mind on the days that we were traveling here we had to sleep together anyway so one more night shouldn't be all that bad, is that okay with you Ezra? Naruto asked. I do not mind one more night that will not be a problem, Ezra said to the master. Goodbye tomorrow we will have a room for you I promise but how about some sleep would you mind taking them to the spare room for me you three? Makarov asked the siblings. Without a word Mirajane walked past them and into the guild. Naruto looked a little bit sad until she turned around. Well are you two coming or not? She asked as she walked into the back of the guild again. Naruto brightened up as he started dragging Ezra with him to follow her. Ezra still couldn't figure out what about Mirajane that annoyed the hell out of her but being with Naruto calmed her down enough to not attack her. While Mirajane wanted to fight Ezra also but couldn't because of a certain blonde fox being like her own guard dog. I will fight her later, they both thought at the same time. You can but only as a spare no serious hurting each other, Naruto said to Ezra. She blushed in embarrassment as she forgot about the mental link that they both shared. Well we are here just go in and sleep. Mirajane said as she opened the door with her foot and walked away to her and her siblings room. When they both walked in they noticed that there was a big queen size bed in the room to the right and a wardrobe to the left across the room from it, but other than those two things the room looked to be rather normal. Naruto I need your assistance, Ezra said as he closed the door. Sure what it is, he said as he walked over to her. Help me get this chest played off there is a band that I can't seem to reach, she says as she pointed to the one on the back of her neck. He just nodded and unstrapped it making the armor drop to the floor with a clang and a thud. Ezra looked and sees Naruto's face twisted in pain she is confused and then looks down at his foot that is now has a red line where the armor dropped on his foot. He calms down and lets out a weak. Ow. She ends up having a giggling fit as anime tears are hanging on his eyes. Why are you laughing at my pain? He whines. I know it is not a nice thing to do but if you could see your face right now you would understand she says as she wipes a tear out of her eye and sits on the bed. Well since you are done laughing at me do you want to go to bed? He asks her. She nods to him as she lays down on the bed and Naruto right beside her. He wraps his tail around her stomach which makes her giggle a little and then smile at the familiar warmth of her friend being so close to her. Ezra why are you wearing that armor when you were with people but with me you don't? Naruto asks bluntly. I don't trust them, she says to him silently. But you can see that they are good people even though you want to fight Mirajane she is a good person too, he says to her concerned. Naruto I don't want to be hurt again that's all. You are the one that saved me from that place that is why I can trust you to not have to protect myself, but I feel that I need to protect my heart from getting that hurt again, if you weren't there I don't know that I would have done, she said to him with tears forming in her eyes. She closed her eyes to hold back the tears then she felt something wrapping around her and she then felt a body leaning on her with a chin on her head. Take all the time that you need Ezra but no matter what I will always be with you alright, that is a promise of a lifetime, Naruto says to her as he licks her forehead. She is a little bit craped out that he licked her and not kissed her but then she remembered that she was the first human that he had ever met so he still didn't do well with human way of doing things. She then thought of this and then realized how nice it was and hugged him back. Thank you Naruto, she said as she fell asleep. Naruto smiled at this and then fell asleep. Little did they know that when they woke up the next day they were going to be in for on hell of a surprise. Damn I am surprised with myself that I wrote this much. Well not really you would not imagine what you can do when you have more than just one day out of the week to work on something. Well this is chapter 6 guys and please no flaming I don't think that flamethrowers are nice. The next morning Naruto and Urza were still right next to each other when they were asleep not knowing yet that this was a no no when you were a little kid. Urza because of her being in the tower of heaven her whole life and Naruto because of him living with animals up until the beginning of this week. 
Naruto was having a dream where he was surrounded by an unlimited amount of ramen and he was able to eat it non-stop. He was woken up by the sound of the door opening. His eyes shot open and he was on all fours standing protectively over Urza as he looking at the door while it opened. Urza was looking at him confused at the sudden action but looked and saw the door opening and knew that he was being jumpy. Naruto don't worry it's just someone from the guild they're good people remember you don't need to be protective, she said to him while putting a hand on his head. He jolted at her touch but calmed down as he saw a familiar brown haired girl look into the room. Sorry if I woke you up I was just going to tell you that I was going to eat breakfast and I was wondering if you two wanted to eat with me, Kana said. We will be there in a moment, wait outside if you do not mind, Urza said to her and she nodded and closed the door behind her. Naruto was the first to get up and walk over to the wardrobe and look to see if there were any clothes that they could wear. He noticed that there was another dress that looked just like the one that Urza was wearing in panties for her. On the other side there was a plain black shirt with red jeans for him. He threw his clothes onto the bed and then noticed that Urza was getting up. I'll be right outside so that you can change just tell me when you are done so that I can change too, Naruto said to her as he stepped outside. When he got outside he saw Kana standing to the side of the door smiling at him. Hello again did you two sleep well? She asked him. We slept okay thanks but I have no idea where I will be able to sleep tonight, Naruto said. The master said that he was looking for a palace but couldn't decide on one yet, she said to him. I wonder if I should find a job somewhere here, Naruto mumbled. You could just take a request then it will give you the money that you need to have a house and until you get the right amount of money I don't think that the master minds you being here, Kana said to him. Naruto smiled at the idea but also had some question marks hanging over his head as to what a quest was. Kana just smiled at this and decided to help him out. Why don't you come with me on a quest that I was going to do today, if you want you can bring Urza with us, she said. Alright thanks for the help, what is the quest that you were going to go on anyway? He asks. I was supposed to fight a Vulcan that was attacking a nearby village we should be back by tonight or tomorrow morning, she said to him. Right then Urza's head comes out of the door and he looks at Naruto. I need your assistance, she say to him as her head goes back into the room. I'll talk to you when we are eating breakfast okay, he says to Kana as he walks into the room. When he gets in there he finds that Urza is holding her chest plate but is having difficulty getting the hook in the back to stay click. Here let me do it. Naruto says as he clicks the last buckle and it's back on. Thank you Naruto I will wait outside for you as you change, she says and starts to leave the room but Naruto catches her hand. Waiters I want to ask you a question really fast, he says to her. What is it, she asks him. Will you mind doing a quest with me and Kana, he asks her. She freezes up a little but then nods her head with a determined look in her eye. Thanks with this I might be able to buy myself a place to live she says to her with a smile. She looks a little sad that her friend wanting to live on his own and starts to think that maybe he doesn't want to be around her. But Naruto hears this and smiles at her warmly. But it might take a few jobs for me to be able to get that place to stay so if I'm not imposing on you would you mind if I stayed with you until then, he asks her. She smiles at that. I do not mind Naruto but I wonder if the master will let that, she says curiously. Well we will ask him later now give me a minute to get changed so that we can go and eat breakfast. He says to her and she leaves. He quickly throws off his clothes and puts on the new ones but notices that he still has his tail out and the shirt isn't baggy enough for him to hide it there. This might be a problem, he says as he walks out the door. Hello Naruto. Kana and Urza say to him. Hello to both of you to so let's go and eat some food. He says to them as they all start to walk to the main area of the guild. When they get there the first thing that Naruto notices is that there are a lot less people here now. So what will you guys have? Kana asks. I don't know what the foods are called I just eat something depending if it smells good or not, Naruto says. Ezra just nods her head in agreement. Alright then how about we all have some eggs and bacon then? She suggested. The two just shrugged and followed her to a table. When they sat down she yelled the food and then a man with blue hair handed them three plates of it and some milk. Enjoy, he says with a smile as he walks back to the table that he was at with a man smoking on a pipe. Thanks Macau, Kana says as she starts eating her food. Both Naruto and Urza look at the food in confusion at first then when they try a bit their faces lighten up. It's good, they say at the same time as they start to eat it. Kana smiles at this and continues to eat her share, 
They eat as silence until they are all done. Thanks for the food, they say and then they look at each other. All right well from what I was told we are going to be fighting a big ape thing right, Naruto says. It's called a Vulcan Naruto and yes that is what we have to do, Urza says to him. Well you know what you have to do but here is the twist to it we will get 25,000 for completing the job but we get a 5,000 jewels bonus if we get it alive and give it to the sheriff there, Kana say to them. That shouldn't be all that hard it should take an hour if I find the scent, Naruto says to them. Remember Naruto alive and do damage to the surrounding area and we get the whole thing of money understand, Urza says to him. You got it Urza I will be careful and hold back on it, he says to her. Kana had a giant sweat drop that was forming on her head as she was hearing them talk about him not killing the thing when she was going to ask a veteran mage to go with them because she was worried about them not having enough power to take this thing out. Naruto what magic do you as I know card magic? Kana asks. I as demon slaying magic and Urza is learning how to us re-equip magic, Naruto said to her. I never heard of that type of magic before but if you were able to beat Mirajane with it you must be strong, she says to him. The thing that scares me about his magic is that he was still holding back on her, Urza says to Kana. You held back on Mirajane. Oh god don't let her hear that or she will fight you every chance she gets to beat the hell out of you. Kana says as she looks at him in shock. I'll fight her anytime she wants I don't mind if she gets better then I will be able to have two training buddies then, Naruto says as he looks at Urza. I do not mind but how much were you holding back you never said how strong you could get, Urza asks Naruto. Well I can go up to a five tailed baiju cloak but I can't control it that well the best that I can do is four tails right now, Naruto says to her. What is the difference between tails, Kana asks. Let's see the first tail gives me high regeneration ability, second tail gives me highest speed, third tail is good for defense, and fourth tail gives me overwhelming attack, he says to them as he counts off his fingers. I can also share these qualities to people that I form a bond with, Naruto says to her as he looks at Urza. That is really powerful but what if you are supposed to fight something at a distance I only saw the end of the fight but I saw that you only attacked close range even when Mirajane attacked you with evil spark. Kana said to him. Well then I have Baiju Bomb and Baiju Cannon, both are too strong to us on someone that I am trying to just defeat they are used to destroy an entire area, he says to her. Naruto started laughing at that and both Urza and Kana had sweat drops at his comment. He was holding back that much if he ever goes berserk he will end up destroying the town. They both thought. So Kana what does card magic do exactly, Naruto asked curiously. Well it can be used to us a lot of different elements that are trapped inside of the cards that I us and if I combine them I can get powerful combinations, she said proudly. Well let's see you can be the long range support and me and Urza can be the close range, Naruto mumbled as he started thinking of ideas of how they can work together. Then that settles it let us go to the destination, Urza said as she stood up from her seat. Right behind you, Kana hurry up we will leave without you, Naruto says as he starts walking out the door. I am right behind you, she says as she gets up as well and goes to them. But right then and there the doors burst open and there is a small boy at the entranceway. I G N E E L L L L are you here? A boy with pink hair yells as he searches in the guild frantically. Igneal why does that sound familiar? Naruto thinks as he sees the boy barge in and start flipping over everything looking for something. The boy ends up flipping the table that Mirajane and her siblings were eating at and ends up throwing the food in her face. What the hell brat I'm going to kill you? She yells as black sparks start shooting out of her. Oh god he is dead, thought the whole guild. Mirajane turned into her satan soul form and slammed the pink haired boy across the guild and threw the wall into the back. Oh god damn it Urza do you think that I should save him? Naruto asked. He brought this on himself but she might kill him you should stop this before it escalates any further, she says to him. Got it. He says to her as a blood red magic seal with the QB's face in the center of it, Naruto grins madly. Baiju cloak tail too he says as he is once again covered in energy and vanishes from everyone's view and then appears right in front of the pink haired kid who was now logged into a tree. Mirajane stop I think I know why he is like this he is looking for someone, Naruto tries to explain but she is in a blind rage when she had food thrown into her face. She lunges at him with evil sparks surrounding her making her look like she had black lightning armor. Fine you leave me with no choice then sorry about this, Naruto says to her sadly as a seal appears under him again. 
Baiju Cloak Tail 3 he says silently as a third tail shoots out of his back. His features turn more feral and his eyes become wild as he slams one of his tails into the ground. He holds up one hand and stops Mira Jane with only moving back a few inches. Calm down please I don't want to hurt you, Naruto says in a growling voice. Her eyes open in what he thought was shock but then they narrowed again. You were holding back on my I'll kill you, she says as she sent her hand towards her face. Naruto sighs as he just throws her into the ground with such force that it breaks the ground. Yes I was holding back on you yesterday and you know why because if didn't you would have died, Naruto says to her coldly. You are very strong and have the potential to get much stronger but that is only if you live do you understand, I'm like this because if I wasn't I would have died long ago, Naruto says to her. Her magic starts to dissipate and he kneels down next to her again reciting two of his tails as he stabs his hand with his nail again making blood start to trickle out. I will heal your injuries but I will let the pain stay for a little while so that you do not follow me for today I have something that I must do, Naruto says to her. Demon slaying magic minor regeneration he says as he starts to heal her like the last time. He face was down in the ground so he couldn't see her smiling again at the warm feeling that she was having. When he was done she noticed that he was not kidding the wounds themselves were healed but the pain of the wounds were still there. I'll see you later Mira Jane, Naruto says to her as he walks to the kid that was still in the tree. He is just unconscious he isn't dead that's a good thing I will deal with him tomorrow I can't shake the feeling that I have heard that name before, Naruto thought. Lee Sana, Elfman come and get your sister and bring her and the boy to the infirmary so that they can get some treatment, Naruto said while digging the pink haired boy out of the tree. The two came out from the guild and Elfman took the boy as his sister took Mira Jane and they both went back into the guild to get them both treatments. Naruto walked back in through the hole in the wall and went to Kena and Urza. How the hell did you do that? Kena said in shock. Nice job Naruto. Urza said to him with a nod. Thanks Urza. And I just defended the kid for being an idiot so I am a little shocked with myself but Urza told me to make sure that he didn't die so, Naruto trailed off. Well anyway shale we go to the destination, Urza said. Fine but now I think that we are going to be fine if Naruto was able to stop her that easily a Vulcan won't even stand a chance. Kena said with a smile on her face. I'll do my best so lead the way, Naruto said. Alright but I figured with your gung ho attitude you would want to lead, Kena said. Well I would like to but the thing is that I don't have a very good sense of direction my dad said that it is something like a curse to demon slayers, Naruto said to her. Well then that is all the more reason for you two for a team with someone then, Kena said. What's a team? Naruto asks. You form up with people in the guild and form groups that are only for a little while are you for a team that you are with permanently and are with all the time on requests that you go out on, Kena said. That sounds like fun but the only person that I know well is Urza, can we make a team with only two people? Naruto asks. Yes you can it's just that most people try to have more than just two people. Kena says to him honestly. That's okay me and Urza can take out anything together because we trust each other to watch the others back, Naruto says as he puts his arm over her shoulder. Well you two are very buddy buddy aren't you? Kena say jokingly as they walk through town. Well I did a bond with her so we are very close, Naruto says grinning. That reminds me you never explained what this is exactly, Urza says to him. Well demon slayers can create bonds with people that they care about and depending on how strong they are depends on the number of bonds that they can make at one time, Naruto says. What does a bond do exactly, Kena asks. Well they allow me to be able to share my power with that person without limiting it for the fear of my magic being rejected by the person. Also they will share my lifespan and their bodies will be stronger, faster, and having heightened healing abilities. Finally they have their magic abilities heightened and they are the only people that we can mate with, Naruto finished. Both girls up until the end were nodding their heads thinking this would be a great thing but then their faces turned red as Urza's hair and steam coming out of their heads. What's up you two are you not feeling well, Naruto asked concerned. You don't think that you could have consulted me about that when you made that bond with me that you would be thinking about that, Urza said. What are you talking about I wanted to heal your eye but I couldn't do that unless I bonded with you, Naruto said. You didn't tell me about th ma mating thing. Urza stuttered. Wait you know what that is can you tell me QB never told me about it kept on saying he would tell me when I was older but then one day he up and left, Naruto said. Both Urza and Kena face palmed at this. 
He knew about everything except for that are you shitting me, Kana thought. I have to tell him what that is later, Urza thought. You will thanks Urza, Naruto said while hugging her with a smile on his face. Also how does he know what you were thinking all the time is it because of the bond thing? Kana asks. Yes that is and the older we get the stronger it will get so no matter how far away we are from the other we can always keep in contact with the other, Naruto says to her. Don't worry I'll tell you what it means tonight after the job, Urza whispers to him while petting his head. Yay, Naruto says as he lets go and was about to run in a circle when he heard something. Kana where are we supposed to go for the request again? Naruto asks. She blinked a few times and then looked around and realized that they were only half a mile from the town. Wow time flies when you were having fun I guess we are about five minutes from the town and they were surrounded by them in the forest. Kana said trailing off at the end. Get ready because I hear them, Naruto says as a magic seal appears in his hands. Wait did you just say them it was supposed to be only one of them, Kana say as her hands start shaking as she brings out her cards. Can you say how many there are exactly? Urza asks Naruto as she brings out her short sword from her hip in her left hand and her demon fox short sword in her right. I think that there are seven so do you think that I can as my baiju cloak or no? Naruto asks as Rasengan's appear in his hands. You can as first tail if things get bad but that is as far as you are allowed to go you will end up killing them if you as two tails. She say as she states to glare at a bush. At first there was silence and then a few seconds later five Vulcans jump out at the group at the same time. Naruto jumps at two of them double axe kicking them into the ground face first and then delivering a Rasengan for each of them in the center of their backs. There was a small explosion that enveloped the three of them and then Naruto jumps out of the smoke cloud standing next to Kana. The Vulcans that he hit were both out with their eyes swirling. Meanwhile Urza jumped at one of them and slashed at its legs immobilizing it. The Vulcan tried to swing at her but she jumped above the swing and slammed the hilt of her swords onto its head knocking it out. Can us a spell to distract them, Naruto said as a blood red seal appears underneath him. Oh okay, she says as she picks two cards out of the deck and points it at the sky. Card magic mist she yells as a giant mist cloud came down on them covering them. I didn't mean hide us, whatever it gave me the time I needed anyway, Naruto said as he was in his first tailed cloak. He focused his energy into his hands making the hands grow in size as he swung to his right and in front of him. Both grabbing Vulcans and then he clapped his hands together slamming the two together knocking them out. That looks like it's all of them I guess that I was wrong. Naruto said as he started to release his baiju cloak. I guess so but that was amazing how you were able to do that now I can see how you beat Mirajane and you said that you can get even stronger than that at your age that's amazing. Kana said as she starts to jog over to Naruto. Naruto what are you doing pay attention. Urza yells as she lunges at him. Naruto jumped to Kana and picked her up bridal style just in time to get hit through trees. Urza slashes at the Vulcan with the flat sides of her blades and hits it in the temple. When it was stunned she dropped her shot sword and palmed it under the chin sending it ten feet in the air. It landed on its head twitching a little but otherwise knocked out. The mist cleared enough to show Naruto a Vulcan jumping out of a tree about to attacking Urza in the back. I know you said not to us it but I have to. Naruto said as a magic seal appears in front of his face. Demon Slayer Magic Baiju Bomb Naruto yells as he shoots a small red energy ball at the Vulcan. Urza turns around just in time to shield her face as the bomb hits. But instead of exploding on impact it carries the Vulcan a few feet away then explodes, leaving the Vulcan in a small crater with scorch marks all over it. You watch your own back, Naruto said jokingly as he sat up a little. Thanks for watching my back. Urza said as she starts to walk over to Naruto and Kana. Same here, and Kana are you okay when we got hit I don't think I blocked the whole hit, Naruto asked the girl still in his arms. She was shaking still but he didn't see any injuries on her. I guess that you were okay, he said as she let her down, she nearly falls at first but then when her legs stop shaking she stands in front of them, I'm sorry I screwed up and got you hurt, she says to Naruto. Naruto puts his hand on her head and smiles like an idiot. Don't worry about it I heal fast plus they might give us a big bonus for this and none of us were seriously hurt so it's fine. He says to her while giving her a thumbs up. But, she started but Urza put a hand on her shoulder. 
He says it is fine and nothing will ever go exactly as we are told sometimes but we got through the mission now we just need to go and get the village and give them the Vulcans, she said to her. All right but how are we going to get them there, she asked as she looked at all seven Vulcans on the ground and how big they were. Don't worry I got this remember how I told you that my fourth tail was good at overwhelming force right, Naruto said. They both shook their heads yes remember him saying that. Well it's not me being strong it's from me having a lot of things hitting you at one time. He said as a blood red seal appeared on his right shoulder. Baiju cloak tail 4 partial cloak he says as his hand turns into a dark crimson with black intertwined, and looking like the energy was moving all around it. That kind of looks scary. Kana says as she looks at his arm. I know I hope that I won't have to us this in fount of people, Naruto says honestly as he points his palm at all the Vulcans. The girls were about to ask what he was doing then his arm shot forward along with six others grabbing the Vulcans and lifting them into the air. Both the girls' jaws dropped and hit the floor at this and Naruto was just smiling away. Kana lead on, he says to the girl and she shakes her head and starts leading the way. Urza walked to Naruto's left and noticed that he had a big bruise on his back and left arm almost like he had broken bones. Don't tell her but I think I broke three ribs and my shoulder blade when I got hit by that punch when we get to the village I'm going to heal up, Naruto said to Urza. Okay but if you find it hard to walk just tell me and I will help you, she said to him. He smiled and said thanks to her for her kindness. After about 10 minutes of walking they ended up at the village which was good because Naruto was about to have Urza help him walk because the pain was starting to get to him. When they entered the village everyone's jaw dropped when they saw seven full-grown Vulcans being carried by giant red claws, and that those claws were all coming out of one boy's arm and he was carrying them like they were nothing. Can I go and find the major I'm going to put them down now, Naruto said as she started to drop them all in a circle in the middle of town. All right be back in a moment she said as she ran off to go and find the major. Naruto's arm returned to normal as he grabbed his bag and pulled out some rope and started to tie up the Vulcan's hands and feet. Would you like some help? Urza asked him. Yeah thanks, he said as he tossed her half of the rope and they continued on what they were doing. It will be dark in about an hour and it will take three to get back to the guild we should stay the night here, Naruto said to Urza in his mind. I will trust your judgment but I want you to heal the second that we are at the cabin those injuries will only get worse with time, she said back to him. You got it, he said to her as he tied up the last Vulcan. By now the major was being led by Kana who did still not believe her story about a group of little kids beating seven Vulcans and bringing them all here. When he got to the clearing his jaw dropped and his eyes were the size of dinner plates. How did, who did, but you're, the major started to say but couldn't get any of his questions out before another wanted to be answered first. Sir we are from Fairy Tale and we are here with your request to take care of the Vulcan that was attacking your town. Urza says as she walks up to him and bows politely. Ah thank you but I didn't think that there were this many of them but I promised a reward and for doing us an extra service you will also receive a bonus. He said to them. Sweet thanks mister, Naruto said. We will also require logging for the night do you recommend any place here? Urza asks him. I think that you should go to Dylan he has a good place and he will give you food and logging on the house for what you did, the major said to the girl. Thank you very much, she says to him with a nod. Let's go and get some sleep, Naruto said as she starts to walk over to the major. But first let me get your reward, the major said as he walked over to the city hall again. They waited outside for a little while and then the major came out of the hall with two bags. Here is the 25,000 jewels promised for completing the assignment and here is 35,000 jewels for bringing them all to us alive, the major said as he handed Urza the bags. We got 60,000 jewels in total that is insane for a D rank request I think I will stay with you on quests from now on, Kana said to them as she looked at the bags. Well let's go get some food and then sleep I am tired, Naruto said as he yawned. I agree with him if we turn in early we will be able to get back to the guild early in the morning. Urza said. Well right this way let me show you the way to the logging then. The major said as he lead them into the town again. When they were almost back at the front of the town again he stopped in front of a large inn that was labeled Dylan's Inn. Rather straightforward isn't it? Kana said jokingly. Well as long as we get good logging I do not mind, Naruto said. How many rooms should we get? Kana asked. I think one will be fine and they are holding us up for free so I do not wish to inconvenience them any more than I must, Urza said. I'm okay with that how about you Kana? 
Naruto said. As long as we get at least two beds I don't see a problem with that, she says to them. When they get inside the place is relatively quiet except for a few more people eating. I will talk to him for you just go and get a seat so that you may be served, the major said as he walked over to the desk at the other side of the room. What are we going to get for dinner? Kena asked as she took a seat at a circle table. Naruto and Urza sat on either side of her and thought about what they should eat. In reality Naruto and Urza have not eaten real food until they ended up in fairy tale. I think that we will just have whatever you have, Naruto said. Kena just shrugged and then looked at the menu and saw that they had ramen and she smirked. Well I see that they have ramen on the list, she said and his eye brightened. Ramen please, Naruto yelled to everyone in the place. Urza slapped him in the back of the head for his stupidity but then remembered that he was badly hurt. Sorry Naruto that was on impulse, she said to him sadly. Don't worry I just need to heal after we eat don't be sad okay, Naruto said back. Will you two stop doing that with your bond thing it makes me feel left out, Kena whines. Sorry Kena just got into the habit of doing that so what are you two going to eat, Naruto asks them. I think I'll have a salad with some steak, Kena said to him. I will have the same as her. Urza says as she looks at the menu still not knowing what any of these things are then she saw that on the desert that there was strawberry cake and her eyes started to sparkle. Have as much as you want after the food we can pay them if you feel like we should, Naruto said to Urza said. She nodded happily as she waved a waitress over to take their order. They told them their orders and she went off and they chatted about some things then ate their food and Urza ended up ordering a whole strawberry cake. When they were done eating and laughing Naruto asked them if they could have another cake to take with them tomorrow and they said someone would give them one in the morning. He thanked them and the waitress that they had showed them to their room. When they got into the room they saw that it had two beds and a nightstand in between them. Alright you girls get changed I will be waiting outside, Naruto said, and right before he left the room Urza caught his hand. Before you leave can you help me, she said as she lifted her hair so that the buckle on the back of her neck was visible. No problem, he said to her as he unhooked the buckle and jumped back a foot so that he didn't slam the armor into his foot again. When it clanged to the floor Urza rubbed her shoulders a little and then cracked her back. Naruto giggled at this and walked out of the room so that they could change in peace. A few minutes later Urza came out with Kena both wearing sleeping clothes. Urza wearing a bright red plan clothes and Kena with dark blue pajamas with rainbow colored flower patterns on it. Cute alright give me a minute. Naruto says as she goes in and closes the door pulling his bag out now. Throwing off his clothes he puts on new orange sweatpants and grey sleeveless shirt. He goes back to the door and lets the girls in. So how do you want to do this we have two beds and three people, Naruto asks. I think that it would be fine if you and I sleep in the same bed and Kena has the other bed. Ursa says to Naruto. I'm okay with that how about you Kena? Naruto asks the brown haired girl. I am fine with it but I just realized that we didn't take a shower all day today did we? Kena says. No we did not, Urza confirms. Naruto nods in agreement and then he sees a bathroom. How about we take one tomorrow morning we can take turns, Naruto said. That's fine whoever gets up first gets the shower first and then we go in the order of when we wake up, Kena says. That is fine with me so shale we go to sleep now, Urza says as she hopes on the bed on the left. Naruto nods his head in agreement as he walks over to the bed ready to go to sleep. Naruto can I ask you a question please, Kena says. Sure what is it Kena? Naruto asks as he turns to the girl. Well do you mind if I touch your ears and tail? Ever since I saw them I have wanted to pet them really badly, she admits as she laughs sheepishly. I do not mind but if I start making noises just ignore me please, Naruto said as he crawls onto his and Urza's bed. Kena jumps for joy as she hopes onto the bed right next to him and starts rubbing his ears in between her fingers. Naruto ends up shivering at his sensitive ears being rubbed again. Naruto your tail is wagging, Urza says as she grabs it gently in between her hands. Sorry Urza it's just when someone touches my ears or tail like that it makes me feel really nice, Naruto says as he feels something deep in his throat. It is not that I mind it's just that I find it to be quite cute just like a little fox. She says as she starts to brush his tail gently, he couldn't help it any more as he started purring. This made both Urza and Kena jump a little at the noise but then both of them in their minds thought how cute it was. They continued at what they were doing until Naruto asked them to stop. What doesn't this feel good, 
Kana asks thinking that maybe she was now hurting her friend. It does it's just that I tend to get animalistic if that happens for too long and I might jump on you like an animal and I don't want to accidentally hurt you, Naruto said to her. Okay and you wanted to get to sleep anyway well whatever good night you to, Kana said as she hopped into her bed and put the covers over her. Well let's go to sleep too, Naruto said as he shuts off the light and lies down. Urza lies down next to him and then he feels her fidgeting and he understood. He put his tail over her stomach again and she felt better again. When she didn't have her armor on now she felt vulnerable but when he did this it made her feel safe knowing that he closest friend was right next to her. Wait I thought you were going to heal. Urza says to him. Don't worry I heal in my sleep faster anyway and with you being close to me it will go by faster, he said as he lies on his side looking at her with a smile. What do you mean? Urza said her face starting to go crimson again. The closer I am to the one that I bond with the stronger my abilities are, so when you are close to me I am able to heal faster, Naruto says as he wraps Urza in a light hug. Urza was glad that there wasn't any light in this room right now because you weren't able to tell the difference between her face and her hair right now because of it being so red. I almost forgot can you tell me what a maid is now, Naruto asks. Urza yawned realizing how tired she was. Tomorrow morning I promise just go to sleep right now the sooner you do that the faster you will learn you what that means, she said to him not leaving any room for argument. Naruto smiled and nuzzled his cheek against her head, all right then good night, he said to her. Kana was the first person to wake up and she was hopping for joy at that when she woke up and saw that Naruto and Urza were both still asleep. But then she had multiple sweat drops when she realized how close they were. Where the hell were they raised their way to close and they aren't siblings what the hell, Kana said as she resisted the urge to face Palm. She went into the bathroom and started showering. When she came out she was still wearing a towel and was about to get dressed when she heard rustling. She looked and saw that Urza and Naruto were waking up. Urza was rubbing the sleep out of her eyes and Naruto was stretching out on the bed like a cat. Good morning Kana you took a shower I'll go and take one now, Naruto said as he walked into the bathroom. She nodded and then started to get dressed. Good morning Kana is Naruto in the shower now? Urza asked her. She slipped the dress over her head and smiled at her nodding. You know that you two are really close even closer than siblings I think you wouldn't mind being his mate? Kana said darkly while chuckling. Urza's face flushed red at the comment but then shook her head trying calm down a little. He is a very special person to me, she said to her as she stood up slapping herself awake. Then the bathroom door slammed open and Naruto came running out in only his boxers. I think that I made the shower angry, Naruto said as he ran to Urza panicking. Don't worry let me see what happened, she said to him calmly as she walked back to the bathroom with him. It's not angry you just turned the heat to far so it felt boiling, Urza said to him while fixing it for him. Urza looked at his chest and then her eyes widened in fear as she saw all the scars all over his chest and arms only stopping a little after his elbows. Naruto where did you get all these wounds? Urza asked him in shock as she motioned to touch them thinking her eyes were playing tricks on her. This is when I went into civilization for the first time, training with QB and that big guy at the tower, Naruto said as she looked at her confused. Wait what happened when you went into civilization for the first time? Urza asked him trailing a scare that went across his whole chest. Well when I was in the middle of learning the Baiju cloak I was attacked by the villagers from the village nearby and they tried to kill me thinking I was the demon's offspring, Naruto said to her. I thought that trying to kill was a form of greeting for people and when I first met you I was going to do that but I saw that your eye was gone and I wanted to fix it for you, Naruto said to her as he looked at her new red eye. I need to help teach you how to act in human society when we get back to the guild, Urza said to him with a sweat drop on the side of her face. Thanks Urza for being here, Naruto says to her quietly. There is no reason to thank me I am just here as a friend should be. She says back to him with a hint of sadness in her voice. I promise that I will help you get that other friend back to you. He says to her smiling sadly. He couldn't understand what the sadness of losing a friend is but he knew that when QB left he felt miserable but then he met Urza and made his first friend which eased the pain. Now take a shower so that I can, she ordered him as she walked out. He nodded and took his shower washing his hair body and tail. When he came out he was drying his hair while holding another towel with his wet tail as he walked over to Kana. Can you give me a hand, and Urza the bathroom's open, Naruto said as he held out the towel to Kana. Sure, 
she said as she took the towel and started drying his tail. He started to shiver unconsciously but after a while his tail was dry and so was he as he threw on another black shirt on and red pants with some rips on the bottom of the legging. Oh right Naruto when you were in the shower I went next door to get this for you. Kana said as she pulled out a red clock with black flame pattern around the edging of it. Thanks but why would you get this for me, Naruto asked her. Well let's face it you saved us big time yesterday and when we got here to the village I noticed you trying to hide your tail but you couldn't, so I got this for you to help hid your ears and tail, she said to him happily. Thank you Kana but I did that because we are friends and Urza said you are supposed to protect your friends, Naruto said to her. Well then as a friend I am giving this to you as a gift for helping me, she said to him happily. He smiled and tried it on tying the stings around the collar then putting the hood over his head hiding most of his hair. Thanks this will come in handy, he says to her as he looks at her and she jumps back in shock. Sorry did I do something, he says as he reaches out to her. Oh it's nothing it's just that with your eyes being shaded like that they look like they were glowing and it scared me a little, she said to him. Oh okay well let's get our stuff put together so that we can leave when Urza gets out, he says to her while grabbing his stuff and starts to put it away. After about 20 minutes they were done and Urza was out of the shower and dressed in another blue dress. Naruto helps her put on her armor again and she straps her short sword onto her hip and they all are holding their packs that they came here with along with the two bags of money. When they get downstairs Naruto tells them to wait a moment as he walks over to the girl behind the bar and he comes back with three boxes. Naruto what are those? Urza asks him a little annoyed that he might be spending his money on things he doesn't need yet. It's some strawberry cake that I asked them to make yesterday they gave me two extra for helping the village on the house, he said to her. Her eyes went from being cold and annoyed to being little stars all over with her drooling a little. Don't worry you can eat some later on the way back to the guild let's go, Naruto said as he started leading the way. Naruto wait you were bad with directions remember just follow me, Kana says as she starts to jog after him with Urza right behind her. Naruto you spoil Urza too much if she eats cake all the time she will get fat, Kana says to him. If she exercises enough she can eat anything that she wants to so when we get back me Urza and Mirajane are going to go and train again, plus we also have to figure what was up with that kid that barged in yesterday. Naruto says to her. Well I guess you were right well whatever let's go, she says as she takes the lead followed by Naruto and Urza. They talk about random things along the way and soon enough they are back at the guild with two white haired people waiting at the entrance. Hi Gigi, Mirajane. Naruto yells as he waves his hand with a smile on his face as he removes the hood of his cloak. Welcome back my boy and Kana do you mind if we talk a little, Makarov says to her with a dangerous tone in his voice. I can explain, Kana starts to say but he puts his hand up to stop her. What were you thinking Kana you left on a quest with two new members I know that Naruto is powerful for his age but you never know what will happen on a request you could have been hurt, he says to the girl. Well actually here is the payment for the quest she says as she holds out a bag to him. You completed it and what would be that bag? The bonus for taking down the Vulcan without killing it, Kana says to him. Well how much was taken out for damage, he asks her. None, she says to him. Well it was your first time alone it can't be helped, wait did you say none, Makarov said in shock. Yes and there were seven Vulcans not one here is the bonus for taking them down without killing them either, Kana says as she hold up a bigger bag. We got 60,000 jewels in total, she says to him happily. Mirajane is looking at them in shock. She could beat up that many Vulcans by herself but with no damage. Yes Naruto took out five of them and Urza took out two I was actually the burden to them, Kana said sheepishly. You weren't US less if you weren't there we wouldn't have been able to get to the place without you and your magic helped even if you didn't do any attacking spells, Urza said to her. That's right. Naruto said to her with a grin on her face. Makarov went over to Naruto and gave him a hug while crying anime tears. Thank you so much after 20 years of having to deal with paperwork I don't have to do any for the first day in years. He says to him. No problem if you want I can do that without damage if you need me to but it might make it harder in the future. Naruto says to him while trying to get out of his death hug. Please do. He says to him. Oh right can I talk to that boy that came here yesterday. Naruto asks him. Yes I believe that he is. Makarov started to say and then there was a large crashing noise. What did you say to me popsicle? Someone yelled. You heard me flame breath. Someone else yelled. God damn it not again. 
Mirajane said as she face palmed and runs back into the guild. What was that? The group says as they run in after her. Naruto sees balls of ice and fire comes flying at them and swips them both away before they hit anyone. What the hell brat the second that you wake up you get into a fight with Grey what's your damage? Mirajane yells as she starts shooting sparks at him trying to knock him out again. Ursa can you get the Grey kid I will try to calm down the other one? Naruto says as he takes off his cloak gets his baiju cloak on him. All right, she says as she runs at the blue haired kid. Naruto gives the boxes of cake and cloak to Kena and asks her to keep them safe for a second. He then dashes at the pink haired boy getting his attention. Calm down you are breaking our guild, Naruto says as he sends a punch to his stomach slamming him into the ground. I will not calm down till I find Igneo. The boy yells as a fiery magic symbol appears over his fists. Now I think I remember where I heard that name is Igneo a dragon by any chance? Naruto asks as he dodges the boy's punches. You know Igneo where is he? The boy yells. When I was training a year ago a dragon came to talk to QB he said that his name was Igneo and I would get along with his student Natsu, would that be you? Naruto asks as he kicks the boy into the ground again. It is, now tell me where he is. Natsu yells as he tries to jump at him again but Naruto puts more magic into his hand making it grow in size as he grabs the boy. So you are him then if you calm down I will tell you everything that I know, Naruto says to him with a smile. Naruto's immediately stops flailing and nods his head. All right then, Naruto says as he lets him go and sits in front of him. What I know is that Igneo left after a short while and so did QB. I was not told where or why, but if QB left, I knew that it was because he had to not because he wanted to, Naruto says to him. Natsu looked down sadly and grabbed a hold of his scarf. See, he did care for you if he gave you something to remember him by, just like QB for me. Naruto said as he pulled out a necklace out of his shirt showing it to him. P.S. This is the scarf that Naruto got from Tsunade, I am just guessing but are you a dragon slayer then? Naruto asked him. Natsu brightened and nodded his head happily. Well then we are fellow slayers then, Naruto said as she stood up and offered Natsu his hand. Naruto QB demon slayer nice to meet you, Naruto said as his ears popped up and he stared wagging his tail happily. Natsu Dragneel Dragon Slayer. Natsu said back as he took his hand and they were both smiling like idiots. He can make friends with anyone, Urza said as she stared dragging unconscious Grey with her over to Naruto. Hello there I am Urza his friend good to meet you. She said as she held out a hand to him with a cold look in her eyes. Natsu looked Naruto wondering if she was safe to be near and when he shook his head yes he took her handshake. This ended badly with her almost breaking his hand. Urza you are shaking to heart again, Naruto whispered in her ear as Natsu was on the floor in pain trying to pull away from her death grip. Oh my apologies, she said to him letting go of his hand much to his joy. Now where was I oh right Naruto I'm going to kick your ass right now, Mirajane said as she jumped at him. He grabbed Natsu by his scarf and jumped out of the way of the attack. She tried to jump at him again but was stopped by Urza's hand on her shoulder. Guild rules say no fighting in the guild she says to her sternly. Mira Jane I will make you a deal that I don't think that you are you to resist, Naruto says to her while putting Natsu down. Really I have to hear this, Mira Jane says as she shrugs of Urza. If you train with me and Urza I will spar with you once a day, Naruto says to her. She thinks about it for a second and thinks it's a good idea but she will be damned if she is trained by him. Hell no I will not be trained by you, she says to him. I didn't say I would be training you I said train with this, he says to her. To her that was a little different. Fine I will try it tomorrow and then if I like it I will do it but if I don't I will just attack you and force you to fight me anyway, she says as she walks away. Girls are scary, Natsu said as he watched her walk away. Just a little but they are really nice to you will see, but as for right now let's go train Urza and then after we can eat cake, Naruto says to her. As you wish? she says as she drops Grey like a sack of hammers and follows Naruto out to the back for them to train. When they get back there they start running and then exercises and various other training before they get to actual combat training. Alright Urza what you have to do is last 5 minutes against my first tail state and if you win we get to go and have cake if you don't we will train for another hour then go and eat, Naruto says to her as his seal appears under his feet. I will not hold back on you Naruto, she says to him with swords in both hands. He grins with a wild look in his eye. 
this is going to be fun, he says to her as he is enveloped in his cloak. Be careful Urza because here I come, he says to her as he starts to blur and then comes at her. Fast, she thinks as she swings her sword in front of her. He dodges to the side and swings with his clawed hand. She blocks and then delivers a kick to his chest throwing him in the air. He starts to spin rapidly as he dives right back down at her looking like a drill. She jumps to the left to dodge and when he hits the floor lunges at him swinging both swords at the same time at his head. B blocks one with his left hand and the other with his tail as he delivers a punch into her chest plate. She skids back and braces herself again for him. Naruto shakes his hand and grins. That hurt punching that armor but I think that it is useless to wear that it is only slowing you down, he says and to prove it a crack appears on her chest plate. What just one punch did that, she thought as she got more defensive in her stance. Yes I did and you need to stop relying on that armor to protect you from everything it can only do so much you need to be able to defend yourself without it, Naruto yells as he lunges at her. What does he mean by that, she thought as she started parrying all of his attacks. His attacks seem slower now, she thought as everything started to move slower and slower as she fought. That's right Urza learned to control that power and you will be able to defend everyone, Naruto thought as he sent a kick at her. She was able to slide under the kick and come up and uppercut Naruto sending him flying. And time, Naruto said as he stood in front of her, you did well Urza you are learning to control that power that I gave you, Naruto said with a smile. What do you mean? she asked him. Well things started to go in slow motion to you right? he asked her. She nodded at that. Well that's one of the powers that you got it was to be able to get hyper awareness that is on par with me, with that you can see any attack that is coming and defend against it, he said to her. I see thanks for that Naruto I will get stronger and be able to watch your back, she said to him proudly. Well then how about that cake, Naruto said to her with a smile. She nodded happily and they both started going back to the guild. When they got there Naruto almost immediately grabbed Urza as he saw Grey and Natsu eating the cake that he brought for her. She saw this and started running forward toward them while Naruto was being dragged by his heels at them. You idiots better start running, Naruto yells at them. They look up just in time to see Urza giving them a death glare that said they were going to die. Last for a few seconds and I'll go and get something to calm her down, Naruto yelled at them as he ran to the bar. Macau I need a strawberry cake now or people will die, Naruto said to the man. Don't you think you are overreacting? He said to him and Naruto pointed behind him to see Urza slamming Grey and Natsu into every table in the guild. Here you go just pay me back later, he says as he give him a cake. Urza come over here I have a cake, put them down and I will give it to you, Naruto said as he sat at a table and opened up the box revealing a strawberry cake. She looked at him and her eyes became sparkles as she threw both boys into a wall embedding them into it and ran over to him pulling out a chair. There you go now no killing members, he said as he wrapped his tail around her stomach and patted her head as she ate the cake with a smile on her face. After a few minutes Naruto walked over to the two boys still in the wall and pulled them out. Now what did we learn today? He asked both of them. Don't touch her cake, Gray said. What Ice Cube said? Natsu said in agreement. Very good now I have to go back to her before she gets upset, Naruto said as he walked back over to Urza and did what he was doing before. Do you want some? She asked Naruto sheepishly as she held out a piece of cake in front of him. Sure I'll try some, he said as he took a bit and tasted it. It tastes good but no offense I prefer ramen still, he said to her. She smiled as they both ate the rest of the cake. I think it will be a good idea to put Naruto and Urza onto a team what do the rest of you think, Makarov said as he appeared on the table. The entire guild seconded it. He is the only one that can calm her down, the whole guild thought as they looked at the two of them. Well then you two will need to make a name for your team then, he said to them. Well then let's think, Naruto said. How about demon and knight, Naruto thought. No, Urza said as she continued to think. Fairy guardians she said. I like it when we get strong enough we can defend fairy tale. I like it, Naruto said with a grin. Well I believe that you are strong enough right now Naruto if you were able to fight all out I think you could match guild arts in a year or so, Makarov. The whole guild was silent at that comment after remembering the last time that guild arts fought anything. Master are you pulling our leg I don't think that he could match him no matter how hard someone tries he is only second to you, one of the members says. 
If you want tomorrow I can show everyone the full power I can us right now, Naruto said to them. That might be a good idea boy but only for a few seconds you might break the guild if you fight for real against anyone, Makarov said while nodding his head. I can't wait to see this tomorrow, one of the members said. I just hope that you won't fear me after you see it, Naruto said sadly as he walked over to the back of the guild. You fools just asked him to do something that he never wants to show anyone, Urza said to the guild as she jogs over to Naruto. Everyone looks down in shame at that. It is all right because we are family and no family fears those part of it no matter what they are, Makarov says and then walks away. When Naruto gets into his room he goes to the bed and crawls into a ball. I don't want to be alone again and if I show them my full power they will run like everyone else but if I don't they will treat me like a liar and not talk to me, he thought. I will be your friend no matter what, remember Naruto? Urza says to him as he sits next to him. He looks up at her with wonder in his eyes. That was a two-way promise that you made I am with you forever and you are with me forever that is how the bond that you gave me works right, she says to him. Thank you Urza, Naruto said as he hugged her. She smiled and hugged him back, happy at the fact that she was able to help her friend. Let's get some rest you have to show everyone that you are a power that will defend the guild tomorrow right, Urza said. Yeah you're right, he said as he passed out in her arms. She just smiled and put him on the bed while removing her armor putting on her night clothes. She put herself next to him and fell asleep with a smile on both of their faces. The next morning when they woke up it was by the sound of crashing. What was that? Naruto mumbled as he sat up rubbing his eye. He looked and saw Mirajane standing at the door to the room. What are you doing sleeping with Urza you stupid fox? She yelled. What do you mean we do this all the time? He says to her. Her jaw dropped at this comment. Naruto you are going to cause misunderstanding. Urza said to him. What he means is that we sleep together because there are no other rooms for him and I do not mind sharing my bed with him, she says to her. You shouldn't be doing that where were you guys born a whorehouse, she commented. In the forest, Naruto said to her. A slave, Urza said bluntly. Oh so I guess that neither of you know morals then great, Mirajane said as she started to walk out the door. Let's go and eat, after the guild will be here to see how strong you are Naruto, she said to him. All right. Naruto said a little sad but then felt a hand on his shoulder and smiled at Urza's touch. When the two got dressed in their normal clothes they walked out to the dining hall where they find about half of the guild there and Kana waving for them to come over to her table. I see that you are wearing the cloak that I got you, Kana said happily. It helps to hide my inhuman features from others and it is nice and warm, Naruto said to her. Good to hear so what do you want to eat today, she asks us. The same as you I guess. Naruto said plainly still not used to the food here. I am fine with that, Urza said to her. Kana orders the same thing as yesterday and we all eat the food. I like this I could get used to eating something I didn't have to hunt, Naruto said smiling as he stuffed his face. You had to hunt down your own food, Kana asked. Yup and I learned how to cook and everything to survive by myself, he said to her. That is good to know when we go out on other missions, Urza said to him as they finished eating. Well it looks like most of the guild is here, Kana said as she looked at an almost packed guild. Why are they all so interested in me? Naruto asked. Well the person that Gigi compared you to is the second strongest person in the guild besides Makarov. She said to him. Oh well I hope that I don't disappoint, Naruto says to her. Well are you ready my boy? Makarov says as he pops up onto the table. I guess, Naruto said a little shakily. Do not worry about being nervous we will not make fun of you, he said to him reassuringly. That's not why I'm hesitant it's because I don't want the guild to be afraid of me because the power I have now is about half of what I can get, Naruto says to him. Well that is mighty impressive my boy now let's go to the back, he says to Naruto as they start heading out. After a lot of arguing and pushing the entire guild got out into the back to watch the demonstration of the supposed demon slayer. Well go on my boy. Gigi says to Naruto. Kana hold this, Naruto says as he throws the cloak to her. Urza in the form that I am going to take I won't be able to speak properly so please speak for me, Naruto says to her. I will, she says back to him. Naruto inhales slowly and then he goes on all fours. Demon slaying magic baiju cloak tail 5. He says as 5 crimson magic seals appear under him and surround him. Then a large column of energy erupts from him and surrounds him. 
Urza is a little worried when she couldn't see him but then the energy stops flowing and then there is a dust cloud. There was silence for a while and then there was a growling sound coming from the dust cloud. Everyone had shivers up their spines as they saw a crimson and black pattern all over the boy running as if it was alive. His eyes were now pure white circles and his teeth were now sharpened and his inside of his mouth was white as well. He had five tails swinging everywhere and had long ears on top of his head. He finally had what looked like bones starting to come out of his hands and feet. What the hell is that, one of the members said as they felt the dark energy seeping off of Naruto. I knew they would be afraid of me, Naruto said to Urza and could hear him growl sadly. Then Urza did the unexpected and walked over to Naruto and wrapped her arms around his head. This is Naruto no matter what he looks like and he will protect this guild with all of his power but you making him feel like a monster is not what a family does, she said to all of them. Everyone looked down in shame at the fact that she was right they were scared of him he didn't just have the same amount of power as Gildart's but his was able to get stronger than that even. Mira Jane and her siblings walked over to Naruto and looked at him. Now I want to beat the hell out of you even more, Mira Jane said with a wild grin on her face. You are a slayer we stick together, Natsu said as he hopped on Naruto's back like he was a horse. I don't think that any of us will be able to stand Natsu if you aren't there to shut him up, Gray said. What did you say Ice Pop? Natsu said. You heard me lava breath, Gray said as they locked heads again ready to beat on each other again. My boy it isn't the magic that you use or how powerful you are it's what you do with it that matters, Makarov said to him with a smile. Thank you everyone, Naruto says as he turns back to normal and smiles at them with tears in his eyes. Well it has been a few weeks since that insolent with Naruto showing everyone his full power and it has calmed down nicely. He went on a few more missions and quests with Urza and he was nominated to being a S rank mage soon if Gildarts agreed with the decision. He was just happy that every time he came back from his quests the master was hugging the daylights out of him for the little amount of damage that he caused. The only time that he ever caused damage was when he was protecting Urza from getting attacked by a dark mage. Mira Jane also has joined Naruto and Urza for their daily training after Naruto fought her with the current score so far was Naruto 26 and Mirajane 0. Natsu was also taken under Naruto's wing when they had to learn how to do math and everything by Urza which made it a little better because Naruto was able to calm her down a little bit making sure that Natsu wasn't completely mortified of school. In these few weeks Naruto has found out that Mirajane and her sibling were apparently the Mira faction and Urza Natsu and Grey were the Urza faction and Naruto was nominated to be the mediator between the two because out of everyone in the guild he was the only one that could calm them down. Hey Naruto I found an egg look it's a dragon's egg and I'm going to hatch it, Natsu said to him while he ran at him with an egg in his arms. Really that's awesome Natsu maybe it's your little brother, he said to him happily as he rubs his head looking at the egg. So how am I supposed to hatch it, Natsu asked wanting to get the dragon quickly. Well first you would have to keep it warm it up and wait for the right time that it feels is right to come out, Naruto said to the exited dragon slayer. Heat I can do that he said happily as he started breathing fire on it. Not like that, Naruto yelled as he shut his mouth making him feel fire on his teeth making him go teary eyed. Let me help. I hear a little girl's voice from behind me and I see Lasana right behind us smiling cutely like she always did. Alright if you could would you mind helping Natsu with this considering that your takeover magic would be a big help? I ask her. No problem now Natsu watch this is what Naruto meant she said as she uses her magic and turns into a giant bird. Well I will let you to it, I said happily then I hear a crash. Say that again Satan girl. Urza yells. Fine strawberry cake tastes horrible. Mirajane yells back. They lock heads and start brawling again. Whenever they don't train with Naruto and they are alone they end up fighting for god knows what reason and Naruto was the only one that could break them up without using chains and knocking them both out. Now now don't fight what happened this time, Naruto asked as he caught their fists before they could connect and wrapped his tail around Urza's stomach making her calm down. She insulted my cake, Urza said while angrily looking at Mirajane. And you are about to kill someone for having an opinion, she yelled back. Mirajane you know that she loves that food so that is a bad thing to say, plus it is a well known fact that we of fairy tale overreact on certain things. I said to her. Before she says anything I look over at Urza. 
and Urzai don't mind if you go nuts when you are angry about someone eating your cake or something like that but everyone has a right to their own opinions, I say to her. They both look down. Now you don't have to apologize to each other but at least no more fighting for now, Naruto say happily as he pats both of them on the head. They both nod and then sit down while Naruto sat in the middle of the two. He orders a ramen, slice of strawberry cake, and banana sundae for the three of them. The girls have sparkles in their eyes as they start to their food. Naruto smiles happily as he digs into his own food. Naruto wraps his tail around Urza again and she smiles at the familiar feeling. Mira Jane gets an evil smile on her lips as she drops the spoon that she was holding and starts rubbing Naruto's ears between her fingers. A jolt goes through Naruto's spin as he starts freezing up trying not to purr, but he does anyway because for some reason the older he got he noticed that his ears became more and more sensitive to when people touch them along with his tail. This is the one cute thing about you Naruto, you purr just like a fox. Mira Jane says happily as she continues to do this making Naruto squirm at her touch. Stop that you are bothering him, Urza says to Mira Jane as she touches his head trying to get Mira Jane off. But he is purring so he has to like it, Mira Jane says to her. That is an unconscious reaction that he has whenever anyone does that to him, Urza says to her and ends up rubbing the bottom of Naruto's ears making him go crazy. After a few seconds he can't take it anymore and he jumps away from them. That's it stop toughing my ears. Naruto whines as he puts his hood on trying to cover them from everyone. But I just can't help it, it is just too irresistible to touch them, she says happily. Well I do mind now please stop, Naruto whiles as he starts to back away as Mira Jane starts to flex her fingers in front of him. Come here little fox I'm not done touching, she said happily as she walked closer. I'll be going out to train, Naruto yells as he runs full speed out the door making it look like he disappeared. I think someone should go with him, Marco says as he saw a after image of Naruto bursting through the doors. I will go look for him, Urza says as she walks out the door to follow him. Those two would be so cute together in a few more years, Kana said happily. What are you talking about Kana? Mira Jane asks with a blush forming on her face. It's just that they aren't related and they are practically inseparable whenever they see each other it would make them such a cute couple when they grow older. She says happily leaving out the fact that Urza is the only one that he could be with. Mira Jane runs out the door screaming. Like hell, and chases after the two. Well it looks like your sister has a crush on little Naruto. Kana says mockingly at Lasana and Elfman. They both blush and look down while Natsu was still confused and Grey let out a sigh in irritation. In the forest, okay I think I lost them, Naruto said happily as he looked around. While he was doing this he started panicking. Crap I'm lost too. He yells as he starts running around in circles trying to find out where he is. Then in the midst of his panicking he felt a familiar power. Dad. He mumbled as he started sprinting full speed toward the demonic power that he felt. When he got there he didn't see anything at first then he saw a familiar red glow. Is that you Kyuubi? He asked as he looked and then saw a little fox sitting in front of him. Its fur was blood red with black paws and the end of its tails and ears were black too. What really caught Naruto's attention was that the little kid had nine tails just like Kyuubi. Dad is that you? He asked as he leaned in front of the little fox. It walked up to him and nuzzled its head onto Naruto's hand. Brother, it mumbled to him. You can talk, Naruto asked confused as he sat cross-legged in front of the little fox putting it on his lap. I was sent by father Kyuubi to you as a last gift from him. The fox said to me. What are you a student of his? Naruto asked confused. No I am a demon just like father but I am weaker than he is. I am your little sister you can call me Q. She said to him. Well Q if you are my sister are you able to transform like me when I fight or are you always like this? He asks her curious if she could turn into a bigger fox that could help him. Well yes I can I look like this. She said as she got off of him and was enveloped in the same red cloak that Naruto was. She started growing and then there was a bright light. He closed his eyes from the intensity of the light and when it died down he looked at her again. If this was anyone other than Naruto who still didn't know a thing about girls they would have fallen backwards via nosebleed. There standing in front of him was a little girl about four years younger than him with nine tails coming out of her tailbone. She had long crimson colored hair that reached down to the soft of her back. Her eyes were exactly like Naruto's with them being blood red with slits. 
She had canine teeth coming out of her mouth. She also had little fox ears coming out of her head with black tips to them just like when she was in her fox form. But what was noticeable for the whole world to see was that she was with absolutely no clothes on. He stepped up to her and poked her ears making them twitch proving that they were real. So you are my little sister, he asks her. That is true, she said happily as she stumbled over to him still not used to the human legs and hugged him happily. Well Q my name is Naruto and it's good to meet family again, he said happily as she wrapped her in a hug with his tail covering her lower half. Before I forget you should put this on, she said to her as he put his cloak on her wrapping her up and then picking her up bridal style. Why is that, she asks as she put her head on his shoulder. Well people here like to cover themselves unlike demons and things in the wild so I need for you to wear this for now, he says to her. Alright if that is what you want brother, she says happily as she nuzzles her head onto his shoulder smiling. Well let's see if I can find my way back to the guild if I remember the smell it should be this way, Naruto says as he and his new sister start going to the guild. Oh right before we get there would you mind turning back into your fox form, Naruto asks his sister as he continues to carry her. All right if that is what you want brother, she says to him as she is enveloped in the same red cloak and she shrinks back into the little fox she was before. This better, she asks. Yes I don't want the people at the guild to freak out with me carrying a cure little girl back to the guild. He says to her happily. He doesn't see her blushing thanks to her fur as she nuzzles her head onto his chest happy to feel the warmth that he emits. Three hours later at the guild there was Urza and Mirajane with their heads down on the table with a depressing aura around them. Do you think that they are okay? They are that close and not fighting something is wrong? One of the guild members asks Marco. I have no idea but I think it has something to do with Naruto not being here they are normally around him all the time. He says back to the guild member. Hey guys did someone say my name? They heard the happy demon slayer ask. Naruto. The girls yelled at the same time as they jumped at the demon slayer hugging him so tightly that they were threatening to crush him. He put his sister on top of his head to protect her from the bear hugs that he was getting from his worried friends. We thought that you ran away, Mirajane says angrily. Where were you I wasn't able to get in contact with you, Urza said. Sorry Urza I shut that off so that I could be alone for a little while, you two are nice to be with but you are never stop when I tell you to, Naruto says to her honestly. They both look at each other and nod at the fact that he was right. When they fought they would only stop when he did something for them. When they were messing with him and he asked them over and over again to stop they never did because they were having too much fun. Alright we will stop when you ask us but you have to never disappear without telling us something agreed. They say to him. You got it. He said happily as he returned the hug to them. All three of them grin happily and the guild thought that it was the cutest thing ever but if they said anything then they would get killed by the two girls. When he let them go his sister made a whimpering noise. Sorry Q. He said to the fox on his head and started holding her like a baby scratching her ear making her purr in content at the attention. Who would this little guy be? Mirajane asked as she looked at Q. This is a girl first of all and second this is my little sister Q, he said happily. Little sister I know that you like foxes Naruto because they remind you of Kyubi but, Urza started but then she saw the nine tails wagging happily at being with Naruto that she stopped. She is Kyuubi's daughter and kind of a last gift from my dad so that I could have a nice family, he said happily and then it looked like he had an idea. I'll be back in a few minutes will you wait here, he asked the girls. They looked at him a little worried about him leaving them again but they nodded. Alright Kana can you come with me for a minute, he asked the brown haired girl that was sitting next to Macau. She hopped up happily and followed him into the back. Alright I am going to need to borrow one of your dresses for him when you were a little younger if you can. Naruto says to the girl. Why would you want one? She asks confused. Well I want it to be a surprise can you do it? He asks her happily. Well if you say so but if you do something perverted I will punish you. She says with an evil aura surrounding her. He stared to sweat drop as he nodded his head quickly trying to get her to calm down. All right then give me a minute, she said to him. She ran into her room and a few seconds later came out with a white dress with red rose petals surrounding it. That would be great thanks, he said to her as he grabbed the dress and went into his room. Alright Q can you transform into your human form so that you can meet everyone, he asks the little girl. She nodded and jumped out of his arms and onto the ground where she did as she was asked and was yet again standing in front of her brother as the day that she was born. 
what the two still don't know a thing about public indecency because of how they were raised. All right now put your arms over your head, he says to her, she does what she is asked and slips the dress over her head, surprisingly enough it fit rather nicely, there we go, he said happily as he rubbed her head affectionately, she giggled and smiled happily as she started hugging his arm. All right time to go and say hi to everyone else, he said to her. She nodded happily as they started walking back to the main lobby again. When they went back out everyone was now looking bug-eyed at what they were seeing. A little girl with fox ears just like Naruto, having tails just like him the difference is that she was a girl and her hair was blood red. Who is she and where is Q? Mirajane asked confused. This is Q just her human form instead of her animal form and like I said before she is my little sister, Naruto said happily as he put an arm around her sister making her smile. So our little demon slayer has a little sister that's cute and she is just adorable, Gigi said as he walked up to us. Q hid behind Naruto when she felt his magic, don't worry Q he is a good person and will not hurt you with his magic, Naruto said to the little frightened girl. She can sense magic. Gigi asked Naruto. Well sort of we demon slayers can smell the concentration of magic coming off of someone even if they are holding it back. He said to her. Well that is interesting, he said to him as he looked back at Q with a warm smile on his face. Sorry for scaring you don't worry I don't but I think your brother would do that before me, he said jokingly. Hey I only teeth when I am playing, Naruto said defensively. I was kidding Naruto and what do you mean teeth, Makarov asked confused. Well when I was younger I would play with different animal families running around and wrestling like we should to get stronger, I said to him. And you were saying you would do that with you little sister, he asked confused. Y'all aren't playing with each other normal, Naruto asked confused. Q had the same confused expression as Naruto. Everyone's sweat dropped. They really were raised by a wild animal. They all thought as they looked at the new siblings. Then Q smelt the air and then went over to Urza smelling her then smiled as she jumped on her. Yay a sister, she yelled happily as she nuzzled her head on her arm. What, they guild yelled looking at the two. Well the thing is that I bonded with Urza before coming to fairy tale and whoever a demon slayer bonds with is considered family, Naruto explains to the guild. So that's why they are so close, someone mumbles and everyone nods in agreement. Urza is still looking in shock at the girl that hugged her and didn't really know what to do. Naruto walked over to her and rubbed Q's head looking at Urza. Don't worry she just likes being held and petted, she is more like a fox than a human because she is tactically a demon but there is a difference, he said to her. What do you mean? Urza asked as she rubs Q's head making her purr happily. Well demon slayers don't hurt demons that are good we are like the peacekeepers whenever there are too many bad demons running around. In reality there are only a few good demons left and a lot of man-made evil demons running around and it my job to kill them, he said to her happily. That makes sense, she said and then we hear Q yawn cutely. Brother I'm sleepy, she mumbles as she hugs Naruto starting to doze off. Alright let's go and get some sleep then up we go, he says as he picks her up bridal style and walks over to the back where he and Urza sleep. Come to bed when you are tired Urza. Naruto says to her in his mind. She nods to him and gets some dinner before going to turn in for the night. Should we have Q join Fairy Tail? I think that she might be too young. Kana says to Makarov. We will have her decide when she wakes up for right now everyone get back to your business, he says happily. Everyone does as they are told and goes back to doing their own thing. Well looks like you two have another person that will be with Naruto are you going to be able to handle it? Gray asks them curiously. He then feels both Mirajane and Urza giving him killer intent and he starts to back away slowly. One more word and you will be a stain on the wall understand? Mirajane says to him with a sweet smile on her face. He was about to say something but then just nods his head knowing that even if he was apologizing he would get killed. Good now run along Grey, Urza says to him. He bolts out the door and little did anyone know that when this all started a certain dragon slayer and white haired girl left. Well back with Naruto and Q they were in the room and Q was using her new brother as her pillow as she sleeps peacefully. Well that is just cute, Naruto says happily as he lays down looking at his sister sleep peacefully. Naruto is she asleep? He hears Urza ask as she walks in the door. Yeah and even though she is asleep she doesn't let me go just like you those first few nights when we left that tower, 
Naruto says to Urza as they see her hugging him. Well both of us were lonely, but I have some weird news for you, she says to him. And what would that be Urza? Naruto asks. Well master says that you should be looking for a place to stay tomorrow, he doesn't want you to have to sleep with me anymore then you have to apparently, she says to him. Why is that it isn't a problem in fact I kind of like it you are warm and cute when you sleep. He says to her happily. She blushes at the compliment but walks over to him and takes off her armor and sword by herself. I don't know why but you know when I said I would tell you about what a maid is right, Urza says to him. Naruto nods happily being that he has wanted to know what that is for a while now. Well in a sense it is a person that you will have sex with and love for the rest of your life, for humans it is called marriage, she says to him. The little machines in Naruto's head were working as his jaw slammed into the floor. What, he nearly yelled but then he remembered Q. Yes that is what it is, Urza said with a blush on her face. Oh god Urza I am so sorry, I didn't know what it was at first but now I think I did something horrible with taking away that choice, Naruto says sadly. It is not that bad of a thing you are the closest person that I have right now and maybe we will start to love each other for all I know, she said to him regaining some of her composure. But back to the other topic. As of right now the people of the guild believe that two kids of the opposite sex cannot live in the same room without having sex, she said to him as she sits next to him. Well that is just strange I don't think that way about you right now I love you because you are kind, cute, and helpful to me not because of something like that, QB said that I should only bond with people that are close to me and of everyone that I have ever known so far you are the one that I am closest to, Naruto said happily. Urza was blushing like mad but nodded and put her head on his chest like she always did to go to sleep. She felt him put his tail over her stomach and pull her closer to him. Good night Urza, Q sweet dreams, Naruto said happily before he passed out. Urza just nodded not trusting her voice at the moment and went to sleep. Stupid Naruto not knowing what he says and what it does to me, Urza thinks as she looks at said blonde and smiles at being the closest person to him. The middle of the night when Naruto woke up he looked and still saw that it was dark out. I guess I woke up and I need to walk around a little bit, Naruto mumbles as he looks down and sees that both Urza and Q are sleeping soundly using his chest as a pillow. I don't want to wake them up so let's try this, he says as he jumps up as fast as he can sliding off of them and then immediately putting pillows where he was and they didn't even move from where they were. They stir a little in their sleep but do not get up. All right now to go and explore and see where Natsu went off to, he whispered as he jumped out the window. He looks around and sees that there is a full moon out tonight. That's good I love the sight of the moon it relaxes me for some reason. He says happily as he picks up a scent. Mira Jane why is she outside, and there is Lasana too, and Natsu, I should check up on this, he says as he jogs off to the scent. When he get to a clearing he see a giant dome of grass, I think that's what it is and uses his heightened eyesight and sees Natsu and Lasana sleeping peacefully with the egg in between them. He looks over to his right and sees Mirajane dosing off on a branch holding binoculars to his eyes. If she isn't careful she will fall. Naruto mumbles as he jumps up to where she was. She jumped back in shock and started falling off of the tree. Naruto grabbed her waist and pulled her back so that she was sitting his lap looking back the way that she was before. Naruto get the hell off of me. She almost yelled in anger and embarrassment of being in such close proximity to the demon slayer. He wrapped his tail around her stomach like he did for Urza and wrapped his arms around her neck hugging her gently. You need to sleep, and to answer your demand, no I will not get off of you because you might fall off again, he couldn't see it but the rather angry girl was blushing up a storm at what he was doing but didn't try to rip him off knowing that he was right, she hasn't slept all day and it was so time in the middle of the night and she was beyond tired as bags were under her eyes. If you try anything to me whale I am asleep I will kill you, she mumbled to Naruto as sleep took her and started breathing evenly. Sleep well Mirajane you will need it for later, he says happily to the gothic girl as he hugged her a little tighter so that she would not fall off the branch when they slept. He closed his eyes and joined her in her peaceful sleep, but right before he made sure to keep the connection with Urza there so she can tell her tomorrow. The next morning, Naruto where are you, Naruto heard in his mind as he was starting to wake from his sleep. Good morning Urza sorry but I was walking around last night and end up sleeping outside, he says back to her as he yawns. Well that is not a bad thing but at least you kept the connection intact with me this time, she says to him with some happiness. Don't worry and you would not believe who I found, 
I'll tell you when we all get back to the guild, he says to her happily. All right I will get you up and meet you later, she says to him as he looked around seeing Mira Jane drooling a little as she turned around in her sleep and was now facing him with her head on his chest with her arms wrapped around him. That's really cute actually Mira, he mumbles to her and ends up making her shift a little and start to wake up from her sleep. What, oh it's just Naruto, she mumbles as she closes her eyes again and starts to go back to sleep. Naruto puts his hands on his ears and counts down from five. Sure enough five seconds later she jumped in the air bug eyes screaming. Naruto what are you doing in my bed? She yelled. This isn't your bed Mira Jane we are outside remember you were watching your sister and fell asleep on me, he said to her. She was staring down sitting across from him on the branch with her face as red as Urza's hair. You didn't do anything to me when I was asleep did you? She asked me angrily. I hugged you and made sure that you were warm considering that you don't dress for cold weather, I said to her pointing at her clothes of a belly shirt that was sleeveless and a mini skirt. So that's why it was so warm, she mumbled as she saw my tail on my lap where she was sleeping. You wrapped your tail around me I thought you only did that to Urza, she said to me curious. Well you were sleeping and I didn't want you to catch a cold but you're right other than Urza you were the only one that I did that to, he said to her happily. Mira Jane smirks a little bit but Naruto just thought that she was happy or something and didn't think anything of it. Well come on it's time to go to the guild again Urza and Q are wondering where we are, I said to her as I jumped down from the tree waiting for her. Alright whatever, she said in her usual manner as she got down next to me and we walked back to the guild. When we got there Naruto got tackled the second that he opened the doors by a crying red head. Q what's the matter I'm right here. Naruto says frantically as he rubs her head and hugs her with his other trying to comfort her as best he can. When I woke up you weren't there and when I looked for you I couldn't find you, she sobbed as she wrapped her tails around him trying to do everything she could to make sure that he didn't get away from her again. Sorry about that I couldn't sleep so I took a walk and saw Mira Jane on a branch falling so I ended up sleeping with her to keep her warm, he said to her honestly. You didn't run away from me, she mumbled into his shirt. I would never run away from my family, he says to her happily. Sniffle, promise, she says to him looking up to her with bloodshot eyes. Yes Q promise, he says to her as he kissed her forehead. Okay, she says happily as she wipes the tears out of her eyes. Finally she calmed down she has not stopped crying and screaming all morning when she didn't see you when she woke up, Makarov said as he walked over to the group with Urza next to him and his cane. Sorry if she caused you trouble Gigi but I just had a bad feeling last night and needed to get out for a second, he says to him. There is no harm done just some early rising for us but no matter, now there is someone that I would like for you to meet, he says and a man with orange hair and toned build comes up from behind Makarov. So this is the kid, he asks the guild master with a voice that was both commanding and kind at the same time. Yes this is he guild arts I would like for you to test him if that is not too much trouble, he says to him. No problem well kid it looks like I am going to be testing you, he says happily as he grins. Naruto grins back and then out of nowhere the door to the guild slams open. Where is it? Natsu yells as he starts running up to people accusing them of taking the egg. Natsu calm down and tell me what happened I will help as best I can, Naruto says to him happily with Q still attached to his waist. My dragon egg someone stole my egg it was you wasn't it Mira Jane, he yelled at her. Like hell flame breath. She yelled back at him. Then it was you Urza. He yelled as he turned straight to her next. No it was not, she says to him calmly. Snowcone you stole it. He yelled as he ran at Grey. Stop yelling at everyone, and no I didn't take your stupid egg. He yelled back. Luxus you stole it. He yelled. Why would I bother taking an egg from you? He asked in a dead tone. Just calm down and Mira Jane just admit you stole it and give it back to him. Urza said as a deadly aura started surrounding her as she glared at her rival. Like hell you did it I have someone to prove my innocence how about you, Mira Jane stayed back with the same aura surrounding her. As do I now fess up? Urza said darkly. Naruto was walking over to the side of the guild near Kena and put Q on his lap while staying far away from the soon to be brawl going on. 54321. Guild Arts says and then a giant brawl broke out in the guild. I think I'll let them fight it out for a little while before I break it up, Naruto says deadpan as he stares scratching Q's ears making her purr happily. You sound like you break this up all the time, Gildarts says laughing at the memories of this place. 
Well I kind of have time the only one that can calm them all down without breaking the guild. I normally stop them when they are about to us magic. I say to him. Smart you could make a good master someday if you keep on going at this rate. He says happily but is a little bit curious as to how he stops them now. Why is everyone fighting this time? Elfman asks as he walks over to Naruto while holding said egg that everyone was fighting about. Well actually it is about that thing in your hand you might want to tell them before they end up killing each other. Urza brought out her swords. Naruto said and true to his word she had her dual swords out while Mirajane had black sparks surrounding her. Everyone that is enough unless you would like for me to join in, Naruto said as his seal appeared under him with red energy starting to come out of him with a death aura flooding out of him. Everyone froze at that and looked over at him slowly. He put Q down and put his cloak started to form around him. No need for that we will calm down, Mirajane said a little fearfully. Urza nodded as she put her swords away. Natsu and Grey put their arms around the other's neck and nodded while shaking the other's hand. That's good I thought I was going to have to discipline you all again, he said as the cloak started to go away. Not after the last time you joined you nearly destroyed the wild guild, they all thought. Well now that I have your attention Elfman has something that he wants to give back to Natsu now done you Elfman, Naruto said to him. Yes he, he said chuckling a little embarrassed while holding up the egg. My egg, Natsu yelled happily as he ran over and grabbed the egg hugging it happily. Why did you have the egg anyway? Naruto asked a little curious. Well when they were sleeping they rolled away from the egg and it was getting cold I can only do partial transformations but it is still good for warming an egg, he said sheepishly. See that's the way of thinking even if it takes a while you can do it bit by bit, Naruto said happily while patting him on the back. Thanks Naruto, he said happily. Then out of nowhere the egg started glowing. What the hell? Mirajane yelled as she covered her eyes. I guess it's hatching, Naruto said happily. Yay, Q said as she hugged Naruto again. When the light vanished a cat was in the air where the egg used to be. A cat, the guild yelled in disbelief. I, is said curtly. Kawaii, everyone yelled with hearts in their eyes. Well I didn't see that one coming, Naruto mumbled. Look at the guild we were all fighting a few seconds ago and now we are all happy family again, Lasana said happily. I guess you're right that's it your name is happy, Natsu said happily. I, the little cat said while hopping onto Natsu's head. Well let's have that spar another time, right now it's too good of a time to spoil with violence, Naruto said happily as he wrapped his tail around Urza who was standing next to him. I like your logic there I'll ride tomorrow it is then, he said happily. They all walked over the guild members and started a party of happiness. After the giant party that fairy tale had to welcome the new addition to their ever-growing family everyone was a little tired. Naruto, Q, and Urza ended up sleeping in the dinning pavilion with everyone else. Urza and Q were using Naruto as a pillow with his tail wrapped around Urza almost like a cocoon and Q draping her tails over herself and Naruto. All in all it looked kind of cute. Alright everyone get up we have work to do, Makarov yelled to the group. There were a bunch of groans as everyone started to get up. Some people were still on the ground mumbling about a hangover. Naruto was gentile, nudging Urza and Q to wake up. They were mumbling in protest as they just snuggled deeper into his chest trying to sleep. Please it's time to get up, if we don't the master will get mad, he said to them. They both sigh and get up even though they didn't want to. When they get up they all start stretching to get blood flowing. When that is done they go to their rooms to take a bath and get new clothes on. When they get back to the main hall everything looks the same before they had that party yesterday. Well at least we know how to fix things almost as fast as we break them, Naruto mumbles. Well young one are you ready? The master asks Naruto as he walks over to him. I guess, he says to him. Alright then I will get him get some food and then head out back, he says to him. Alright? Naruto says to him happily as he gets food for them all. Q didn't know how to us the silver where so Naruto ended up feeding her. The other members that were there thought that it was cute that Naruto was a good big brother. They all ate and then went out back. They saw a rather big crowd of the guild members that were there yesterday. The party of three found the others of their age group and went over to them. Naruto are you going to me fighting guild arts today? Natsu asked him. Yes I will Natsu but this is a friendly fight, he said to him. 
Yes and I don't want to have to remind you no killing him. Urza said to him. I promise I will not aim for any vitals if I can help it, he said to her. You are going to want to go all out he is the strongest in the guild besides the master, Mirajane said to him. Yes but if I go all out no matter who it is they will be mortally wounded even the master that is why I have to not aim like I normally would, Naruto said to her. You can't be serious, she said to him. Yes he is all demons and demon slayers are trained to aim for the kill, Q says to her. But still, Mirajane tried to argue but then she thought about it, she was able to go on par with some of the other guild members with no problem but Naruto was able to demolish her like she was no more than a weak child against a pack of wolves. Alright well remember he is also testing you so no going crazy, Urza said to him. Alright, Naruto says to her and gives her a hug and then Q. He goes into the center of the training ground and waits. After a few minutes Gildarts comes out with the master. Yo kid, he says happily while waving his arm. Hello to yourself are you ready? Naruto asks him smiling. I guess remember this is a spar to test you so it will last 5 minutes after that we will stop and the master will assess what you did. He said to Naruto seriously. Alright then whenever you are ready, Naruto says as he gets on all fours. An animal stance maybe I should teach you hand to hand combat. He says as he gets into a fighting stance. I will not hold back on you knowing that the master says that you are the strongest, Naruto says as a crimson magic circle appears under him. Well then. Gildarts mumbles as he looks at Naruto with trained eyes. Demon Slayer Baiju Cloak Third Tail Naruto growled as he was enveloped in red chakra. He is going into third tail right off the bat, Mirajane mumbles. Yes he is not taking him lightly because he knows how powerful he is, Urza said to her, here I come, Naruto growls as he disappeared in a red blur. You're pretty fast little guy. Gildarts says in a cheery tone as he blocks Naruto's clawed arm. Then his skin starts to burn and he jumps away from Naruto. Well that's interesting your armor is not a good thing to block either, he says while getting a grin on his face as he waves his steaming hand. Oh crap, Makarov said while pinching the bridge of his nose. What is the matter master you don't seem like one to curse unless it is necessary, Urza asks confused. Gildarts is interested in the fight now that's what, he said to her. Why is this a bad thing exactly, Urza asks. Well the problem with him is that he has horrible control over his magic so if he uses it, he started to trail off thinking about the repairs that he would have to do to his guild. That's not good, he says as he sees Gildarts starting to shoot off his crash magic. Naruto keeps on dodging but it is getting harder and harder. The first one he tried to block but the damn thing started destroying his cloak on his arm with no problem. Alright then try this, Naruto thought as a magic seal appears in front of his face. Baiji bomb Naruto yells as a dark orb shoots out of his mouth at Gildarts. He hits it with crash magic making it explode creating a giant smokescreen. Smart. He mumbles as he starts looking around for the boy. Demon Slayer magic fourth tail Naruto growls as a column of dark energy envelops him. What the? Gildarts mumbles as he feels the dark energy coming from the boy. This is unreal he is giving off such a deadly aura. He mumbles in a shocked tone. Gur comes a low growl from the newly awakened Naruto. Oh. You all know what he looks like in his four tail form. Naruto lunges at Gildarts swinging with his claws. He blocks and gets around the attack but then something he didn't see happened. Another Naruto came out of the claw and slacked him, sending him flying into the tree line. So this is what happens when Nordo doesn't hold back, Urza said amazed at the seer power of her friend. Naruto ni why are you holding back? Q asks completely contradicting what she thought. I don't want to kill and neither does he so no all out, he said to Urza. She relays the message to her but is shocked. The crazy blonde was still holding back, she had a long way to go. That was a good hit kid, Gildarts says from underneath the rubble of the broken trees. Now it's my turn, he says as the trees explode form on top of him showing him standing in the middle of the explosion without a scratch. How is it possible to have that much power? Gray says as he starts quivering in his seat. RRRAHHHHH Naruto yells as a biju bomb appears in front of his face. It compresses and he swallows it. What are you doing this time? Gildarts mumbles as he puts a hand up ready to fire his crash magic. Naruto expands suddenly then shoots a bomb from his mouth with a sonic boom. Shit! 
Gildart says as he shoots a wave of crash magic against the projectile all just to be ignored as it gets shot at him. He barely jumps to the side dodging it. The bomb goes through the forest for a little while then there was a popping noise. Everyone looked back to see what looked like a nuclear warhead going off then a tremendous shockwave throwing everyone off their feet except for Naruto who used his tails as a support. Everyone was thinking the same thing when they sat up, holy shit. After that Naruto reverted back to a two tail cloak. That took a lot more than I thought, he said while panting. Well I will be damned kid that was one hell of an attack, but this is the end, he said as he lunged at Naruto with a fist knocked back to hit him. Right before he hit Naruto he blurred out of existence. What? Gildarts mumbled as he got into a defensive position. Each tail has a different ability that it specializes in this one is speed, Naruto said as if he was everywhere. Gildarts looks behind him and sees ten Narutos running around him making a circle of sand around him. So are you just going to keep on running laps or are you going to come at me kid? Gildarts said as a column of white energy circles him. As you wish? Naruto yells as he appears in front of him ready to claw him with his left hand. Nice try. Gildarts yells as he does a quick kick into his chest making Naruto stumble. He then fires a blast of crash magic at Naruto shattering his cloak then a palm at his chest throwing him back. Naruto gets thrown back and everyone is in shock at the turn of events. Well that's that, Gildarts mumbles as he gets back into a relaxed position. How did he do that, Gray mumbled. He was holding back, Urza said to him. Was he really just that strong that he was able to hold back? Q said in shock at a demon slayer being able to be beaten that easily. Well I think that in terms of power Naruto was close to Gildarts and Naruto's control was better but the fact is that Gildarts has far more experience than Naruto and that was the deciding factor, Makarov said. That hurt, Naruto mumbled as he started getting up but falls back down. Naruto, Urza yells as she runs to his side. Don't worry just a little tired from using my magic so much, he says to her. Naruto it is never good to scare a woman, Makarov scolds him. Right sorry Gigi, he says to him as he looks at Urza. Sorry Urza I didn't mean to scare you I just went a little overboard that's all. A little bit of sleep and I will be fine, he says to her. She just nods and hugs the blonde. You idiot if you ever scare me like that again I will personally beat the hell out of you, she says to him in her mind. I swear I won't do it again, she says to him as he passes out. Well I have to say he is good and easily will be an S rank mage in a few months all that he is lacking is experience. Gildart says to them. So he passed, Urza asked. Yes he passed he just need to go on some more missions and he will be a great mage, he says to her grinning. Alright he will be admitted into being a S rank mage when during his birthday, Makarov says with a grin. But we don't know when our birthdays are, Urza said to him. He looked sad for a moment and then had an idea. Alright then how about the day that you two joined fairy tale will be the date of your birth. Think off it like it was the birthday for the two of you into a new life, he said to her. I would like that and knowing Naruto he will like it too, she says to him. Alright then well it is September now so on October 10th you will have the party and get your payment, he says to her. Thank you master. She says to him with a slight bow and smiled. All right well you might want to get him to bed now so he can rest up again, he said to her. I will, Urza says to him and walks into the building. Now those two are going to be a very dangerous team when they grow up, Gildarts says, everyone in the area nods in agreement. With Urza and Naruto Urza just got Naruto back to their room when she noticed Q already there waiting for them. Hello Q, Urza says to the girl. Hello Urza Nichan can you and Naruto get over here please, she says to us. Alright, Urza says a little bit confused. When she got to the side of the bed she felt something wrap around her and Naruto and saw that it was Q's tails. What the, was the last thing that she said before she and him were wrapped in a cocoon of her tails. Q what are you doing? Urza said with a blush as she realized how close Naruto's face was to hers. Simple he heals faster the closer he is to you and I know that you enjoy this anyway. Q said with a devilish smirk on her face. WWW what are you talking about? She stutters as she felt her get pressed closer to him. You like being close to the one that marked you and you are not allowed to deny it, Q says to her with a grin. But, Urza mumbled. No buts you like him and I will make sure that my brother is happy, she says to her. I don't have a say in this, Urza asked. 
Yes of course you do but we both know the answer if you can say it to his face that you don't love him then I will let you go, she said to her and made her tails wrap them tighter together. I comma I can't he is the closest person to be, Urza mumbles. That's what I thought now just enjoy one another's company and have a good rest, she said to her. Stupid Q Naruto is just a close friend, that saved me, dot and is the only one I trust, dot and I don't think that I could live without, Urza thought as her thoughts started pointing her in the direction that Q was saying. I do love him don't I? Urza whispered. Q heard it and smiled. Told you now have a good sleep, she said to her. Urza could only nod as she closed her eyes to sleep right along with the crazy blonde that she loved. Time skip 6 years Naruto's generation is 12 to 13 years old. This is how old I think that they were when Mira Jane's sister died. Naruto how has it been? Gray yells as he sees Naruto walk into the guild. It's been alright how have you and Natsu been getting along? He asks him. Like usual can't stand the other but can get along well enough when we need to, he said to him. That's good. At least you care for one another when things go badly, Naruto said to him with his trademark grin. We'll hope that we can get on another mission soon I'm running low on money. He said to him. Alright no problem me and Urza were going to be going to go on a mission soon, he said to him. Gray instantly paled. You know what I don't think that I need money right now I'm good for another month, he said to him while sweating bullets. Like hell I am going with you when Urza didn't invite me the last time I did that me and her had a little talk and I couldn't go near you without seeing her face right behind you, Gray thought but chuckled nervously. Naruto where are you? Urza's voice came booming through the halls. Naruto smiled like an idiot while everyone present was scared shitless. Why, was the collective thoughts of everyone in the guild. Big brother where are you we are going to go on a mission now? Q yelled. Oh I'm coming. Naruto yelled happily as he walked out to meet them. There you are, Urza said to him as he walked out of the guild to meet them. Sorry Urza Chan but I got caught up, he said to her. She blushed a little at the suffix being added to her name but put back on her cold face. Let's get going it looks like Mirajane and her siblings have been given bad information on the monster that they are hunting and the master wants us to catch up to them before they get to the monster. Urza said to him. Why is that? Naruto asked her because the monster has a hidden secret that was found out resentially, she said as she started walking. And what would this be? Naruto asked her. When someone tries to take them over they put them into a blind rage and make them become part of their pack, this thing is their worst enemy to face. She said to him. Alright let's get a hustling then, he said to her. Alright, she says to him and notices what he is wearing. You look different, Urza said to him. Really, he said as he looked down. He was now wearing a sleeveless trench coat with the Kanjin for Demon Slayer on the back in black, while the coat itself was crimson with black flames at the bottom and had a hood added to it to hide his ears. He had an orange shirt on with a swirl in the middle, finally he had black pants and sandals like he always did. Yep you look different brother, Q said to him. Well the same can be said about you Q, he says to her. She was wearing a white shirt with claw marks scattered around it with light blue pants. She had a crimson colored cape with a hood to hide her features as well. While Urza was still wearing her normal armor with a skirt and knee high black boots. Well now that we are done checking one another out shouldn't we hurry up and save Mirajane's ass? Q asked. I guess you are right but I am a little bit worried that Mirajane rubbed off on you a little bit, Naruto said to her, while thinking back to the little girl that never used vulgar language and now she was a mixture between him and Mira. I will be fine now we should be getting over to saving the takeover siblings, she said to us. Agreed? Naruto says to her. Alright the fastest was will be to take a train there and we will be able to help them by nightfall, Urza said. Alright then let's get going you too, Naruto said as he started walking off, in the wrong direction. Come on, Urza said as she took his hand and started leading him in the right direction. Train station the group gets there with no problem mainly because Urza was holding Naruto's hand dragging him there. All right we are finally here now let's get going, Q said to them. They nodded and paid for their tickets and waited for the train. All right are you two ready, Naruto asked as the train came into view. You bet we are, Q said, while Urza only nodded. They all get into the train and get to their seats. All right we have four hours before we are where we need to be now let's get some planning done, Q said. Agreed. Urza said as she brought out a piece of paper that showed the monster and info on it. 
Okay so from what we have read it has high defense speed and power but it has low intelligence, Naruto mumbled. That is right now we need to find a way to take it out or get Mirajane and her siblings out of there, Urza said. If need be I can a six tail and kill it but I would rather not use it until my body catches up with the demonic energy needed for it, Naruto said. I told you that after you turn 18 you will be able to use your power with no drawbacks but until then you have to wait, Q said to him. I know but it's annoying with me having to wait now to get stronger you know, Naruto whined. I know don't worry but it will be better when you are 18 and you can be a demon, Q said happily. Alright fine I will wait, speaking of waiting how close are we, Naruto asked. We are about one hour away still we will be there soon enough Naruto just hold on alright, Urza said to him. Alright Urza, he said to her as he put his head on her lap and dozed off. What he didn't notice was that Urza was blushing but smiled as she started to softly stoke his hair. Well we will be there soon Inuf, Hugh says as she shrugs and looked out the window. Naruto woke up when Urza elbowed him. Wake up Naruto we are going to be there in a few minutes, she said to him. Naruto nodded sleepily as he sat up and stretched out. Yay we're here, Hugh said happily as she jumped up and down when the train started to slow down. Even though she acts tougher she still is a kid sometimes isn't she Urza, Naruto said to her happily. That she is Naruto now let's get ready to save Mira, she said to him as a smile spread over both of their faces. They get off of the train and get Urza's monster amount of luggage and go into town. Alright we find a inn quickly to put our things away and then we go and look for Mira and her siblings. Naruto said to the group. Agreed, Urza said as they started walking into town. They found a little inn that had a big enough room for them and the luggage, mainly Urza's, and put it away. All right, how are we going to find them? Urza asks us. Well, let's see, Q, you have a better sense of smell than I do, so try to find her by scent. We will also be looking normally. Urza, go with Q, and I will look the other way from you, and we will contact the other when we found them via telepathy link, Naruto says to the two. All right, that sounds good, we will search the north end while you search the south end. Urza says to him while pointing in the direction. Understood, Naruto says as he hops onto the top of the building speeding off through the town. Alright let's go ourselves, Hugh says to Urza, she nods her head and they run off in the opposite direction. Urza would ask people what they knew and some would remember the siblings. Apparently most that knew her were females who were helped by her from perverts. Yes I remember her she kicked a man so hard in the balls that she left a steaming footprint there. She was such a nice girl helping us get rid of the perverts in our village. The women said with a smile. Urza sweat drops but nods to the woman. Do you know where she went? She asks again. Oh right sorry she and her siblings went into the forest a little over an hour ago if I remember right, she said to her. Thank you very much, Urza said to her as she started walking away. Q we have a lead, Urza called her. She bounded over to her with a serious face. All right Naruto we have a lead how fast can you get to us, Urza asked him through telepathic link. A few seconds, he said hack to her. And just like he said a few seconds later he blurred right in front of her. All right let's go and save Mira and her siblings, Naruto said to them. They nodded and Urza started leading them in the direction of the forest. All right how are we going to fight it, Naruto asked. Well I was thinking that you two would distract the thing while I got them out of there, Q said to them. Well out of us she is the fastest and she can easily drag Mira with her tails, Urza mumbled. Alright you get them and me and Urza will distract, Naruto said. And Naruto I want you to not hold back on this thing if it tries to harm anyone if the guild, she says to him. Naruto smiles and starts to get excited about the thought of being able to go all out. Do you really mean it, I don't want people to get into trouble for me to us it but I also want to go all out, Naruto says happily as he starts thinking. We really need to find a way for him to get out all that energy someday, Urza says. Oh I already know one way, Q says as she starts to giggle pervertedly. Urza blushes like crazy as images start going through her mind. Okay well we have a plan so let's get going, Naruto says to them. Alright Q lead the way and track them me and Naruto will be getting ready. Urza says taking command again. Right, they say in unsent. They all start going running into the forest while Q is sniffing around for Mirajane's scent. Two hours later, it's already night time and we don't have any idea as to where they are, Q says in aggravation. Don't give up Q we can find them we just need a lead, 
Naruto says to his sister. All right, we should go the mountain so we can get overlook of the area. Urza says to them. Good idea, Urza. All right, hold on. Naruto said to her as he wraps his right arm and tail around her while Q in his left as she wraps her tails around him. He jumps through the trees at a high speed to get to the mountain. God, your unlimited stamina is ridiculous, bro. Q says to Naruto. Thanks, Q. Naruto says to her while still keeping up the breakneck pace. After a few minutes they get to the mountain and Naruto starts hopping up the cliffside with ease. Naruto gets about halfway up the mountain when Q stiffens and her eyes widen in shock. Bro I smell them there at the top of the mountain. She yells to him. All right then double time. He says to her as he starts to pick up speed. They get to the top and Naruto puts them down and they start to shake a little from the sudden decrease of speed. All right Q quick point the way, Naruto says to her. This way, she yells and they start running. They get to a clearing to see Mira Jane and her sister Lisana running from some giant ogre thing. Mira? Naruto yells as everyone jumps down just in time to see Mira and her sister backed into a corner. Naruto? Mira yells in a voice that was both confused and hopeful at the same time. Is this the monster that you were sent to kill? He asks her as he gets in front of her and her sister. Yes but that is not the monster it's my brother, she yells. Wait what? He yells as he looks at the monster that was staring them down. It's Elfman he tried to take it over but it was stronger than him, Mira explained in a rushed voice. Is there any way to make him calm down? Naruto asked as he saw the monster or Elfman charging at them. You have to knock him out that is the best way. She yelled. Elfman calm down please. Lisana yelled to her brother. The monster looks like it heard her and started shaking like Elfman was starting to get control. She smiled at him and waited with open arms for him. Come on let's go back to the guild okay? She asks him in a sweet voice. Elfman starts to lower his arms but then his eyes start to glow and it lets out a furious roar. Naruto thinks fast and activates his level 3 tail and dashes at Lisana. Elfman swings at her but not before Naruto grabs her in a hug and takes the blow for her. Naruto. Urza screams. I am fine, just attack him and knock him out I am not having a guild member die, he says to her telepathically. She lets out a sigh of relief knowing that Naruto was fine as she re-equips twin blades and charges at the monster. It swings wildly and demolishes anything that it touches. But with all the power and speed that it had it could not direct it to Urza as she continued to dodge the attacks. Naruto comes back in his one tail state and steam was coming off of him as his skin was being healed from the impact. Okay he hits hard, Naruto says as he watches Urza fighting the monster. He looks over and sees Q over Lisana and Mira healing their wounds with her demonic magic. Urza dashes at Elfman and slashes his legs trying to cripple him but he keeps charging as if he was never even hit. Urza get back I'm going all out so that I can knock him out, he is dense enough for it, Naruto yells to her. She nods as she jumps away while a large magic circle appears under Naruto. Demon Slayer Magic Baiju Cloak six tails after he yells that a giant selum of demonic energy surges out of Naruto. Holy hell! Mira mumbles as she looks at the power being displayed, and just think he still has three more levels, and if dad was right he could be able to use perfect fusion, Q says to her proudly. What's that? Urza asks intrigued by the ablioti. Well perfect fusion is when he is able to balance his demonic and slayer magic equally and at the same time, the result is tremendous power to be able to go blow for blow with a demon king, Q says to her. Damn Naruto just gets more and more interesting, Mira says as she licks her lips. Don't even think about it Mira he is mine, Urza says to her. Oh so you are taking dibs on him are you? She says playfully. He is my mate and he even said I am the person that he feels the closest to, Urza says to her. Guys as interesting as this argument is I think that you will want to pay attention to this, Q says to them. They both give her a confused look then they look at Naruto. R-A-H-H-H-H he yells sending a shockwave at Elfman sending him flying. He then shoots like a rocket at him leaving a crater where he was. Elfman swings at him and misses, horribly. Naruto ducks under the swing and sends a swipe at his midsection sending him into a mountain. This is one-sided, Urza mumbles. Well you did say he could go all out and when he can think rationally with that much power it was a no brainer that he could do this, Q says to her. Still, Mira mumbles as Elfman literally gets lifted off of the ground and thrown around. 
Well he is holding back so he doesn't kill him, Q says. Thank God for that the last time he lost control for a minute and literally vaporized a mountain, Urza mumbles. Mira and Lasana's eyes were wide as dinner plates with their jaws in the ground. Just how strong is he? They yell in their heads. Naruto is he knocked out yet? Urza asks him telepathically. Not yet he is a lot denser and stronger now than before he just is slow, he says back to her. Naruto slams Elfman into the ground creating a crater. All right I think that did it, Naruto said as he released his spell. Good now let's, Urza started to say when she saw Elfman getting up. Naruto watch out, she screamed as she tackled him to the ground right before they got hit by Elfman. How is he still continues I hit him with enough force to knock out Gildarts? Naruto yelled as he grabs Urza with his tail and starts running away on all fours to the rest of the group. I don't know but I think that we might have to cripple him to knock him out or we have to drain his magic. Urza mumbled. Naruto stiffens at the thought and starts trembling slightly. Naruto I know I am asking a lot but we might need for you to use your seven tail form. Urza says to him. But you know why I can feel them losing strength as if it were me and it scares the hell out of me Urza? Naruto whispers to her. Don't worry Naruto it will be fine you will stop because it is your friend. Urza says to him confidently. Alright Urza if you say so. He whispers. Guys whatever you are planning on doing do it soon because he is charging at us. Mira yelled to us. Naruto lets out a sigh and looks at the group with a sad expression. Alright but please don't hate me after this. He says to the quietly. They all look at him in confusion as he turns towards Elfman once again. Baiju Cloak Tail 7 Naruto yells as a giant column of energy envelops him. When the black energy goes away Naruto is on all fours and is the size of the guild. What is really freaking them out is the fact that he is made completely out of bone with dark red chakra leaking from the bones. Rahhhh he yells as he lunges at Elfman. Elfman tries to attack but five of Naruto's bone tails wrap around his arms legs and neck forcing him to stay still. He struggles but Naruto holds firm as he places his claws on Elfman. Sorry, Naruto says as he stabs his claws into his chest. Elfman screams in pain as his magic gets ed out of him into Naruto. What is he doing to Elfman? Mira yells in panic. He is ing out his magic so he is forced to become human again. Urza says to her sadly. What? Mira whispers. Look at the wound that he should have and you will understand Mira. Q says to her. She is confused but does as she was told and notices that where Elfman was getting stabbed there was no blood coming out but blue energy was leaking out. Naruto hates this form because it will literally kill you from ing out all of your magic, but if he continues after the magic is gone he starts to steal your life force and he feels you dying, Urza explains. Thinking about the first time he ever used the form how the two of them were stuck in their room for three days with him not letting her go in just sheer fear. She never wanted to see him like that again but it was the only thing that would stop Elfman as he was now. This continued for a three minutes of Elfman screaming in pain as his magic being drained. Naruto started to get worried but then he started shrinking he released his claws from Elfman as he started to shrink. Finally after a minute he turned back into Elfman with a large stitch scar over his right eye. Naruto changed back to his usual self with his eyes a little darkened. Urza saw this and walked over to him and wrapped him in a hug. Don't worry Naruto you saved him and thank you for that, she whispered to him. Thanks Urza, he whispered back to her as she lead him to the group. Mira Jane and Lasana were already with their brother with worry in their eyes. Don't worry after a good night's sleep and a few days of rest he will be back to normal again, Naruto said to them. They both sigh in relief at this. Let's get to the inn and head home tomorrow. I need to leave here soon, Naruto mumbled sadly. Everyone looked at him sadly then what they didn't expect see Urza grab his hand and start leading him back to town. Let's go Naruto, she says to him as they walk back to town. Everyone just shrugs and follows them wondering why Urza was still holding Naruto's hand. Back at the inn Naruto was curled up in a ball on the bed shivering slightly at using his seven-tailed mode again. Why did I have to have a ability like that? To feel their life slipping away as if it was my own it just, Naruto thought. Then he heard metal hit the ground and slender arms wrap around him gently. Naruto don't worry about it you saved him and Elfman is back to normal just tired nothing bad happened. Powers are only bad if you make them out to be, Urza said to him in a quiet voice. 
Naruto didn't say anything but leaned closer to Urza for the comfort that she created for him. Urza? Naruto whispers as he turns to face her. Yes, she whispers back in a gently voice. Please don't leave me, he whispers with tears starting to form in his eyes. She just smiles warmly at him and whips the tears away. I will never, she says to him warmly. Naruto smiles slightly with hope in his eyes at this and looks into her eyes. Thank you for always being there for me, he says as he licks her cheek and nuzzles into the crook of her neck while shakily wrapping his arms around her. Urza was happy he didn't look at her because she was blushing like mad from the sudden lick from him. I know that you were the right choice, Naruto whispers as he drifts into unconsciousness. Urza blushes harder at the comment knowing he meant being mates with her, but she smiled happily nonetheless to be with him. He was a kind and gentle person but his looks and power scared people which made it hard for him. He was no different from a person when it came to feeling love and affection, he wanted it, needed it, and craved it more than his ramen but people could not see underneath the scary exterior to the gently soul he had. Naruto I swear that I will be with you forever, I don't know if you know this or if you know these feelings that you make me feel but, Naruto, I do love you. She whispers to him. She kisses his cheek making him stir slightly as she falls asleep in his embrace. Next morning Naruto and Urza were the same as last night wrapped in one another's arms. Urza smiling happily for Naruto being with her and Naruto was smiling slightly in thanks to his mate for supporting him. But what the sleeping couple didn't know was that there were three pairs of eyes looking at them with evil glints in their eyes. They were Mirajane, her sister Lasana, and Q. All three were thinking different things at the sight of the mighty Titania, getting all cute and cuddly with the demon of fairy tale. Damn you Urza you're lucky you got him, Mirajane thought as she looked with envy at Urza. They look so cute I can't wait to tease them when we get back to the guild. Lasana thought with a perverted giggle. Yea my brother and sister are even closer now. Q thought happily while debating whether she should join them in bed, they just looked so comfy. Naruto smelled them and cracked his eyes slightly to see the three girls all outside of his and Urza's room. He grinned a little at the thought of pranking them but then decided otherwise because he was enjoying himself being in Urza's embrace. After a few minutes he felt Urza start to steer. He moved his tail around her earning a warm smile from her at the familiar feeling. Urza wake up everyone is up, Naruto said to her telepathically. She mumbled something that sounded like five more minutes. Please wake up we have to leave, Naruto said to her as he licked her nose. She stiffened at the sudden wetness on her nose and blinked a few times. Morning Urza, Naruto said happily. She had a blush on her cheeks at the closeness between her and him. Morning to you to Naruto, she mumbled as she got up. She looked around and found her armor on the ground. She went to pick it up when she looked out the door to see the other girls looking at her with the same evil glint in their eyes as before but now all of them were giggling perverted. This was probably the first and only time that Naruto has ever seen as girly. Kya, she screamed as she threw her armor at door. The three go bug eyed as they slam the door closed to protect themselves. Urza wiped around to look at Naruto with a dark blush on her cheeks while her eyes glared daggers at him. You heard nothing understood, she said to him in a dark voice. Naruto nodded his head quickly not wanting to feel her wrath. Good now close your eyes and turn around I am going to get change, she said. Naruto just followed her instructions silently thanking her for not leaving his side. Meanwhile Urza was blushing like crazy while she got dressed hoping that he did not turn around. Well she knew that if she asked him to do something he wouldn't do it because he cared for her too much but still. She finished changing without incident and then turned around to him. Alright Naruto I'm done, Chong, Ing, she said as she turned around. When she did she saw Naruto without his shirt on getting changed himself. Naruto, she screamed at him. Yes, he said turning to her with his eyes still closed. Urza smiled slightly at him doing that knowing that he was doing as she asked. Then her eyes drifted to his chest where she saw the scars again. She felt horrible at the thought of what those people did to him just because of what he looked like. Why can't people just look past his looks to see his true self, she thought as she grabbed her armor. Just get dressed, she said to him. Naruto nodded and smiled slightly at what he heard Urza say. Thank you Urza, he thought remembering to close the link to think that. He got dressed in a dark orange t-shirt and black baggy jeans. He put on a dark red trench coat that replaced his old cloak since he grew. 
The trench coat had a hood and had a design of Kyubi howling with his nine tails wiping around behind him. Are you ready to go, demon of fairy tale? Urza asks him with a small grin. Just as ready are you or, Titania, he said back using her own nickname. They both giggle a little as they walk out the door. They're greeted by Mira, Lasana, Q, and surprisingly Elfman. Elfman do you think that you should be walking so soon, Naruto asks him in a worried voice. You don't need to worry about me I am alright, he says to him in a neutral tone but Naruto could sense the hostility coming from him. Alright if you feel up to moving around yourself let's get home, Naruto said happily. Everyone nods at the suggestion and follows him out the door. They walked for a few minutes but then they all face faulted. Wait why are we following him? They all yell together making Naruto cry anime tears. But I know where it is this time, Naruto whined. Naruto that is the way to the guild that was a half a day trip by train, we have to go there first and get us to the guild that way. Urza explained to him. He nods in understanding. Now follow me, she said as she grabs his sleeve and drags him along with her to the train station, with the oversized amount of luggage that she had. Everyone just shrugs knowing that he would just keep trying to get the directions right himself until he passed out from exhaustion. Hurry up I want to get back to the guild by night fall today. Urza says to the group. They blink a few times before they feel a cold grip on their spins as she looks back at them with the grim reaper's stare. Get moving, she says in a cold voice. Everyone starts sprinting toward them. Mirajay knew she was stronger than Urza as long as she didn't go psychotic on her but when she looked at her like that it made her scared, of her for God's sakes. Naruto was the only one not affected by her glare because of two reasons. One he was oblivious as all hell sometimes and two he loved her too much to think she would truly hurt him. They started following Urza again and got to the train station to get tickets to go back home. Let's go home everyone, Urza says to them as she walks into the train trailed by Naruto and Q. The takeover siblings were trailing them back to the train. They all sit down and wait for the train to start and get them home. Q yawned and put her head on her brother's lap and fell asleep. Naruto just smiled at her as he wrapped his tail around her like a blanket as he brushed her hair gently. You are a very caring brother, Lisana said happily smile wide. Thank you, Naruto said to her returning the smile. The group talked about trivial things for the rest of their trip back to the guild. After half a day of just talking everyone was getting a little crazy toward the end of the trip no one more so than Naruto. About halfway through the trip Urza and Naruto ended up falling asleep Urza on Naruto's shoulder and Naruto on her head. The takeover siblings were debating whether they should just let them sleep or make a good joke out of this. They decided to let them sleep knowing how Urza is when she is angry and didn't want to see Naruto angry. When their stop was in sight they did a rock paper scissors game to who has to wake them up. Mira lost and was regretting it horribly. Guys wake up it's our stop, she said to the group. Mira decided to start first with Naruto because out of the three he seemed like the least likely to go crazy from being woken up. Thankfully she was right for once. Naruto blinks a few times to get the tired out of his eyes as he looks over at Mira. Hello. He mumbled as he yawned. Good now that you are up can you get these two up? She said as she pointed to Q who was clinging to his leg like a teddy bear, and Urza who was latched onto his arm unconsciously in her sleep. All right Mira. He mumbled as he started trying to wake them up. Urza woke up without much problem except giving the takeover siblings a glare that promised pain if they said anything about what they saw. Q on the other hand was actually growling at Naruto every time he tried to wake her up. Apparently sleeping without her brother made her unhappy the other day, or as she liked to call him her, teddy bear. Alright then I will just carry you like this, Naruto said as he wrapped his tail fully around her putting her in his arms, after prying her off of his leg. She instantly started clinging to his jacket now. All right then let's just get to the guild and hopefully Q will wake up. Urza said as she sat up. They all just shrugged as they got off of the train and got their luggage. As they walked through town most of the town's folk had eyes the size of dinner plates for two reasons. One the sheer amount of luggage that Urza was lugging behind her like it weighed nothing. Then there was the supposed demon of fairy tale carrying a little girl through the streets. Some people were worried about the girl but most knew that it was his little sister. They also knew that if any of them tried to take her away from him they would end up through a wall from by a whip from Q herself. Note to all when she is sleeping don't wake her up, ever, it's for your own safety. 
The group got to the guild and were standing outside of the doors. Well are you all ready to go get the mission complete? Naruto asked them with a smile. You have no idea, Mira said as she walked over to the doors. Again I would like to apologize to everyone with how long it took for this to finally come out but, shit happened that's all I can really say about it. It will be less time consuming to get new chapters up now. Last we left our group at the front of Fairy Tail after saving the takeover siblings from their own brother who went on a rampage after trying to take over the monster they fought. Alright let's get back home, Naruto said happily as he walked through the doors, the second they did they were bum rushed by the whole guild. You're okay. They all scream happily. Naruto tried to warn them about Q sleeping but it was kind of too late as a dark aura surrounded the sleeping demon. Who woke me up? She growled, making everyone start backing up in fear. Hey guys good morning. Natsu yelled as he walked into the guild with a big grin. Natsu, everyone yelled at the same time. Q turned her glare right on him. And it's Sue. She screamed as she lunged at the poor boy. She doesn't have a lot of reasoning when she is sleepy does she? Naruto asked Urza. No she doesn't but I think we should save him because this is the one time it was not his fault, Urza said back to him. Naruto nodded as he went over to the bar where there was already a slice of chocolate cake waiting for him. Thank you, he said as he went back over to Q who was using Natsu as a hammer to break every table in the guild. Q if you don't put him down I will eat this cake without you, Naruto yelled loud enough for her to hear. She froze mid-swing as her ears turned back to him. Is it chocolate? She asked in a low voice. What other flavor would I get for you? He asks with a giggle. She dropped Natsu onto the table he was about to be slammed into and appeared right in front of him with puppy dog eyes. Cake please. She says in an angelically innocent voice with her lip quivering slightly for effect. Here you go Q. He said to her as she had stars in her eyes as she ate the food happily as Naruto patted her head making her tails wag behind her. Naruto is the only one that can make those two calm down right away. Makarov said with a sweat drop as he watched the redhead act like an innocent little girl around her brother but was a bigger demon than Mira when angered around everyone else. Thank, dot you, Naru, to, Natus mumbled from the table. Gray having one of his rare moments of kindness to the boy put him in a chair and started getting some bandages on him. Well then, Urza said as she sat next Naruto and Q to make sure she didn't snap again. I take it the mission was a success my boy? The guild master asked from his seat at the bar. Yes Gigi, they're fine and the monster was taken care of. Naruto yelled to him from his spot. Good and thank you again for helping them. He said with his grandfatherly smile. No problem. Naruto says to him as he looks over at Elfman who is scowling as he starts to walk out of the guild. Where are you going? Naruto asks him. To train I have to get stronger, he yells. Then why not with me? He says as he hops up out of his chair to follow. No, I will do it myself. He says to him with anger. Why would you do it yourself? Naruto asks him curious. Because a man should be able to protect his family by himself. He said. The chatter in the guild stops at this as they see Naruto look at him with anger. If that is what you think, why are you part of this guild? Naruto asks him. Elfman looks shocked along with the rest of the guild. This guild is your family even if they are not related by blood, not one of us is at the power we have today without help from one another, he yelled at Elfman. But, he started but Naruto was not done. As a family we help one another, we do not turn our backs on them not matter what they need help with, Naruto yells at him. I have to do this on my own, Elfman yells back. Why do you, Naruto asks. Because I have to protect my sisters, yesterday only proved my point, he yelled. No that proved that you need help, everyone needs it but few can get it. Your whole family wants to help you so let them, Naruto yelled at him. Elfman had tears in his eyes as he looked at his sisters who were just grinning and nodding to him. Elfman you have to understand everyone needs help, your magic is weaker than your sisters because you didn't ask them for help, Naruto says to him. I am the strongest of our age group and I am only here because I train day in and day out with Urza, Q and with others of the guild. We are a family so we help one another and never turn our backs on them, so if you want to get stronger ask us for help and we will do everything we can, Naruto says to him with a big grin on his cheeks. Everyone in the guild nodded in agreement as they cheered and went over to the group. Let's have a spar sometime, Natus says to him through his bandages. I know a book that could help you with takeover magic. 
Levy says to him holding out a pile of books. I know a trick or two that you could as Mira says as she puts her brother in a headlock. I'll do my best to help you okay. Lasana says to him with a warm smile. Elfman chokes back tears as he nods to all of them with a smile as he thanks them. Good now let's protect our family together Elfman knee. Naruto says with a fox grin as he held out his hand. Elfman returns the smile as he takes his hand. Right Naruto Nisan. He says while looking him with determination in his eyes. The brotherly bonding moment made the guild explode into cheers. That's what you do best my boy, Makarov says to him. What's that Gigi? Naruto asks him. You can change anyone for the better, befriend anyone that gives you a chance, and most of all you might be called the demon of fairy tale but you have also become the heart of fairy tale as well, he said to him with a grin. Naruto scratches the back of his head and gives an embarrassed giggle. Thanks, but I am just saying what I feel and if they choose to listen then they do if not they don't it's their life so they do what they want with it, Naruto says to him. That's why you are the heart, dot you give them the option and mean everything that you say that is not something most do, he said to him. Thanks Gigi, but I think you know what is about to come right, Naruto says to him. Good point, he says as he runs off to hit the breakable things he likes. Let's party, Natsu screams through the bandages. Why the guild screams in agreement. Well I think it will be fine for now, Urza said with a smile as she nods. I'll go help Gigi hide the breakable things. I say to them as I start taking all the awards and things out of the hall. Party time. The guild yells as they bring out drinks and random games along with the brawls already starting. Urza was sitting peacefully with her cake along with Q eating watching everything. Naruto watched over it all from the second floor when he saw Luxus. The two didn't get along very well but they also respected one another to a degree where they could work together if needed. Naruto walked over to him and gave him a mug. Luxus I know that you don't like the guild but you also love it as well, Naruto said to him. Luxus took the mug and looked at him confused. You want it to be strong but you also think that they are all weak, that is wrong they are strong for their weakness, he said earning a confused look from Luxus. The most dangerous animals are those that are protecting their packs, Naruto said to him with a grin as he jumped down to join the fray leaving a confused Luxus. When Naruto got down there he saw Grey get slammed into the table that had Q and Urza's cake on them. Take that snowman! Natsu yelled at the ice user with a grin on his face from removing most of the bandages. Lava breath get over here! Grey yelled as he lunged at him, in his boxers. Grey your clothes! I yelled to him. Gaw again! He yelled as he ran to go and get his clothes. And at Su. Urza and Q growled at the same time. Naruto looked over to see a dark cloud that promised pain and death creeping over to the fire welder. Ga Naruto Nisan save me. He yelled as he ran for his life from the two. Who were right behind him with various gruesome looking weapons that promised pain. Sorry can't bail you out every time, might I suggest getting them what they lost? Naruto yelled to him with the hint. What did they lose for this much anger? He yelled as he ducked under a mace that vaporized a table. Your hint is something they both like a lot. Naruto yelled to him as he jumped into the fray to get some aggression out. I'm sorry. Natsu yelled as he ducked under a claymore stabbing into the support beam. Girls know destroying the guild fully is that understood. Naruto yelled to them as his tail slaps Macau into a table. Sorry Naruto. They both yelled as they turned into cheerful selves for half a second then went back to demons as they chased Natsu again. I'll get Naruto to hang out with you if you stop chasing me. Natsu yelled with anime tears streaming down his face. Q kicked him through the wall knowing she could get time with her brother anytime she wanted. Urza stopped momentarily and thought about it but the memories of her lost cake made her go into a rage again. Good try but that was not the answer Natsu. Naruto yelled as he walked over to the bar. He decided since it was around lunch to get them food and something to drink. When he got the food ready he turned back to see a good half of the guild destroyed from the party already. Looking up he saw Makarov and Luxus watching the fray with small smiles on their lips. He saw that Urza and Q cornered Natus and were about to give him the fatal blow before Naruto saved him from them again. Urza, Q come over here for a little bit it's lunch and I got burgers just the way you like it. He yells to them. They stop their swing and drop the mace and club making craters on both sides of Natus who was making a strong resemblance to a pink-haired ghost. 
They got on either side of Naruto and started eating their food happily. Well it's after this we train for an hour then have an easy night today, Naruto said to the two. They nod to him happily at the thought of an easy day. Don't get them wrong they like training with Naruto but with his stamina even Q who is a demon can't keep up with him when he goes all out with it. Yay! Q yells happily. That is acceptable, we should see if others want to join, Urza said with a small smile. Okay, Naruto said excitedly as he thought of what they could do later. After they ate they asked and got everyone from their generation to come with them for their training, except for Kana because she was busy drinking a good half of the guild under the table. When they got out of the guild they were out in one of the training grounds that Naruto built in the forest for the guild to train without damaging the guild. So what are we going to do Naruto? Urza asked as they all stayed in a circle in the middle of the training ground. We are going to be learning how to work as a large group. Naruto said to them. What do you mean by that? Mira asked with an eyebrow raised. Well the fact is that only my group the fairy guardians are able to work as a team, the rest of you aren't a complete team. Naruto said to them. There were some yells of protest but Naruto raised a hand to silence them. Let me explain what I mean, you need to be able to work better together and be able to fight as if you were a single person fighting not just helping out one another, Naruto said to them. Oh? The group said. Alright then this will be something that we all do once a week to get better at working together just in case we have to fight a large group, also after I think that you should all see the new apartment that I got, Naruto said with a grin. Everyone went bug-eyed at this they knew that for the past year he was looking for one but was never able to find one. Urza looked a little sad at this considering that after they turned 15 the two have been just living in her apartment with Q while she secretly sabotaged every place that they looked at for him to leave. She knew that hers was small for the three of considering how much room her armor took up but still. Don't worry it's a nice place that I think that you would all like to come to, Urza if you want it's big enough for you and your armor to live in. Naruto says to her. She blinked a few times in shock but was also very happy that he still wanted to be with her. Come on already we will ogle over your apartment later let's get to the fighting. Natsu yelled as his hands turned on fire ready to fight. Good point alright everyone pair up into three man teams. Naruto said to them. They nodded and split up. The takeover siblings got together, shadow gear, fairy guardians, and then Natsu and Grey were left together. Alright now I will give all of you a number. Naruto said. One was Mira, Urza, Jet, and Grey. Two was Lasana, Q, Levi, and Natsu. Finally three was Naruto, Elfman and Droy. Alright now I want all of you that are on different teams to find ways to work together, Naruto said to them. They looked confused so Naruto decided to do some scatter braining. Well something for my team, me and Elfman are heavy hitters while Droy is a support. Elfman got power but little speed so Droy would make a wall of sorts with his plants allowing us to force enemies into close corners with this, Naruto said to the group. Urza's team has Mira and Urza as experienced fighters who excel at close range, while Jet is good at hit and run and Grey has ice make. Grey could make a weapon for Jet or Urza giving him one while he runs around the enemies picking off their long range and Mira and Urza could do area attacks while Grey creates defense for them. Finally there is Q's team who had Levi who is a great support while Lasana and Natsu could go wild with Q considering she and Levi could heal them no matter the damage, Naruto finished explaining. The wild group put their fist in their hand making a, oh, sound in understanding. Alright now let's do some training people, Naruto said while lifting his fist into the air. Why a a a Everyone yelled in agreement as they went into their groups following what Naruto suggested. After the hour the teams looked good in Naruto's opinion. By no means did he consider them to be teams but they could work well together if ever needed. Droy and Elfman would make a good team considering they made up for one another's weaknesses. While Droy was quick with his spells he didn't hit that hard, but Elfman was the opposite making them a good two-man team. Like he thought Lasana and Natsu worked well together always watching one another's back. Whether they wanted to admit it or not Mira and Urza worked well together with their magic especially when they created an attack that involved Urza dumping a large circle of her weapons into the ground then Mira using her evil spark on the area with the metal weapons acting like lightning rods. In other words if you didn't get diced you got fried. He thought he heard them scream something like, circle of horror, or something. 
Anyway Gray and Jet worked well together with Gray making walls of ice for Jet to jump off of making terrifying combinations. Especially when Gray gave him ice gauntlets allowing Jet to hit as hard as he could without any pain from hitting something at that speed. It took Jet about 40 minutes to get used to the slippery ice but when he figured out if he put more friction than usual in his speed he could run like normal allowing him to go faster with the ice and not lose any balance. Q and Levy were his biggest surprise. The two were able to work better together than he could have imagined. Q had a darker form of magic than Naruto's demon slaying magic. But the drawback was that you needed the pure form of certain elements to make some of her spells work right which is where Levy came in. She could make what Q needed and was able to create all of her magic successfully. Naruto would pair up with the group randomly, with his wide range of abilities thanks to the different tales he had he could work well with the groups. Alright guys I think that we are done for today. Naruto yelled. Everyone was full of scratches, had dirt on them, and they were tired and sweaty. But every last one of them had huge grins on their faces at what they accomplished today. That was awesome. They all yelled together. We should do that more often, Natus said. Yeah, Lasana said in agreement. I, Happy yelled as he flew over to them. Happy what's up? Naruto asked the cat. Master sent me to get you he said that he was wondering where you all were, he said. I thought we told him we were training, Naruto mumbled. Well he knew that but that was three hours ago and he was worried, the cat said. Everyone's jaw dropped. We were training for three hours. The group screams. I it's almost seven how did you not notice, Happy asked them. It didn't feel like that. Elfman mumbled. Well they say when you are having fun time flies, Urza said to them. And I hate to admit it but it was a lot of fun with you guys. Mira mumbled. We love you to Mira, Lasana said to her with a warm smile. Well then let's not keep the master waiting, I will get my apartment ready for you guys to come over. Q go with them to show them the way please, Naruto said to his sister. Okay, she said to him happily. Naruto walked back to his house thanks to the scent he put there. When he got there he took a quick shower and got dressed into a red shirt and black jeans with a hole in the back for his tail. He took out some beer, food and of course cake out for them. Author's note. The apartment looks like Commander Shepard's from Mass Effect 3 the Citadel DLC play it it's hilarious okay on with the story. I wonder what I should make, something simple yet effective. I would normally just go with ramen but not everyone likes it so how about I do a barbecue that could work, Naruto said with glee. He created his level 3 cloak and then the cloak leaked off of him. Demon Slayer Magic Doppelganger he said as three clones of himself came into existence. Alright clone 1 and 2 I want you to clean this place up a little, Naruto said and they nodded and went off to do their work. Alright clone 3 get the kitchen ready I will be back in a few minutes with what we need, Naruto said to him. The clone nodded and went off to do his job. An number 2. Yes I gave him clones come on you just can't have Naruto without them, but he can only create the number of clones depending of the number of tails so it is not good for fighting but great for daily task. Naruto went off to the market and bought all the meat he could and then some iced cream and veggies. When he got back he saw the clone in the kitchen had it set up and he went over and gave him the food. Alright I want for you to get this food set up within one hour and stay here and prepare anything that people want you to. Naruto said to him. The clone nodded and started doing what he was told. Okay they should be here soon, I should get a bedroom set up for Urza, Naruto mumbled to himself as he went up to the second level. When he got there he saw another plain room like his. Well I will let Urza put her personal touches but for right now let's get this livable, he said with a grin as he started getting things together. There was a bed for her, he brought in a dresser for her daily clothes, wardrobe and finally a bookcase at the far end of the room for her. Okay that should do it and the room next to hers can be used for weapons and such while the room downstairs is for Q. Naruto said with a grin. One of his clones comes up to him. Boss the house is clean and your guests are waiting outside for you. It said to him. Got it thanks. He said as he absorbed the clones except the one making food. He goes downstairs to welcome them in. Hey guys welcome. Naruto said with a fox grin. Thanks for having us. They yell in chorus as they walk in one after another. This place is huge. Mira says as she looks around. How did you find this place? Natsu asked. I helped the owner of the building and she said she wanted me to have it, Naruto said to them. Wow nice lady, but what is the rent of this place it cannot be cheap, 
Gray asked as he flopped down on the couch. No it is about 10,000 a month but with the jobs my team takes it's easy. Naruto said with a grin. Wow. The group mumbles. Well time to eat, tell my clone what you want I just went shopping so we got everything we need, Naruto said to them as he grabbed Urza's wrist. Come with me I want to show you your room, Naruto whispered to her as he led her upstairs. When they got up there Naruto pointed out his room and brought her into the one next to it. This will be your room and the room next door will be for you to hold your armor and things, Naruto said to her. She studied the room and smiled at Naruto. This is great Naru thank you, she said with a warm smile using her pet name for him. Wah, wow. Urza why did you give me a pet name, Naruto whines, because I thought it was cute, she said with her cheeks puffed out. Naruto was a little shocked that Urza was sulking but smiled as he hugged her from behind and rubbed his cheek to hers purring. It's cute but why don't you use it when others are around, Naruto asked. Because it's something you should only do with someone that you are in a relationship with, she said with a blush on her cheeks. Then why aren't we in one, it's something like being my mate right, Naruto asked in an innocent voice. This made Urza blush more and silently curse the blonde because he knew how to get to her. You know why, she whispers, she didn't like to admit it but she still wasn't over Jello and the betrayal that he did to her. I know and I will wait for you Urza, Naruto whispered in her ear and licked her cheek making her become a tomato. You are my mate, and the one I am closest with, so I will wait for you, Naruto whispered to her while wrapping his tail around her mid and squeezing her a little tighter. Urza leaned into him liking how gentle he was with her, and patient. She knew anyone else would have left long ago but Naruto was still there for her no matter what. She hated herself for not being able to forget about her past, and Jellow, but she couldn't trust someone fully again after what he did. She knew a relationship involved thrusting someone fully and though Naruto did she just couldn't put the same trust in him. Hey love birds are you coming down or are not? Mira yelled from below. Both of them jumped at the sudden noise and then were the same color as Urza's hair. Coming? Naruto yelled down to them. He let go of Urza making her flinch slightly at the lack of contact. But then Naruto grabbed her hand again and walked down with her making her smile. Please wait for me Naruto, just a little longer and I will be fine I promise, Urza thought as she followed him happily. When they got down there they were looking at something that should have been impossible. Everything was okay, with fairy tale members in a house. Guys are you okay, there's nothing broken, Naruto asked them. Well it's your house not the guild or something so we don't want to break anything, Gray said to him. That and everyone thought you would kill them if they destroyed your house, Gray added mentally. Naruto just shrugs. Oh we should play a game, Lasana said happily. Sure what do you guys want to play, Naruto asked. How about poker, Mira suggested. Okay I'll get the cards, Naruto said as he walked off to get them. But normal poker is not interesting, Mira said with a grin. What do you suggest? Urza asked her. Strip poker, she said plainly. Or in Gray's case cloth poker. Natsu said. What was that matchstick? Gray yelled, in his boxers. Two things, one I got the cards, and two Gray your clothes, again. Naruto said as he walked in. Ah. Gray screams as he runs off to get his clothes. Well anyway I'm game for that but are you guys sure? Naruto said while thinking of Urza knowing the real reason she wore her armor. There was a chorus of yeses and Urza gave a nod. When we play can you sit next to me Naru, please? Urza asked from their link. I was planning on it easy, Naruto said back to her. She nods and they all sit down. Naruto shuffles the cards and deals them out. All right prepare to lose, Mira says with a grin. One hour later most of the group lost or left after losing to many clothes. The remainders were Naruto with only losing his shirt. Mira who was in her underwear only, Elfman in his boxers, Urza with only her panties and Naruto covering her chest with his tail, making the males in the room a little angry at him. Alright do you guys want to call it quits now? Naruto asked them a little worried as to how this was turning out. No way you frickin' leprechaun, Mira yelled. She was pissed because Naruto had unheard of amount of luck and it was pissing her off hence her nickname for him. I agree Nay chan let's have this be the last hand, Elfman said to her trying to be the voice of reason. I agree, Urza said with a mild blush and was thanking Naruto over and over again for covering her. Fine winner takes all agreed, she said angrily, okay, everyone said. Alright show it, 
she said as she slammed down three of a kind queens. Elfman got a pair of jacks, and Urza had a pair of kings, and pair of tens. Naruto was hiding behind Urza as he put down a royal flush. How the hell? Mira screams as she flips the table. Okay let's just call it game now and eat the food should be done. Naruto said from behind Urza. Okay. Mira grumbles as she puts her clothes back on. Naruto throws back on his shirt while having his tail wrapped around Urza still. She puts back on her black bra and puts her shirt on with her skirt. Naruto some assistance. Urza says to him. He helps her buckle back on her armor and goes to the rest of the group. When they get there everyone had a plate and mug eating happily. Well this is nice, Naruto said as he looked at everyone. Ya? Yeah? Elfman said while eating a steak, with his bare hands, like a man. Naruto just giggled as he cut up some steak and made a salad for himself. Naruto could you make me one as well, I will get us some drinks, Urza says to him. Okay, he said to her as he took another steak and did the same to it. When he was done Urza was sitting at the table next to Q, Natsu and Grey. He walked over with the food and gave it to Urza, he looked over and saw Q stuffing her face with chocolate cake after chocolate cake. Q you have to eat something with nourishment or you will get sick. Naruto scolded his little sister. It's alright Naru Nisan I am a demon after all, she said proudly. Nordo sighed in defeat and thought about getting some digestion pills for her in the morning. You two always have the same thing. Natsu said to Urza and Naruto. They blinked a few times and thought back and realized that the fire breather was right, they did. They started blushing at the realization and got embarrassed about it. Just like a married Su Ah, Gray started to say before Urza planted a full blown kick to his shin. Naruto thought he heard a cracking noise from it, but he was more concerned with how red Urza was. Urza, are you getting sick? Naruto asked. Before she could respond Naruto placed his forehead to hers to check her temperature which only made her even more red. I na Naruto clo close, she stuttered out as Naruto backed away slightly. You are a little warm, come on you are getting some rest just in case, he said as he dragged her out of the room. When they got to her room Naruto took off her armor while she was still in her daze and put her on the bed and tucked her in. I'll be back with some medicine and soup for you, if you need anything I will leave a clone here for you to get me he said to her and walked out before she could say anything. Urza pulled the covers up to her eyes hiding most of her face. Stupid Naruto, being overprotective, she mumbled as she stayed in the bed waiting for him. So how is she Naruto? Lasana asked, she is alright just going to make her some soup and get her cold medicine, Naruto said to her. Oh okay, you really care for her don't you? she asked him. Naruto had a small smile and nodded. She is who I trust the most and is my mate, I will be with her forever if she lets me, Naruto said to her with a full blown grin. She giggled at that but knew he was telling the truth. Hell the whole guild knew how he felt and could see Urza felt the same it just bugged the hell out of her that they still weren't together. Well anyway I'll be going, Natsu fireball please, Naruto yelled. A second later a fireball came flying at Naruto who put a cloaked hand up and caught it and put it in the water boiling it instantly. Naruto threw some other ingredients in there as well making some soup. All right it should be done in a minute, he said happily as he walked over to the fridge to get something for her to drink. Naruto when did you learn to cook, Lasana asked. Well me and Urza learned together and we take turns doing chores in the house, Naruto told her with a grin. Wow, she said with an amazed look. Okay here is some water, Naruto said as he poured a glass and pulled out a bowl pouring some of the soup into it. Veggie stew, he said proudly as he went upstairs with a spoon in hand. They are going to be married I wonder if Urza will let me be the bride's women, Lasana thought with a smile. Naruto gets up and opens the door with his tail. Urza is still in the bed mumbling not noticing the blonde step into the room. Naruto went next to her and held up the soup and called it for her. Urza say ah, he said as he held out the spoon. Ah, she yelled in shock as she jumped back. Naruto's ears folded on top of his head as his face twisted in pain at the sudden loud noise near his sensitive ears. That's not what I meant, he whimpered. Sorry I didn't mean to, she mumbled as she bowed her head, a little embarrassed at her sudden action and for hurting Naruto. It's alright Urza now say ah and not yell this time please, Naruto said to her jokingly. She nodded and opened her mouth to eat, she ate it quickly and thanked him for the food. I'm thinking about getting a group photo of us if you think you can get up for it, 
Naruto said to her. I will be fine, I said before I am not even sick, she said as she sat up. Okay, he said as he helped her stand up. He dragged her out of the room and down the stairs. He sat Urza down at the couch and turned toward everyone else. Hey guys let's get a photo of this, Naruto yelled. Good idea, Elfman said as he and his sisters came over to him. Sounds interesting, Gray said as he went over. I wanna be in it, Natsu yelled. Oh me too. Levi yelled as she came over with Droy and Jed right behind her. Okay hey can you come over and take the picture? Naruto asked his clone. K okay, boss, he said as he come over taking the camera. Naruto sat next to Urza wrapping his tail middle and arm around her shoulders, with Q sitting on his lap smiling happily. Next to them was Lasana and Natus who were grinning like idiots while leaning closer to the other. Droy and Jet were on either side of Levi both giving thumbs up on either side of her while she smiled happily. Gray and Mira looked like they were going to rip Natsu's head off for different reasons. Elfman was standing behind Lasana and giving a smile while showing off his guns. All right everyone say fairy tale. The clone yelled. Fairy tale. Everyone yelled and got the picture. Do you think that you can make copies for us? Levi asks Naruto. Sure tomorrow I could send a clone to go and get us some who else wants besides me and Levi, I ask. Everyone else ended up raising their hands except for Q. Q why don't you want one? Urza asked her. Well we are going to be living with Naruto so why would we need another copy of a picture that he already has a copy of? She asked. Good point. Urza mumbled. Alright well there is no reason not to have more copies, Naruto said with a grin to them. Okay I want a copy to then. Q said happily. Whatever you want Q. Naruto says to her licking her forehead making the girl giggle. Naruto turned to Urza who was blushing slightly but Naruto thought that she was getting sick. All right Urza back to bed with you, Naruto said as he picked her up making her eat. I told you I am. Not. Sick. She said angrily. I am not taking any chances with you. He said back to her making her sigh and lean her head on his shoulder knowing that when he went into his protective mode. There was no reasoning with him. Fine, she mumbled as she crosses her arms over her chest. Secretly she didn't mind being treated like this by him. She knew that he would never do anything to harm her and with every fiber of his being just wanted her and Q to be happy. One more year, if he is still like this for just one more year I'll agree to the maid thing. I will get over this by then, Urza thought with determination. And I will wait as long as it takes Urza, Naruto whispered to her when they were in front of her room. She turned scarlet at hearing this and in embarrassment at forgetting about the link, again. Shut up, she mumbled as she tried to hide her embarrassment in his shirt. He put her down on the bed where she immediately put the blanket over her. Naruto left for a second and came back into the room with orange pajamas and lied down next to Urza. I made a promise that I would wait till you were ready and I will not break that promise, Naruto said to her with a smile. She smiled back but then her face turned to stone. I want you to prove it prove you won't break it, she said to him in an almost pleading tone. Naruto was shocked at this but smiled at her anyway knowing how she is with trust. He leaned closer to her getting a confused and embarrassed look from Titania. I make a promise, he said as he put his hands on her cheeks and gave her a kiss on the lips, not a lick but a kiss. It was a short one but to her it said everything she wanted. I will wait for you and promise that I will kiss only you, Naruto said to her as he touched his head to hers. She was shocked by this, normally he would lick her and she had gotten somewhat used to that but he never kissed her before. A poof of steam came off of her face as she turned so red she put rubies to shame. I am starting to see why your last name is Scarlet, and your lips taste just like strawberry cake, he said to her jokingly and then yawned. Good night Urza, Naruto said to her as he wrapped his tail around her and pulled her into a hug putting her head on his chest. I love you my Titania he whispered as he drifted off to sleep. Urza's mind went from blank to thinking a thousand things a minute. He said that he loved me, he always calls me his maid or nicknames, but never said love. He had to go and say that didn't he? Oh god Naru if you keep doing this, she thought as she looked up at his face. I love you to Naru. She whispers as she kisses him back softly as to not wake him. Just a little longer so please wait for me. She whispers as she goes to sleep with the one she trusts. Dot the one she loves. It's good to be back, Naruto says as he looks around the town. Yes, it is Naru. Urza says to Naruto. 
She steps up right behind him with Q next to her. He smiles as he took her hand and started walking to the guild. Haha ha, yes they became a couple over the time I will be doing a flashback later for the story but I just finished watching the first few episodes of the series and wanted to get into it. Urza that was a lot of fun, it wasn't a demon like we're told but it was a huge monster that was fun to fight. Naruto says to Urza as they walk through the town with Naruto pulling her things while she carried a giant horn from the monster. Yes it was and I apologize for the false information it was from a good source, Urza said to Naruto apologetically. Urza Nichan it looked like a monster its energy was different so it was a good try, Q says to her sister while sitting on her luggage. Haha ha, I know that thing was huge I had to go into 9 tail state to pin the thing for Urza to defeat it, Naruto said with a fox grin. They were about halfway through the town when they spot Loki sulking as he walked through the town. Loki, Naruto yelled smiling at the playboy. He looked up and you could see fear in his eyes as he started sprinting to the guild. Well that was weird did we scare him, Naruto asked Urza while tilting his head to the side. Don't know but let's get to the guild I have been hearing some rumors over the week while we were away, Urza said as she starts pulling Naruto faster along with her. As you wish easy, Naruto said to her as they started walking faster to the guild. When they got to the guild they noticed that it was oddly quiet. They walk inside with all the guild members staring at them with a mixture of shock and fear. Naruto looked around and noticed a new face making him smile a little. We have more family easy, Naruto said to her mentally. I see that and I know that you are happy, but let's get to business, she said as she slammed the horn on the ground. The fairy guardians have returned, Urza stated to the guild, she then turned to Mira who was smiling like normal. Is the master here, she asks. Welcome back guys now he is away at a guild meeting actually, Mira says to her. I see, Urza said as she then turned to the rest of the guild. Urza what the hell is that thing? One of the guild members asks as most of the guild looks at it in shock and awe. This is the horn of the monster we slayed, the villagers decorated it and gave it to us as a souvenir, Dot got a problem with that? She asked. No not at all. They said immediately in fear of her. Naruto was giggling with Q at their reactions to Urza. I have been hearing rumors while we were away. The master might have forgiven you but I will not, she said with a voice that would make soldiers shake in fear, making the guild depressed and start to tremble. Kana, she said as she turns to the drinking girl making her stop. Stop drinking in an undignified manner, she said and closed her eyes going through her mental list. Kana becomes depressed and Naruto pops up next to her. Hey she just means to sit normal, not that you couldn't drink, Naruto said to her making her grin happily as she sits properly and continues to drink her beer barrel. Vista, Urza says getting the man's attention. Yes, he says in a shocked voice as he freezes in mid-step of his dance. Take your dancing outside, she demands. Naruto pops up next to him holding a top hat. When you dance outside put this in front of you and you can get some money while you dance, Naruto says to him while putting the hat on his head. He nods and starts walking outside. Wakaba, you're dropping ashes on the table, Urza says to him making the chain smoker depressed. Naruto is behind him holding a plate. Just have your ashes fall on this so they don't make Mira have to clean up after you. He says to the pipe smoker. He thanks Naruto and takes the plate from him. Nab, stop just looking at a job and just take one already, she says to him as she turns to her next victim. Naruto comes over to him patting his back. She is right you need to take a job, but bring someone along with you so it's safer, and it's more fun with friends anyway. Naruto says to him making him smile. He goes off to see if anyone wants to come along with him. Macau, she says making him flinch, staring, staring, sigh. Say something damn it, he whines and starts to cry waterfalls from his eyes. That's her way of saying nothing was wrong, and also good to have you back we heard about the Vulcans and we nearly came back to get you but from what I heard the new girl and Natsu beat us to it, Naruto said to him. He smiles at him happily and was doing a victory dance in his head with not being chewed out by Urza. You all give me a headache, she says as she holds her head massaging her temples. Naruto pops up from behind her and hugs her middle while putting his chin on her shoulder. Oh easy don't let it get to you, I know you only get like this because you care, Naruto said to her kissing her cheek. She smiles slightly and nods to him but then her face turns to stone again. Right where is Natsu and Grey? 
she asks as she looks around for the two. Over there, Naruto says as he covers his mouth with laughter threatening to come out at what he was looking at. Hey Urza. Gray says as he and Natsu were holding hands smiling while sweating bullets. I, Natsu says. Buahahaha. Naruto and Q start laughing historically while holding their sides on the floor. I see the two of you getting along, but I know that even the best of friends fight at times, Naruto. Q why are you laughing? Urza asks. Naruto and Q put up a hand telling her to wait a minute for them to catch their breaths. When they do they are still giggling a little but they stand up. Oh it's nothing easy, one day you will understand, Naruto says to her. Ya sis don't worry about it, Q says while waving her off with giggles escaping her lips every now and then. I have never seen Natsu act like this, Lucy says in shock as she looked at her friends that she knew the second they saw one another that they were rivals to the bitter end. Well that's because of what they did. Natsu challenged her and got beaten to a pulp, Grey was and was beaten to a pulp and finally Loki tried courting her and Naruto put him in the hospital, he is very protective of her, Mira says with a smile. Naruto where have I heard that name before, Lucy mumbled. After a minute a light bulb appeared over her head. Wait I know Naruto aka the demon of fairy tale, also said to be the strongest in the guild besides the master, Lucy said in shock. Yep that's our fox boy, Mira said with a happy smile remembering how he got that name and all the times that she lost to him in spars. Him and Urza aka Titania have been the hottest topic for mage couples lately also, Lucy said in shock. That is also true they have been very close friends up until last year where Naruto did the cutest thing and convinced her to go out with him, they have been going steady for a full year almost, Mira says with a smile. Grey. Natsu I have a favor to ask, Urza says to them catching their attention. I heard a troubling rumor before coming here and I want to make sure it is not true. I am going to want your help along with fairy guardians will you help? She asks. The whole guild is shocked by this considering that fairy guardians were known as one of the strongest if not the strongest team in Fiora, and they were asking for help. I never thought I would say this but, this just might be the strongest team ever, Mira says as she looks at the group picturing it. Mangolia Station Naruto, Urza and Q arrive at the station after packing their things. Naruto has a shoulder bag holding a book with his things in it. He learned seal magic as a secondary in case he ever needed to depend on something other than his demon slaying. Main reason he does this is to help Urza with dragging her things. Currently Q was on Naruto's shoulders because she wanted a piggyback ride and Urza was carrying her oversized amount of luggage on her cart but they still were holding hands both with smiles as they walked to the station. Hello, Urza said showing that they were there. Urza, goo, that's a lot of luggage. Lucy said as she saw the large amount of luggage that Urza had. Are you all ready to go guys? Naruto asked with a fox smile while on the inside he was laughing his ass off. We are ready to go, Gray says. I, Natsu says. And it's happy number two all over again. Lucy says as she starts laughing awkwardly at the scene. Getting along is nice. Oh you are the new girl at the guild what would your name be? Urza asks Lucy. Oh I am Lucy, Mira asked me to come along, she said while bowing a little. Oh that's good, nice to meet you my name is Naruto, and this is my sister Q. Naruto said as he removed his hood while holding out his hand. It is nice to meet you Naruto, she said as she shook his hand. Hey I'm his sister. You can call me Q, she says as she holds out her hand. Nice to meet you, da. Lucy says as she shakes her hand as well. She looks and notices Naruto and the fox ears on their heads along with the nine red tails behind Q as she sits on Naruto's shoulders. Before you ask, yes, they are real and no, you cannot touch them, only Urza can touch them. Q, I don't know, you have to ask her, Naruto says to her. Lucy pouts a little, but then Urza gets her attention. So you are Lucy I heard you took on a gorilla army and defeated them with a single finger is this true? Urza says with a smile. Naruto turned his attention to Grey and Natsu who were fighting. Urza looked after them for a second and they went into best friend mode as Naruto liked to call it. The second she turned they were locking heads again. Well they have developed a rather good sixth sense for when Urza looks at them. Naruto whispers to Q. Ya it's always funny to watch them. Q says back as she giggles a little as she continued to watch. Urza I have a condition to coming, Natsu said to her. Hey do you got a death wish, 
Gray whispers trying to save him. When we get back I want you to fight me, Natsu says with a grin. Yeah he is a true slayer, always wanting to fight and get stronger, Naruto says returning Natsu's smile. Hum I do know you have gotten stronger, fine I agree, she says with a smile that promised pain. Naruto sees this and smiles to her as well, but a warm one not a fight addict one like Natsu. Oh now I am fired up, he yells as fire surrounds him shooting to the ceiling. The train Naruto and Urza were sitting next to one another, while Urza had her head on his shoulder and holding his hand with Q sleeping using his lap as a pillow as he gently brushed her head. They found out over the years that on forms of transportation Q get very tired they think it's her fault like Naruto's lack of direction, and Natus's motion sickness, Natsu. Lucy and Grey were sitting across from them with Natsu looking like death was claiming him. Urza I think we should have Natsu sleep through the train ride, Naruto suggested. Good idea, she says as she crouches down in front of him and punches him in the stomach knocking him out. He lands right on Lucy who is a little shocked at this. Just let him sleep it's a little weird to knock someone out like that but Natsu is too durable for much else and it allows him to just sleep through it, Naruto explains to the shell-shocked Lucy. She nods and just lets Natsu remain asleep on her lap. So Urza what are we doing exactly, Grey asks her. Our opponents are a dark guild called Irsenward, who plan on using lullaby. She starts to explain. Isn't that something to put kids to sleep? Lucy asks. I don't think so there is an item called lullaby and from what I have heard of it, the thing is bad, Naruto says to them. Yes a dark guild is normally doing something horrible or Zenward is one that specializes in assassination. The council would normally ban these quests but they have not and that worries me, Urza explains. I know easy but all we can do is fix what we can here and now and what we do know is that we need to go and see the master because it will have something to do with them, Naruto says to them. They nod in agreement as they come to a stop. Lucy goes and gets the group some food. When she comes back she has a basket of sandwiches. Urza I just noticed this but why do you have two different eye colors, one is brown and the other is red? Lucy asks. Urza blinks in confusion but then smiles as she puts her hand over her red eye as she looks at Naruto. I got it from Naruto, when I was younger my eye was damaged and I was told that it would be impossible to heal. I only knew Naruto for an hour and he healed it saying he wanted to help a friend, Urza says to her. Wow you can heal people as well, Lucy says in shock as she looks at Naruto kind of stuck on the fact that he was able to do something that was said to be impossible. He laughs while scratching the back of his head. Ya yeah, I am a rounded mage but I am best at close up, but having a healer in any group never hurts, he said to her smiling. That's amazing so what type of magic do you use? Lucy asks wanting to know more about the supposed strongest in fairy tale. That my friend is a surprise, he says to her with a chuckle as she starts to pout. Fine then how about you Urza, she asks wanting to find out about her new friends. Urza's magic is really pretty it makes enemies blood spill everywhere just like Naruto's, Happy says. That's pretty, Lucy says dead pained as she looks at the cat that has a fish in its mouth. Urza takes a bit of her strawberry cake. Really I think that Grey's is much prettier than mine, Urza says with a little bit of shock at Happy's compliment. Really, he mumbles as he creates his magic making an ice fairy tail symbol. Naruto is busy feeding a half awake Q who is mainly awake from sheer willpower so that she can eat her chocolate cake. Oh so that's why you and Natsu fight all the time he is fire and you are ice, she says in shock. Everyone blinks at the discovery. Wow I never thought of it that way, when you look at it naturally you two would never get along, Naruto said while thinking of Lucy in a much more intelligent light than before. The group gets off of the station and stretches out from the long ride. All right now we are going to be going to the master, Urza says. All right, but I am shocked there is no yelling from you Natsu normally when we get off of any transportation you are screaming, Natsu, Naruto said as he turned around to look for him. He thinks for a minute then his eyes go wide in realization. Oh shit, Naruto yells as he looks at the train to see Natsu still there and going away as he hangs out of the window. Natsu. Naruto yells as he starts to run after the train but the train is long gone already. Oh no this is my fault, Lucy please hit me, Urza says. Uh, Lucy responds feeling very confused at what was going on. Urza goes over to Naruto who jogs back. Naruto hit me, 
she says and closes her eyes expecting to get hit in the head for her insolence. Fine, Nartuo whispers as he puts one hand on her shoulder and Urza closes her eyes tightly until she feels something warm on her nose and something wrapped around her middle with a hand on her cheek. She opens her eyes to see Naruto kissing her nose. That's not what I meant Naruto, she mumbles as a blush creeps over her face. Well you know I can't hit you so that is the next best thing, Naruto says to her with a smile as she lets her go. Fine, she mumbles as she turns away from him, now I am going to go and get Natsu, Naruto says and was about to go but Urza grabs his arm. You won't hit me then I will make up my mistake myself, she says determined as they go and get a magic cart. They rent it and they start speeding off to go and get Natsu. When we get him we should go to the masters, Naruto said. The group nodded their heads and continued to speed off. Hey look it's Natsu and Happy. Lucy says as she points to them. Nice now let's go. Gray says as they get closer. They get them out of the train and Natsu hops over. We have to stop the train, he yells at them. What do you mean Natsu? Gray asks. They have something called lullaby and they are going after the masters. He says but then falls straight on the ground from his motion sickness. But when lullaby was said Naruto and Q went wide-eyed. Naruto you know something don't you? Urza says. Yes lullaby is a demon that was trapped inside of a flute. I can't believe I forgot about that, Naruto said. It was created and brother has to kill it but its power is scary, you hear the music that it makes and you will die, Q explains. But the master are so powerful, Lucy says. Yes but that is the thing lullaby is a spell that shuts down a person that hears it no matter the power, when they go to sleep they die, Naruto says to her. We have to hurry up, Urza says. Right, Naruto says to her and they start speeding off. Station, are you the guard in charge? Urza asks one of the guards. No why are you here, he asks. We are part of fairy tale we are going to go in and fight the dark guild, Urza says to him. All right but be careful, we sent in a group earlier but they have not come back, he says to the group. Understood, the group says to him as they run inside the station. There should be a group of the army here I hope that they are alive, Naruto says. I agree but they are going up against a full guild, Urza says to them. When they turn a corner they see piles of soldiers there. Oh crap Q you know what to do meet up with us when you are done, Naruto says to her. Right. She says as she goes to the men and starts healing them. They run into the train station to be stopped by the dark guild. So they showed up. A man with a scythe says. Yes we have now give me that demon. Naruto says to him with a cold glare. Oh so fairy tale sends flies to do something. Aragor says as he looks at the group trying to ignore Naruto to aggravate him. Come and see what we can do. Naruto says as he slams his fists together creating a shockwave making the dark guild take a step back from the force of it. I would love to but you aren't worth my time I have a meeting with the masters, show them the power of the dark guild, he says as he runs away. He ran away. Lucy and Happy yell together. Natsu Grey go after him, if you work together you can fight him, Urza says they lock heads but then stand straight up at the killer intent coming off of the Han Yu. Guys there are thousands of lives ridding on this along with Gigi's, dot put your rivalry aside for a little while until our precious people are safe and back to us, Naruto says to them while glaring at the dark guild. They both look serious as they nod to him and run off. They ran away. Someone from the dark guild yelled, I'll get them, said some mummy reject. Hey Venom not cool my name is, oh shut up my fic now deal with it or I will make it so you go face first into that ledge you were jumping over fine. He jumps over the ledge and start to chase after the fairy tale pair. I'm coming to I am not forgiving that bastard, said the guy that looks like Shikamaru, and has the same powers too. Now it just leaves us against them, Naruto says as he cracks his knuckles. He he what do you think you can do, one of them says. Let's rip off the wings of these girls and show that guy who's boss, another said. But I am too cute, that's cruel, Lucy says as she goes off to La La Land while Happy tries to bring her back. Fire it up thousand foot crutch. Scum. Urza says as a red magic circle appears in front of her hand. Targets. Naruto growls as two crimson rings appear on his elbows as he cracks his knuckles as red energy was bubbling out of his skin. If you keep on insulting my family I don't think I will be able to hold back. 
Naruto says with a sadistic smile on his face. I won't stand for you insulting fairy tale, Urza says with a commanding voice. A magic sword appears in Urza's hand while crimson colored claws appear over Naruto's. Big deal we got weapons too, the group says. The second they get close Urza slams them away with a powerful shockwave. Fine deal with this, the mages yell as they shoot magic at them. Urza, Naruto says. She jumps into the air in understanding as Naruto puts up his hand and stops the shots. He he he, thanks for the food, Naruto says with a grin as he inhales. The second he does the magic starts to get ed into his mouth and the sound of chewing can be heard. Everyone's jaws hits the ground, he eats magic, they group screams. Demon slaying magic. Extend Naruto yells as he shoots two magic filled arms to the side and claps them together forcing the group to get close. Urza changes her weapon to a spear and takes a giant slash at the group sending them flying. Urza lands next to Naruto and changes the spear to twin short swords. Let's go! Naruto says as he dashes forward slashing everything in their way while Urza was at his back hitting anything around them with a shockwave at the strength she swung. What are they? One of the guild members screams. Fairy guardians at your service. Q yells as she jumps down with a magic infused arms shattering the floor sending a shockwave throwing everyone in the area away. Good to see you back Q, Naruto says as he slams a group with his enlarged arms. Q support and medic. Q says as she gathers magic into her hands creating spheres of crimson magic encasing her hands. She is a medic. Everyone yells but we're running as she threw a large chunk of floor at them. Urza, frontline assault and verity fighter. Urza says as she slashes a group away from them and then changing her weapon to an axe sending another shockwave at the group. Naruto, guardian and leader. Naruto says as he starts to change into his one-tailed state and flew through their ranks shooting them at Urza and Q who used them as target practice. Wait that speed in Ray equipping, and the power of the little girl, those fox features and power. A fat guy in the back starts mumbling. I'll help out too, Lucy says as she pulls out Cancer's key. Hey this is their time to shine, happy whines at her. Lucy you might not want to summon cancer he might get hurt with what is about to happen, Naruto says to her. She stops mid-swing and nods as she pulls her key away again as she nods dumbly at the blonde. Hey easy there are a lot of them still can we as a combination now I am worried about Natsu and Grey. Naruto says as magic starts to swirl around him uncontrolled. Agreed, she said back to him as a magic circle appears under her feet. Demon Cloak level 5 Naruto roared as he was engulfed in a black column. Urza changes into her heaven's wheel armor. Combination 1. Urza says. Naruto charges a baiju cannon while swords appear around her. Circle sword Urza yells as a ring of swords shoot out at the crowd. They were looking at you hoping to see you I'm killing them. Naruto says to her as he launches his baiju cannon at the crowd. The attacks fuse together and creates a dark ring that started to in all the people around it toward the ring. It expanded and ed everything into it spreading the entire dark guild. Dark ring the two yelled together as the attack detonated making a massive explosion knocking out everyone in the dark guild. Oh god I know them. The green hair guy yelled. Demoness of fairies Q, the fairy queen Titania Urza, and demon king Naruto Kayubi, together their fairy tale guardians know to be the strongest team in fury he said in shock. You got that right, Q yelled from behind him, right before she hit him he ran out of the room. Go follow him, Urza says to Lucy. M me, she asks in shock. I'm counting on you, she said with an evil glint in her eye making her sprint off after him. Q watch over her please, Naruto asks. Not a second later she is sprinting off after Lucy. You really should take better care of yourself Urza, Naruto whispered as he hugged her from behind like always holding her up as she began to fell. You never take things in strides do you Haim? Naruto says to her with a smile. Not when there are things I can't replace at stake, she says to them. Alright let's go and warn the people to get out of here, Naruto says as he helps Urza walk to the entrance. When they get there Urza stands on her own and takes the microphone from him. Everyone if you value your lives flee. A dark guild has a magical item that is capable of killing everyone here and they plan to use the speakers now flee from here. She yells. Everyone is staring at her in shock until Naruto grabs the mic from her. 
Since they don't get it I will put it in a way that they can understand, Naruto said to her as he inhaled deeply. She means get the fuck out of here you dibshits. Naruto yells. Everyone starts running as fast as they can from there. Why did you do that now they are all in a panic? A guard asks us. It is better they panic than get killed, Naruto says to them. You should leave as well, Urza says to them. They look in shock but nod their heads as they leave themselves. Now let get the others and find Ngor, Naruto says to them. The wind starts to pick up confusing him. He looks behind him and sees the station surrounded in wind. Crap! He growls as he remembers most of them are inside. Then he smells the air and smells blood and his eyes widen. Urza watch out! Naruto yells right before Ngor's blade of wind comes down on her knocking the two into the dome of wind surrounding the station. Ha 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 that worked better than I thought the only way to go with my wind wall is in. Ngor says with sadistic glee. Urza slams her fist into the wall and gets thrown back into Naruto who catches her. Now if you will excuse me I have a date with your masters, he says as he runs away again. Damn, Naruto mumbled as he stood up while using regeneration onto his back to heal the new scar, while healing Urza's arm. We have to get the others and get out of here, Urza says to her. Right, Naruto says to her as they start running off. Naruto and Urza were running back into the station to meet up with the others. Naruto do you think your seals could do anything on that wind? Urza asks him. He thought for a minute but shook his head sadly. No I need to place it on a target and the wind is ever shifting I would not be able to get the seal to stick long enough for it to work, he explains to her. Then what options do we have? She asks him. There are three that we could do, Naruto says to her. All right I am listening, she says to him as they turn another corner. Me and Q would be able to eat the magic destroying the wind but we would have to blast the magic away soon after because that's too much for us to hold at a time, Naruto says to her. That could work but might cause damage to the area, she mumbled as they continued running. I can go into level 9 and make a gap for you guys to go through and after get through it in level 3 inches he says to her. She nodded thinking that was a good idea but it would hurt him pretty badly. Finally we could as combination 4 inches Naruto says to her, she was a little wide eyed at that suggestion and bit her thumb. That would be the best idea but it was also draining for Naruto to do that for too long. That might be the best idea but we only do it for 5 seconds max, she says to him. Naruto smiles at her and nods. She blushed slightly at this liking it when he smiled as they arrived at the middle of the train station. Gray was there and a second later they heard Natsu. Iron fist of the fire dragon he screams. A second later Kagayama gets punched through the wall and skids until he is at the feet of Naruto, Urza, and Gray. All of them are looking at him darkly. Naruto made his eyes start glowing with his magic making him look even scarier than usual. He looked at them in pure fear making Urza and Naruto grin a little knowing that they could use that. Now tell us is there a way out of here? Urza asks in a dark tone. Kagayama shook his head no frantically. We were to keep you here as long as we could until he finished preparing the tornado outside to keep you here while he continued the mission. That's all I know, he said terrified of this guild. He knew about Titania and the demon of fairy tale. They were able to wipe the floor with Salamander and he beat the hell out of him like he was nothing, he didn't want to anger these monsters. All right then we have to us that then, Urza said with a sigh. Naruto was behind her hugging her gently. Don't worry easy I can take it, he said to her playfully as he kissed her cheek. She nodded to him and turned to the group while still leaning into Naruto. When the others come here we are going to leave and chase after Aragorn, Urza says. Not a second later Q and Lucy come running to them, sorry it took so long it was difficult to find that guy, Lucy says as she starts panting from running. He was hiding like a chicken so I roosted him like one, Q said with an evil glint in her eye while she started giggling evilly. The group was backing away slowly from her. I think that my sweet little sister is a sadist, Naruto said as he continued to look at her for a moment. Sorry to tell you but she has been for a while Mira corrupted her, Urza said as she got out of his grip, he looked at her confused but shrugged it off. Now let's go we need to go and help the masters, Urza said to them. The group nodded and followed her outside. They all became god smacked when they saw the massive tornado wall that was keeping them there. How do we get past this? Gray yelled as he blocked his eyes from the sheer amount of wind. 
We are going to destroy it, Naruto said grinning. Urza nodded as her magic circle appeared underneath her. As she focused her magic to match Naruto's. We fight together and now as one, Naruto said barely above a whisper as he went behind Urza hugging her from behind. His own magic circle appeared and fused with hers making a double layered seal. Demon Slayer Magic Pure Union Naruto yelled as he was enveloped in a bright crimson light. Armor set one Urza yelled as she started her transformation. Everyone was shocked when they saw Naruto start to envelop Urza taking form to armor. Look at profile for image. When the smoke cleared everyone was shocked by Urza's transformation. They were also scared as hell of the giant red claymore that she was carrying. She also looked like she had a demonic aura around her. What they didn't see was that her eyes were slits like Naruto's and she also had faint whisker marks on her cheeks much like Naruto. Easy you're all set. Naruto said to her in a chipper voice. Urza nodded to him as she lowered the claymore at a low ready position. Bloody Crescent she yelled in a demonic like voice as she arced her sword straight up making a slash go toward the wall. The attack grew very quickly as it neared its target. When it reached it was big enough to have cleaved a train in half. The second it made contact it exploded in a slice motion cutting the entire wind wall in half dissipation it instantly. Wow great job EZ. And good call on holding back we would have sliced the town in half if we used 25% like I thought we needed, Naruto said to her while giggling. Urza sighed at her boyfriend's antics. That's why I said to only use 5% anymore would have been a waste, she said as she was enveloped in a bright crimson light like before. Naruto appeared behind her holding her in a similar manner as before. That's why you're the brains hum, Naruto said as he pecked her on the cheek making her blush again. Meanwhile the rest that were there were still trying to pick their jaws off of the ground. Even Q was surprised because she didn't think that they were able to us union yet. Alright everyone let's go, Naruto yelled to the group. Natsu got out of his shock first and had happy start to fly them there. Naruto saw this and smiled at his friend. You are a brash slayer Natsu, but that's not a bad thing he thought as he turned to the others. He saw a wobbly Kagayama at the door looking at them in shock but then fell down onto the ground. Naruto was shocked by this and was about to go and help but Q appeared at his side in an instant and began healing him. He is hurt bad but he will be fine with rest, we might want to take him with us I sense he is not what he tries to seem, Q says to Naruto. Naruto nodded and smiled at her knowing what she meant. Alright if that's what you want, now everyone let's get going we have a certain demon to slay, Naruto said as he started cracking his knuckles in anticipation. The others nodded and Gray helped Q get Kagayama into the cart and Urza and Naruto took the front while they started driving. They started driving full speed off to the site to stop the Dark Guild's plan. On the way Q was able to heal Cage enough for him to be able to speak and give them information. From what they found out they started going faster. Naruto sees how fatigued Urza is but she refused to let him take over. Naruto if you have to fight lullaby then I want you to be at full power for that I can drive us there but I will be too drained to help. Urza explains to him. Naruto is saddened by this but understood that she was right. They didn't know how strong the demon itself was but its magic was very deadly. Alright Urza but please don't exert yourself, Naruto said to her worried. She smiled at him and nodded as she continued to drive. When they got to where Natsu was there was a giant pillar of flames with Natsu in the middle of it. He beat the hell out of Aragor and he was now twitching on the ground after the beating he got. Take that! Natsu yelled as he pumped his fists in victory. The group got off to meet him. Naruto carried Urza bridal style not listening to her protest, she just starts sulking at this and was grumbling about him not listening to her. Secretly she was enjoying every minute of it but she was still embarrassed at him doing this in front of everyone, she had a reputation to uphold. Nice job Natsu you are a true slayer. Naruto said to him happily while rubbing his head. He started laughing and was going to slap his hand but the death glare from Urza said that he moved her she would kill him. No question. He just let it be and laughed and absorbed the praise from his friends. Naruto noticed that the lullaby flute was on the ground as did Q. We just need to break that and we are done. Naruto said as he was about to crush it but then he saw a hand made of shadows grab it. Ha 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 see you fairies. Kagayama cackled as he drove off in the cart with the flute in hand. Grey weren't you guarding him, Naruto yelled as he put Urza down as he pointed to the cart driving away. 
He wasn't able to move more than his hands I didn't think that he could move that much, Gray said back. Naruto sighed knowing that Gray normally does a good job and if he thought that then there should have been no need to worry. Fine no problem we just have to beat the hell out of Cage then, Naruto said. How are we going to catch him he stole the cart and it's a day's run from here. Lucy yelled and started panicking. No need to worry my bro can handle that right, Q said to him while giving him puppy dog eyes again. Of course and Q you didn't need to do that I wouldn't make you carry us there, Naruto said as he took a few steps away from his friends. He got on all fours and a magic seal appeared under him. Demon Slayer magic. Nine tail cloak he said as he was enveloped in red energy again. He started growing but stopped as he was two stories tall and looked exactly like Kiyubi. Wow I thought he would be bigger, Natsu said as he looked at Naruto in wonder. Well this form he is actually the size of a mountain but that would be hard for him to carry us, Urza said. One of Naruto's tails wrapped around her and lifted her on top of his head making her giggle a little at how soft his fur was. He did the same for Q and Lucy putting them on his back while Grey and Natsu who was carrying Happy just jumped on top of his back. Alright let's get going, Urza said to Naruto. He nodded slightly making sure to be careful with her on top of his head and started running off. The clearing in the woods. The group got to the clearing where Naruto wrapped them in his tails and set them down before transforming back into himself. That was awesome we should ride on Naruto more often it's faster and better than any train, Natsu yelled happily thanks to him not having any motion sickness. Yes and thanks to Urza we were able to get here quickly, Lucy said. Urza smiled at the praise and was hugged by Naruto right after he turned back to normal. Thanks for the help EZ, he said to her happily as he nuzzles into the crook of her neck while wrapping his tail around her again. She just reveled in the warmth and would deny it if anyone said that she was acting like she was. Now where is he, Grey growled. He was still angry that Cage got away under his watch and wanted to fix his mistake. He is over there with the master, Naruto said as he pointed down the hill. The group looked and saw him about to play the flute and started to freak out. We have to stop him, Natsu yelled as he was about to jump down. But Q grabbed him with her tails and threw him back shaking her head. You should just wait and watch. There is no need for us to get involved, she said to him as they watched him. Right as always Q Chan. A man, womanly voice said from behind them. The whole group jumped as they turned around to see Master Bob right behind them. Oh you all have grown. You're also just my type, he said as he started dancing, I think, towards the boys in the group. Urza who was still in Naruto's arms started leaking murderous intent toward him making him freeze. Master Bob remember the last time you tried to take Naruto away from Urza, Q said to him. He started to shrivel away from her knowing that Naruto was off limits, permanent tly. But then he got a glint in his eye as he started going for Grey and Natsu, they were still on the market. Back with Makarov he was still talking to Cage about guild and family, and with just his words he was able to disarm Kagayama. The group went down the hill and saw started congratulating him for what he did. Naruto and Q were holding in their giggles when Urza slammed his head into her steel breastplate giving him a good lump on the head. Why the hell are you brats here? Makarov asked confused as he looked at all of them. We knew that he was coming for you and the flute lullaby was going to be used so we were here to destroy it. Urza said to him. He nodded to her and they began to look for it. You weak foolish humans an ominous voice roared. The group looked at the flute in shock. Did that just speak, it can talk, Natsu, Grey, and Lucy thought. This is bad it's waking up, Naruto said as it started to glow brighter. Q get everyone out of here now. Naruto yelled. Not wasting a second she grabbed everyone in one of her tails and started hopping away to the master's meeting. By the time she got there lullaby was in its true form of what looked like a giant tree. The army got there but was quickly scared away when lullaby destroyed a mountain. I smell a lot of souls for me to eat. That one with the armor looks to have a very strong one lullaby howled as it started laughing. At hearing this Naruto's eye widened as his bangs hid them and his animal features started to become more defined. Oh crap, Q said as she started to hide behind the master. That was a bad idea. Urza said as she looked out to Naruto with some worry. What did you just say? Naruto growled as magic started to swirl around him. What was that human lullaby said as it turned to look at Naruto? I asked what did you say that you were going to do to my mate, 
Naruto yelled demonically as a massive magic circle appeared under him while a massive column of magic shot up to the sky. Everyone was shocked by the amount of power he was displaying. My boy you could be a wizard saint easy with that power, Makarov thought as he saw him transform. Demon slaying magic. Nine Tails Naruto screamed as he became the size of Kiyubi when it was attacking the leaf, overshadowing Lullaby who was now scared out of its mind. Wait a demon slayer is said in horror now understanding how deep in shit it was. It'll rip you apart Naruto growls as he starts doing just that he starts hacking and slashing with his claws destroying lullaby piece by piece. The group below had a crowd of the other masters and all of them were scared out of their minds. Two demons are fighting. One yelled. We're doomed. Another yelled. All of you stop worrying Naruto is taking care of it though he is going a little overboard about it. Makarov said as he watched Naruto beating Lullaby to a pulp. When it tried to us its song Naruto smashed it away from its seal not allowing it to finish its spell. This is the only fault that demon slayers have, Q said as she watched her brother beat the ever-living hell out of Lullaby. What do you mean, Natsu said as he watched the fight with stars in his eyes seeing how strong Naruto is. They are protective of their mates to a degree where they go into a primal rage when they are threatened. When they are actually hurt it's even worse than this, Q said as she continued as she watched. Urza was watching this with sad eyes knowing that even though it wasn't her fault that she was the cause for him acting this way. Urza when he is finished with it you are going to have to calm him down, Q says to her. She just nodded as the group continued watching. Naruto grabbed a crippled lullaby by the legs and started spinning around in a circle quickly causing a weak tornado to form. He threw it as hard as he could into the sky. He then aimed his mouth up at it. To the nine layers of hell with you demon slayer magic hell's cannon Naruto screamed as he fired the blast straight up at it the blast completely enveloped it vaporizing it. When it was destroyed there was a large amount of blue sparkles throughout the night sky. But Naruto was giving into his rage and started howling into the night in pure rage. Urza you have to go and calm him down now, Q said to her frantically. She nodded and re-equipped her heaven wheel armor and flew up to Naruto. Naruto was still in a rage and was howling and lashing out on the area around him. Naruto stop. Urza screams to him through their link. Naruto was in mid swing but stopped as he heard Urza's voice. E. R. Z. A. He said back as he turned to her. She was flying a few inches from his nose looking at him kindly while holding out her arms. It's okay Naruto you did it you beat lullaby so calm down and come to me. Please Naru Koi, she said to him smiling. Naruto had tears in his eyes as he released the spell and started shrinking. I lost control again, I am nothing more than a monster, he thought fearfully as he transformed fully back into himself. When he did he was in the fetal position holding his head as he cried, for breaking his promise to Urza to not lose control like that again. Naruto released her armor and was in her casual clothes again without the armor over it. She walked over to Naruto and hugged him tightly rocking him like a child. Naruto just leaned into her praying she wouldn't let go. The others arrive at this and are all saddened by this no one more so that Q because she knows that she can't help her brother. Makarov why is Naruto Chan like that? Bob asks. It is because even though he is powerful he is also scared of it. It is a magic that can easily overpower his will and could have him hurt those he cares for. He lose control and nearly hurt us and it is putting him in emotional turmoil, Makarov explains. Well he did defeat the demon and we are very thankful for that I just hope that he will be better, Bob says as he looks at the two. The group smiles slightly at that. There is no need to worry with Urza there, she will look after him like always, Gray says as he looks at the two. That's true, Natsu says with a grin. Let's get some transportation to get everyone home, Lucy suggested. Good idea but those two need their own cart understood, Makarov says. They nod and go off to get things ready. Back with Urza and Naruto they were talking while Urza held him. Well it was more like Naruto constantly apologizing while Urza comforted him saying soothing words in his ear. Naruto was holding her very tightly and it was crushing her slightly but she didn't mind. She knew that he didn't want to harm her but he was too scared right now to know that he was. She decided after a while to make him look at her. Naruto you broke no promise. No one is hurt and you did your job as a demon slayer, she said to him sternly. Then her expression softened, 
Sonaru Koi I am not mad at you I am nothing but proud of you understand, she said to him. He looked at her in wonder but nodded and put his head back on her chest as he started smiling at her not trusting his voice at the moment. She saw his tail wagging behind him and knew that he was happy at least. She lifted his head up once again while leaning down and kissed him on the lips fully. He was shocked but returned the kiss happy that his mate was there for him. They stayed in their lip lock for a few moments before she leaned away from him. She heard him whimper and giggled a little at his animal ways, as she stood up bringing him up with her. We are going back to the guild all right, she said to him, she felt him nod against her breasts and they started walking. Thank you for always being there Urzaheim, he mumbled. She heard this and felt very happy, knowing that she was being everything he wanted from her as he was everything she wanted from him. I will always be there that was my promise to you, remember, she said to her. She couldn't see but she knew Naruto was smiling happily, and I would be there for you always, he said back as he looked her in the eye. They were bloodshot from crying but they were their normal blue color that reminded her of the sky. She let go of him but then went to holding his arm and intertwining her fingers with his. That's the Naruto I know, always getting back up, she said happily. He giggled a little and agreed with her as they returned to the others. There were two carts waiting for them with drivers. You two are in my cart we will be back at your guild by midday tomorrow. The driver said to the two. They nodded and went into the cart. They sat down and started getting driven off. You know when we get to the guild you are going to have to fight Natsu right, Naruto said to her playfully. Urza sighed as she had him it on the side of the cart and she nuzzled into his chest. I know but for right now I want to be with my koi, she said as she closed her eyes. She felt herself being lifted higher and something soft and warm pushed onto her lips. She looked and saw Naruto kissing her. He had his hands and tail travel around her warming her as his tongue went past her lips into her mouth. She suppressed a moan when he started massaging her tongue with his own. His hands started to wonder but he stopped himself remembering that he was to wait till Urza told him that she wanted to go farther. Unknown to him Urza was a little annoyed that he stopped when she did want him to continue but was content with his kisses, for now. They parted strands of saliva connecting their lips while they breathed heavily against one another. I love you Urza Scarlet and nothing will ever change that, Naruto said to her as he held her tightly. She was blushing furiously at that but smiled as she leaned closer to Naruto. I hope that we have more times like this where it's just me and you Naruto Koi, she thought as she drifted off to sleep. Naruto smiled at her and followed suit falling asleep as well waiting to be at their guild, their home tomorrow. Naruto and Urza were still sleeping soundly in the cart enjoying the peace and quiet. The cart driver looked back to tell them that it was almost time to get out but saw them and couldn't find the heart to wake them up so the driver just continued to drive. Naruto could smell fairy tale and knew that they were close but acted like he was asleep so that Urza could sleep. The only thing that he knew was exactly the same about Urza and Q were that they hated being woken up for no reason. She didn't need to be woken up until they got to fairy tale so he just stayed there stroking her hair gently. I made the right choice now I just hope that she doesn't go out and kill Natsu for fighting her. He mused as he stayed lying in the cart. A half hour later the group ended up getting to their destination. The second they did Q threw Natsu out of the cart and rushed to the other one to see her brother and sister. When she got to the cart she saw that Urza was rubbing the sleep out of her eyes and her brother giving her a shushing gesture. She nodded and opened the door quietly and Naruto and a drowsy Urza walked out. Thank you driver-san, Naruto said to him. No problem you too, and have a nice day, he said as he started driving off. When he did Naruto turned to Urza who slapped her cheeks a little to wake herself up. So you ready to fight Natsu soon, Naruto asked her, she smiled at him and nodded. Yes I am curious about how strong he has gotten since the last we saw him, she said to him. You you a a a h h h i m fired up, Natsu yelled as he sprung up from the ground. Naruto Urza and Q tried to suppress their laughter but it was very difficult. Natsu was way too energetic when it came to fighting. All right let's go and get the master back home and then we can go and have your fight, Urza says to him as her face became serious again. The group grinned and nodded to her. The second they opened the door they were greeted with cheers from the whole guild. You're back. They yelled happily. The whole guild was set up for a big party and in the middle there was a large cake that had a good job on it. Hug oh figure easy chan they were waiting for us, Naruto said to her as he had a massive grin on his face. 
Yes, they did but that better be strawberry, she said to him seriously. Naruto chuckled a little at hearing that and thought that Q was thinking the same thing but saying chocolate instead. Come on let's party, some of the members yelled. We will don't worry but first Natsu asked to spar with Urza first then we go and party got it, Naruto yelled to the guild. Kana got stars in her eyes thinking about money she would get out of the bets, while the others in the guild were thinking about having it as some entertainment as they ate their food. The guild went outside to the back at one of the training grounds that Naruto made for them, or one of his clones, to help the guild get stronger. When everyone found a seat and Kana was done placing the bets Urza and Natsu were facing one another off. Urza I'm going to kick your ass this time, Natsu said as he ignited his fists. Who well it has been a while since I fought a worthy opponent besides Naruto, she said as she used her magic to re-equip her flame empress armor. Natsu lunged at her and Urza jumped to the side dodging his fist. She slashed with her sword but Natsu grabbed her wrist and threw her into the air. She flipped in the air in time to see a ball of fire being shot at her. Thinking quickly she slashed the fire in half and summoned a war hammer behind her. She kicked off of it, then quickly putting it back in her pocket dimension. She dived down and smashed the flat of her sword onto Natsu's side sending him skidding back. Very good Natsu you have improved quite a bit she said impressed as she got into a slashing stance. I told ya, now let's cut loose, he said with a mad grin as the fire in his hands grew in size. This might be bad for the guild, Naruto mumbled as he put his right hand into fourth tail mode and had it fan out in front of the guild to prevent damage. The two lunged at one another leaving dust clouds where they were prior. Right before they made contact there was a clapping noise almost like a gong. Naruto knew right away who that was. Oh god damn it I hate the council, he thought as he returned his other arm to normal. A frog walked into the middle of the area making a good amount of the guild face fault. Stop now I am an emissary for the national council, Urza Scarlet and Naruto Kayubi you are under arrest please come with me, it said to everyone. Huh so you're drawing her into this when I was the only one smashing things my god the council is blind, Naruto said as he walked over to the emissary. There were charges against both of you it said plainly, though on the inside it was scared to hell because Naruto's eyes looked like they were a cold blue making him look scary as hell. Fine we go but no cuffs if you do ill paralyze you along with them, Naruto told her plainly as he shot his fist out toward the shadows of one of the buildings. When he did a shockwave got shot at the shadows and a second later a hand full of rune knights went flying. How dare you attack them, the frog yelled. How dare you have them in the shadows when I have been known to cooperate with the council under the fact that they swore to leave fairy tale to their business as long as no one dies, Naruto said back. Before this could continue Urza grabbed his shoulder and the face she had told him to calm down. He sighed and nodded to her earning a smile. We will go, she said. The emissary nodded a bit fearfully and began to walk away. Natsu while we are out look after the guild this will not take long, Naruto said to him. Fine, he mumbled as his anger started to simmer down. I am going to remind the council that they don't have power over me, I guess this was forgotten in me being lax with them. Naruto mumbled as they got into the cart and began to drive away. National Council Fury Branch Naruto and Urza were walking side by side through the many halls of the building as they followed the frog that kept making that annoying Giko noise with every step. When they got close to the doors to the council room Naruto's eyes became wild with anger and his magic started to seep out. You, he growled as he looked at a teen with a mass of blue hair with a tattoo over his right eye. Oh Urza Naruto good to see you, he said to them as he got off of the wall he was leaning on. Urza was able to hold back her anger much better than Naruto and looked at him. Hello Jelly, she said to him calmly. Oh such a cold hello you wound me. He said to her as he stopped leaning on the wall and walked over to them. He moved to touch Urza but was greeted by his hand being crushed and almost broken by a very angry Naruto. You will not touch her again, he growled his promise to him. His eyes were glowing red now and his fangs were easy to see in his rage. Urza grabbed his hand in hers making him look at her. Naru calm yourself your anger is for another day, she said to him in a cold voice. Naruto knew immediately what she meant and nodded to her after taking a deep breath to calm himself. All right easy but only because you asked, he said to her in a much calmer voice. She smiled at that. Good, 
she said to him as she turned back to Jellel who was nursing his near broken hand. Well that was a handshake Naruto, and all I came to say was just keep out first home our little secrete, he said to them as he walked back into the chambers. Urza if he tries to do anything to fairy tale I can kill him right, Naruto asked double checking on his promise to her. Yes Naruto he is the only human that I would not feel back about you killing, she said to him as they walked into the council chambers themselves. Now the court will be called to order with Urza Scarlet and Naruto Kyuubi being charged now how do you plea, one of the counselors asked. Naruto looked at them with a cold glare and then his power suddenly spiked shaking the room making it very difficult for all except Urza who was used to his power to breath. Why counselors I do, why have you gone against our deal time and again when you all should know the consequences to that, Naruto said to them in a demonic voice that was cold as ice. Every one of the council started to shake in fear. It was a very simple and fair deal we don't kill anyone and do jobs without much property damage, and you look past what did happen and leave my guild in peace. I have made it clear what the consequences would be and you should know I am a horrible enemy, he said to them in the same cold tone. The council was starting to sweat bullets now. They knew the consequence would be he simply destroy the council and they knew he could do it too. He proved that he could defeat all the wizard saints with ease with them all working together against him. He even said he didn't use half of his power against them and whether they wanted to believe it or not that was all he used because Urza told him not to kill them. WWW we were sore yn Uruta sama but the people were believed that we could not keep the peace, one of the counselors began to explain. Naruto let up on his energy a little so that they could speak normal again. The counselor took the message and continued. The crime rate has increased lately and all that were interrogated has said it is because of so many of the guilds being able to vandalize that they don't see why they can't, he said to him. Naruto donned a thinking pose and Urza face palmed. Naru they still have to do their job but maybe we should help out and make sure that fairy tale doesn't go all out like it does. Natsu is a lost cause because his magic is just naturally to destructive but there are others that we can help, Urza said to him. Alright whatever you say easy. And I guess I did overreact I was just pissed off from something today. Naruto said as he looked for a moment at Jellel who finally got his breath back not expecting Naruto to have that much power. Well can we leave? Naruto asked them. The council just nodded not wanting to anger the blonde any more than they already have, they were all thanking to G.O.D. that Urza was a cool headed person and had the control in their relationship or they would be dead by now. Fairy Tail Naruto and Urza arrived back in Fairy Tail in record time thanks to Naruto's seal magic. Urza was in her casual clothes again and they too were holding hands as they walked back into the guild. When they got there not a second after opening the door Mirajane, her sister and brother, Hugh, Kana, Levi and Shadow Gear grabbing them and pulling them to a table. Naruto and Urza were too confused to resist their pulling until they got to their seats. What is this all about? Urza asks them confused. Mira pulls out a pen and book out of nowhere and they all smile at them. Well we wanted you to tell us again how you two got together, she said as she got the pen ready. Both Naruto and Urza were frozen in shock for a few seconds then a large blush crossed both of their faces. Come on it was very cute and heroic how it happened. Mira said loving to tease the two. When she found out Naruto would never choose her over Urza she made it a habit to tease the two of them whenever she could. Come on please brother, Q said to him with her puppy dog eyes. The rest of the group just grinned knowing that Naruto could never resist his sister's puppy dog eyes. Naruto saw it and just sighed. Fine gather around, Naruto said to them. They all grinned and Q appeared in Naruto's lap somehow with Urza leaning on him with her eyes closed. She hated being the one to tell because she was bad at telling stories but she loved rehearing Naruto say it, even though it was one of the scariest moments she ever had. Alright it all started one year ago when we first encountered my first demon, Naruto began and Mira started writing. Flashback, so Urza do you think this is a real demon this time? Naruto asked her as they walked through the forest. Yes I believe that this one is accurate it's just a shame that Q couldn't come, she said to him as she walked at his side. She said she had to help Mira with some things at the guild but it's fine we should be able to beat the demon ourselves, he said to her. Then his face darkened as he remembered the type of demon that they were going for. It was a shadow demon that has been terrorizing a local village and they were called in to investigate. 
Hubi told him about the different types of demons that Zarif created and this was one of the ones that he hated the most. It was known to take children and women away in the night where it was invisible and them and kill them. He actually asked Mira to take Q away while they went to attack this. He knew that he could get Urza out of there if things turned sour because of his mating mark to her but Q he would need to touch and he might not be able to get to her. Urza was a thought and he could get her back into the guild. Urza snapped him out of his thoughts. Naru what do you need me to do when we find this demon, she asked him. I am going to need for you to save anyone that it captured and get out of there, I can't risk anything against it so I am going to go all out the second that you are clear, he said to her. Urza was shocked at this knowing that he never went all out, he was in fact afraid to do it because he didn't want anyone to be caught in the crossfire of his power. She then realized how important her job was now. If she didn't get everyone out quickly he might hurt someone, or worse. Got it Naru but please be careful I don't like you not letting me fight by your side, she said to him with a pout. Naruto saw this and smiled a sad smile to her. I know Urza but it is for the best I don't think I could live with myself if something happened to you, Naruto said to her as he licked her cheek. Urza flushed up at this and hid her eyes behind her bangs still not liking it when he did that out of nowhere. I can defend myself, she said to him a little hurt that she didn't trust her to protect herself. I know you can but please just this once don't come, he says to her not wanting to tell her the real reason. Urza looks at him for a minute and then sighs. She nods to him but doesn't promise, if she sees that he needs help she would come to his aid no matter what. Thanks EZ, he says to her as he smiles. They continue to walk to their destination but then Naruto's features turn more feral as he smells demons. His hair stands on end and his whisker marks darken. EZ get ready I smell him, and I smell other humans, he says to her. She nods to him as her face turns into her cold one letting him know she was ready and serious. He sprints off with Urza close behind. They find a cave where the scent is thickest and Naruto smells blood and fluids making him growl in anger. I am going to enjoy ripping this thing apart, Naruto thought in anger as he smelt the number of people there. He guessed around three women and a handful of kids making him grind his fangs as his anger increased. Urza get on your flight armor and get ready to get out, Naruto said as a column of his energy erupted from him. Urza's hair started flying everywhere and she closed her eyes to keep herself from being blinded. She was beyond shocked to see the amount of power Naruto was letting out and was scared as she felt his anger, no that wasn't the right word, furry, rage that was coming from him began to make her tremble. She equipped her flight armor and ran in full speed behind Naruto who was already in his second tail state. When they got a good amount into the cave it was dark but the sounds of screaming and crying could be heard. He with no demons around anymore no one can stop us, now who should I choose next? Ah you will do nicely a slimy voice said. No mommy. A girl's voice came. Naruto heard this and tears came down from his cheeks from the amount of rage and sadness he felt. There were others before her that I didn't save, ill repay him a thousandfold for what he has done, he thought as he appeared in an opening. What he saw nearly made him threw up in sheer disgust at the demon. Look on profile for image labeled, lust demon. He saw as its shadowy vines held up a little girl no older than five with her clothes getting ripped off. Naruto appeared in front of the demon slashing the vines releasing the girl. ERZA, Naruto yelled as he faced the shocked demon. Right, she yelled back as she caught the girl before she hit the ground and grabbed three other children and sprinted off. Demon Slayer Magic Doppelganger Naruto whispered as another one of him bubbled out of his back and onto the ground in his one-tailed state. It knew right away what to do and grabbed the women and ran out the cave after Urza. Oh so you're a demon slayer, I would be worried if I didn't already know your weakness the demon said to him in the same slimy voice. Naruto's eyes twitched slightly at the threat but he lunged at the demon. It grinned its viney mouth as it went to slap Naruto aside, but when its vines made contact with Naruto's cloak they started hissing like they touched acid. Naruto slashed at its chest area making it scream in pain. You were taught by QB then, no matter your power is not enough to defeat one of the seven of Zarif's demons it said as a much larger root sprung out at Naruto. Who caught it as a magic circle appeared under him. I am going to take great pleasure in ripping you apart. QB taught me two people that I couldn't stand and I hate above all else. Rapists and kidnappers, you're both and you will die here. Naruto growled in a feral demon voice as he looked up at the demon. The demon started to get worried. 
He knew of demon slayers and had killed many of them before but Kyuubi's demon slayers were very powerful. But what was different about this one he made all the others look like ants while he was a demon himself. Then it had a thought making it grin once more. You're a hybrid demon slayer no wonder you're so much stronger than the others it said to Naruto as the area around them began to shake. Naruto said nothing as he stared it down still holding its roots that were melting in his clawed hand. Demon slaying art 4 tail cloak Naruto said as a column exploded from him sending a clean hole through the top of the cave. This process vaporized the rest of its root making it hiss in Naruto. When the column cleared Naruto was on all fours with his four tails waving behind him as he growled at the demon. I see you hope to end this early but unfortunately for you this cave is coming down now you sealed your fate and I can leave into the darkness once again it said as it began to sink into the earth. Before it could Naruto shot out his arm at it while from his stretched out arm multiple other arms came out grabbing the demon causing it to hiss in pain once again. You are getting on my nerves it said to Naruto as it slapped away some of Naruto's arms. The ones it didn't Naruto gripped harder and pulled hard. The roots around the area got ripped along with the demon while Naruto threw it through the hole on top of the cave. Soon after Naruto shot up after it wanting to rip it apart. When he got above ground he looked around and could not see it. So you thought that above ground you would gain an advantage, oh how wrong you are the demon's voice said from all around. You have only made it easier for me to destroy you and escape after it continued. Naruto knew that he couldn't find it with his ears so he sent out faint pulses of his power around to try and find it. He found it and to his horror it was closing in on his clone and Urza who were trying to flee. He launched himself at the area as hard as he could. A second later he found it and focused his magic into his mouth. Demon Slayer Art Biju Bomb he screamed as a concentrated blast of magic was sent flying at the demon. It heard the shockwave coming for it and avoided a direct hit, but the full explosion ended up hitting him. It got thrown back and Naruto landed near Urza who stopped when she felt the shockwave of the biju bomb. Well that hurt but it proved my thoughts, your companion is your mate isn't she it said as it appeared behind Urza wrapping her in roots preventing her from moving. Naruto's eyes widened at that and went to lunge at the demon but then he heard Urza scream in pain as the roots tightened around her. Oh no 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 young demon slayer you come even a fraction of a step closer and she dies, now remove that cloak of yours it ordered and to prove its point a root shot up near Urza's neck threatening to stab through if he didn't comply. Naruto released his cloak right away and standing in front of the demon with rage evident in his eyes. He gave a mental command to his clone to run away with the women and children and it sprinted off but not without the demons noticing. Now there goes all of my hard earned toys. I guess I just have to you her he said as he licked her with a tongue made of roots. Naruto felt Urza's fear and disgust making him all the more angry. But to do that I have to kill you so I bid you farewell demon slayer it said as a root shot out of the ground impaling Naruto through the chest. No. Urza screamed as she tried to get to Naruto but couldn't move. The demon cackled as it watched Naruto fall face first into his own blood. Now for the fun. How about right over his corpus it said as he shredded her armor off leaving her topless as tears cascaded down her face. Please Naruto don't leave, don't die, she pleaded in her mind. Your link does not work anymore girl, oh how I love to take the mates of demon slayers who think they are all powerful but in reality they are nothing it said as it grabbed one of Urza's breasts roughly. I never got to say I loved you Naruto, she wailed, when she said that her mate mark burned a bright yellow color. Her eyes widened in shock as she looked over at Naruto. His body seemed to be pulsing as yellow energy swirled around it. Pro, tect, he whispered as he pulsed again. Now the demon stopped what it was doing and looked at the blonde boy. He should be dead what is this it said angrily. I, will, protect, Naruto mumbled as he pulsed again as the yellow light started to solidify around him. Profile pic labeled Biju Mode 1. The yellow energy lifted Naruto up as he looked at them. The demon started to shake in fear of the sheer amount of power coming off of him, and how it felt so pure. Urza was the opposite as she felt uncontrolled amount of joy that Naruto was alive, and on top of that his power didn't feel demonic at all in fact it felt gentle and warm. The only thing off was that his tail and ears were missing which she would ask about later. Naruto looked at the two with dead eyes with his eyes sagging at his sides. Protect, her, he whispered as his head shot up. Don't try anything or she will, 
Before he could finish his threat Naruto disappeared in a flash and appeared in front of him with a clawed hand. His arm vanished for a second and another second later her demon was little more than shreds. But, how, I'm immortal it said before it vanished into nothing. Urza fell right into Naruto's arms and he held her tightly. I will always protect you Urza even in death I promised that didn't I? Naruto whispered to her as he leaned down to her. Urza looked up at him and the mixture of his power and his oath broke her last stings that attached her to Jellel. She leaned up to him and they met in a kiss. It was a simple kiss but it held everything to the other. For Urza it held all her feelings to Naruto and her need to be with him. While for Naruto it was all his joy and happiness to finally be accepted by his mate, his lover. When they broke they were smile. But then Urza started panicking as she started frantically checking Naruto. He took a root through his chest the size of a fist and she knew it went through his heart. When she looked she found no wound shocking her. When the mating ritual is completed we are healed to the peak of health and brought to what is known as outprime ages where we are both the most powerful and most likely to breed. Then we stay like that forever it is meant to allow us to live together for a long time. Demon slayers and their mates live for thousands of years it's best to look our best when we live that long, Naruto joked to her. Urza smiled at him then noticed that her top was still destroyed and she was practically in his arms. She had steam coming out of her ears with her head barred in Naruto's chest trying to hide her embarrassment. She re-equipped regular clothes and stayed in his arms. Naruto ran off at high speeds getting to their destination. Naruto put a small amount of his newfound power around Urza cloaking her protecting her from the winds making it feel like a gentle breeze to her. The caught up with his clone easily who was waiting in the town for them. When it saw them he handed him the bag filled with their reward which Naruto took and had turned back into magic going into Naruto. Naruto released his new biju mode and was standing there normally with his tails and ears back. Let's go home, Haim, Naruto said to Urza. She smiled at the nickname and kissed Naruto as he activated his seal at their home and teleported to it in a flash of yellow light. Flashback ended. And then we revealed that we were a couple the next day and it's been normal ever since, Naruto finished with his arms now wrapped protectively around Urza while his teal was on Q's lap. The group was speechless at hearing this. The girls had tears in their eyes thinking it was a wonderful night in shining armor story. Elfman was screaming Naruto was a man amongst men. Shadow Gear was in a group hug crying at a wonderful story. Q was hugging Naruto and Urza tightly telling them to never leave her behind again for a mission. Mira was smiling happily because she was able to get that all down in her book filling about half of it. That was an amazing story Naruto and no doubt a true one at that. You two were really meant for one another now I can show this to Lucy when she gets back with Natsu for that mission they went on. Mira said as she held the book to her chest. Sure but where did they go? Naruto asked confused. I think they went of that demon island mission why? She asked and Naruto's eyes widened. Mira that's a S class mission. Naruto said in a panic. Everyone was paying attention now. Naruto looked at Urza who nodded along with Q. We're leaving now to save them we will be back soon, Naruto said as he hopped out of his seat. Urza and Q were right behind them as they ran off. The end.